Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our first video of creating an e-commerce web application. In fact, a complete e-commerce web application using plain PHP. When I say plain PHP, I mean we will not use any framework like coordinator or Laravel. It's just going to be plain code of PHP. It's going to be a long journey, but I hope you're strong and motivated enough to start with me from this very first video up to the very last video until we say that we are really done with the whole project. It's not going to be a simple project as I said, but uh, I'll explain concept step by step so that with good practices so that you should understand any, everything and you'll be able to do what to implement it in your real world application. So let's get started with this journey. So in the very first place, I would like to tell you that uh, we are going to use a bootstrap template meaning that we will not worry about writing our own CSS or coding our own HTML. Our all focus will be on creating the PHP code logic so that this template that is having static files should be able to do a complete shop that can do real, can solve real world problems, okay? So let's get started. <laughs> so in the very first place, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, you should download uh, the template and I've put the link to download this template in the description of this video. So all what you need to do, just go to the description of this of this video, find the link and download the template of Bootstrap. That will be the first step that you'll do. Then after downloading the template of Bootstrap, it will come in zipped format. So what you'll do, you'll have to unzip it. And once you unzip it, you'll have something like this. Just pieces of HTML. What? HTML. Um, HTML uh, files. So if you open a single HTML file, you'll be getting something like this. Okay, you'll have something like this. So now, once we have our template in our computers, the next thing that we'll have to do, you're going to open our Visual Studio Code. In fact, I'll hope that you already have Visual Studio Code installed in your computer. So I'm going to open my Visual Studio Code. If you don't have it, then I recommend you to uh, to download it right now. And then after opening my Visual Studio Code, I'm going to load the template into this Visual Studio Code. So I'll go ahead and get the file that I've just unzipped. Okay, the file of template that you have unzipped, the folder, drag and drop it in your heart into your Visual Studio Code. So once you drag and drop it in your Visual Studio Code, you'll have something like this. Okay, you'll have the files or the templates that I've just shared with you in the file like this one. Okay, so the next thing that you'll have to do is now to create a fresh project, the one that you're going to program with, okay? The one that you're going to put the logic of creating now a what? An e-commerce e project. So at this level, I'll assume that you already know the basics of PHP. If you don't know the basics of PHP, you'll find the playlist in the description of this video or in the card that I've just shown on the screen. Click on that playlist and go ahead and first learn the basic PHP. I've already taught basic PHP from zero up to the place where you can even communicate with what? With database. If you really, really new, I recommend you to first watch those videos and the link I've put in the description or somewhere in this video. So first watch those videos, practice all of them, then you can come here. But if you already know basics of PHP, you know what is meant by htdocs, you know what is meant by XAMPP, my PHP, PHP admin, if you already know all those, then you may not need to do what? To watch that uh, playlist. But if you don't know what's meant by htdocs, please find the playlist on this screen or in the bottom uh, or in the description of this video and first learn the basics of PHP. So with that said, uh, it means that it's least small, small concepts like htdocs, I'll not need to do what? To explain them. So let me go ahead and open my htdocs folder and create a fresh project. Uh, this is my htdocs folder. I hope everyone knows how what's meant by htdocs and they can navigate up to htdocs. So this is my htdoc folder. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create here a fresh, fresh, fresh folder uh, for, for my project. Okay, so you have to determine which name you want to give your what? Your project. So mine, I'm going to call it eShop or electronic shop. Okay, so I'll just simply come here what have I done? <laughs> okay, I'll just simply come here 
and create a new folder in my htdocs folder come here and just say new folder and i'm going to call it e e dash shop electronic shop okay so this is the folder that i've just created right now so the next thing that i'm going to do i'm also going to open it i'm, I'm also going to open it in what in uh, uh h in, in 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 visual studio code i'll drag and drop this folder into visual studio code now i have two folders one is uh that of html i mean i have now two things opened i have that one of template or bootstrap template and then the second one is our htdocs folder that i've just created right now so i'm going to go ahead and create my first file of php by simply coming this htdocs folder and create a new file that i'm going to call index dot php so i'm just going to say here test home okay and then i'm going to try to run this project and see if it works so i'll assume you have started your zamp so let's go ahead and run the project by opening new file and then say localhost stroke uh, e dash shop okay so you can see we have there test home okay test home so it means that uh, our folder is working or our project is working so i hope that you can also reach this place or this point without too much problems okay so once after testing our folder is working so the next thing is to now create the home page of our project okay the home page of our project now to create the home page of our project we'll first determine which file we want to put here in the home page so to do that you just first come to your template open your template by the way you can open your template by just clicking the folder that i just opened to you and zip it and then click on any file there you'll be able to navigate your full template so i'm going to do it to determine these are the home pages that come with our template i'm going to determine which home page i want to use let us say i want to use this home page okay i'm going to use this home page so what i'll do i'm going to detail to see the name of this home page which is called home fashion the fashion store then i'm going to look for this file in what in our template so i'll come to the for to the visual studio code template folder and then look for this file that we just opened which is home fashion so i'll come to home dash fashion which is here home fashion this file okay so i'm going to copy this file select everything in that file and then come to our project where it is here select everything and paste so i've pasted here uh the home pro the, the what the home file okay the file that we need for our on our to be on our home page so let's go ahead and see what we've got now on what on our home page of our project i'll just simply come to the project here and refresh okay it is working but it's not working as we expected okay you can see things have come everything is there but there's no css files that are supposed to organize this code of course that is what we expected why because i've not put the folders that have the css files here so assets file so let's go ahead and create now and put those fi assets file in this project of ours so we can have everything well set so i'll come to our htdocs folder uh-huh so i'll come to our our folder of uh, template which is this one this is the template and these are the files that are inside the template so i'm going to select everything here i'm going to select all the what all the folders the assets file folders not everything but only the assets folders copy them they're just simply pressing ctrl c okay copy them then after copying them those uh, assets folders or that are in the template the next thing we are going to go now to uh, our htdocs folder the eshop folder this one for php there and we're going to paste uh oh just just what have i done <laughs> what have i done eshop it is here right okay it is here this one eh? so i'm going to select this assets folder copy them then come to this eshop folder the one that you put in htdocs our project and then i'm going to paste there on its root i'm going to paste there the what the assets folders there okay so i've pasted them i've pasted them there now you can go ahead and refresh okay 
So if you come to your assets, for, I mean, if you come to your project, the one that you're creating, you should be able to see these folders added. So let's go ahead and refresh now our project. Boom, it's working now. You can see our project is working great now. That is so great and that is a big achievement. Okay, so you can see our PHP project is working. So that is the first step done. So the next step that we're going to do is to now organize uh, this project into what? Into uh, sections, okay? Because you realize that every page or every page will have the section of home page, now the section of content, and the section of footer. So it will be very wise if we put home page in one file. I mean, sorry, if the he if we put it will be very wise if you put the header in one file and then the footer in another file and then we'll be just changing this content so that we don't repeat ourselves so let's go ahead and do that logic of putting footer in one file and an header uh, of putting footer in one file and, he and header in what in another file to do that we'll just simply come here to our project so the files that are going to be reusing we are going to create a fresh folder here we're going to call it files and in that files we're going to put the files that we'll be reusing because it is very very important to reuse files in a web project to avoid this, to avoid rep you you're repeating yourself so let's go ahead and put this folder here this folder is called files okay i'll put there a folder called files okay so in that files folder this we're going to be putting the folder that the files that we'll be reusing eh? so i'll just go ahead and right click and say new file inside that folder and i'm going to call this one header.php Okay, so in that header.php file is where I'm going to put all these pieces of file up to this header here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and do it and go to our header here and then come to this file. I mean, come to the, our index and then I see where the header starts and where it stops. So to do that with Visual Studio Code, you can even collapse here. Okay, you can collapse this file so they can have enough working space. Uh -huh. You can collapse this also, these tags. So go ahead and collapse this tag of head. So this tag of head is the main head. Go ahead and collapse this tag of modal. So this tag of modal, this is a sign up modal, the login modal. Go ahead and collapse this tag of uh, quick view. Go ahead and, co no, not quick view, not there, we'll have collapsed the whole main. Eh? But go ahead and collapse this tag of quick view. Okay. Go ahead and collapse this tag of head. Okay, this is the header now. Here, up to here, where there's the word hero slider. So our header stops, you can press here, enter so you can separate the two. Our header stops here at hero slider. So let's go ahead and cut it. So I'll select everything up to top. I cut it by pressing Ctrl X and save. Then come to our header file. This is the header file that we just created here. Come to the header file and paste there the whole header. So we've we'll placed it there, the header file, the content in the header file here. So that's beautiful. And now the next thing, as we said, we have also to put the footer in a separate file. So we should not repeat ourselves. So I'll just simply come here and create another file called footer. New file, I'm going to call it footer.php. So that's our file of what? Of footer. So after doing that, uh, let's go ahead and look for the footer file. So I'll collapse this section, I'll collapse this section, I'll collapse this section. You see in the index, eh? I'm going to collapse these different sections and you can see they have comments eh? until you find the section of what? Of footer. Uh -huh. So the footer section is here. The footer section is here. So this main tag, I'm also going to cut it because it's already also in the header. So I'm going to start here from where there is main here, the closing tag of main and up to bottom okay up to the bottom part cut it so i've cut all the bottom part beginning from the main closing main tag let me show it to you again i've started from here here at the main eh? where the main because this main is already in the header so i'll just also do the same here i collapse the footer and i cut from here from the closing tag of main up to the end okay so that's very important so it means that this is the only dynamic information that will be changing so i'll go ahead and paste that piece of code in the footer file okay so 
I've posted that piece of code in the what? In the footer file. So if you come and refresh your, your website, of course, things are going to look weird. Why? Because we have not, we don't have the headers and footers. Okay. So things look a little bit disorganized. So let's go ahead and include now the header and footer in our what? In our index file. So to do that, I'll just simply come here on top of our index file and open another tag of PHP. I'll open a tag of PHP, close it. And then here is where I'm going to put now the line that is going to call our footer. I mean our header. So let's go ahead and do that by just simply saying uh, require once. Okay, require underscore once and open the tag. And in that tag, you're going to put the location where this file of header is. Okay, the path. So the path is going to be files stroke header dot php and then close. It is files stroke header dot php. So let's go ahead and add the footer. So the footer will be in the bottom. I'll just simply come to the bottom of the file of the file. You see, I'm in index file. I'll copy the same thing and then I change this one to what to footer dot php. So now after doing that. I will, I will now know that I've included the foot and the header. Then if I come and refresh, things should look beautiful. Things should look nice that I have successfully included the header and the footer. So that is amazing. You have included the header, you have included the footer. And uh, only what's remaining is now to start changing the what? The dynamic content. So that's great. That's really great. Uh, now we can go to the next thing now. That's really great. Okay. So let's go ahead to and do the next thing. So the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to be developing something per require. When we need something is when we do it. So let's begin with the login logic, how we can create the login logic, registration and login logic. So when you want to register, you click here, of course, and then you see we have the sign up and the register. So this is the sign up. So to sign up, someone will have to give us their name, their email, and their password, and they confirm the password. So by doing like that, then we'll be able to do what? To create the sign up logic. So let's go ahead and create this sign up logic. Eh? So to sign up, I'll go ahead and create uh, the database, okay? Database first. Because when someone submit this information, it's going to be saved in what? In database. So let's go ahead and do that by just simply opening a new tab here and go to localhost stroke PHP my admin. At this point, you should be knowing what is meant by PHP my admin. So we are going to create here another fresh database that we're going to be saving our what? Our data for this shop. So let's go ahead and create a new database by clicking on new and call it e e dash shop e shop electronic shop I don't know so uh, that's it that's how we then we have the database now we click on the database and add there our first table okay add there the first table and you know what's this table going to be about it's going to be called users table okay so let's go ahead and do that so this is a table to see the information that we're going to collect the first thing that we're going to collect in the users table is the ID and this ID is going to be an integer and always make it auto incrementing. So it means that it is a primary key and will be automatically increasing. So the next thing that we're going to do is to add the name of this user. Okay, shall we need a okay? Let us add the first and last name. First underscore name of this user. And then it will be a variable character of 255. And then by default, it will be null. Okay. I can just say by default is null. I can just make here saying it is nullable. So that's the first name. And the last name is going to be uh, last underscore name, variable character of 255 to 55, and it's going to be nullable. The next thing is going to be username. It's going to be variable character of 255. It's going to be nullable. And the other thing is going to be uh password i mean it's going to be password eh? uh password of course password password it's going to be text field and can be null of course so it's going to be text field because we don't know how long the password character can be characters so after the password the next thing that we're going to have now 
we're going to have uh we're going to have the username password blah, 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 the f maybe phone number and email phone number uh -huh, let's make this one a variable character of 255 and can be nullable and then maybe email address phone number i mean variable character of 255 and can also be nullable and maybe the address of this person address of this person variable character of two of text okay 255 and label then the most important part is the user type is this person uh what um is this person a a, a customer or a what uh, and admin what and mean straighter we can go ahead and add even more columns okay and maybe this more column this is where we can have um, details about this person but is it necessary let's leave the details mm, not else shall we call record about the person maybe the day when they joined created okay and that one can also be a variable character or an integer no problem variable character of 255 okay so that is the table that you're going to use to collect the information about the user so let's go ahead and save this table by clicking on save okay save ah so we have a first table of users there okay so after having the first table of users now the next thing is now to work on the logic of inserting the user who has registered so let's go ahead here and uh, do that logic of uh, registration eh? so uh let's go ahead and do that logical registration you know when it comes to forms it becomes a little bit complex thing and uh, that you have to work with first of all let me first if we don't have a registration file here i see we have it we have your registration i mean uh, an uh, account file because i didn't want to use this model eh? because this model can confuse you for the beginning we will use it later so you see we have a sign up what a sign up uh file here so we're going to create a special account for sign up i mean a, a special file for signing in eh? because if we use this model for now it's going to read to confuse you but we'll implement it after finishing this straight one eh? we'll implement it after finishing this straight one so let's go ahead and create a, a login page a login page so this is a project you're going to create a file for uh login okay login.php or signing.php so let's go ahead and do that so this is our project and you're going to create a new file i'm going to call it login.php login.php okay now as you know we have to first include the header and the footer so how we'll going then put the header and then uh the footer okay the footer so the login the footer and then here we're going to put here login logic here i mean login ui user interface okay so let's go ahead and see <coughs> how this is um go ahead and refresh here our shop and then put stroke login login dot php okay so there we are there we are you see the login dot php is here so after doing that uh, let's go ahead and put the interface of login okay login and registration so let's go ahead and do that we'll just simply come to our project here and look for account sign in this template you come to the template and look for account sign in account sign in so everything about account is just saved as account okay account sign in so we're going to look where uh, after the header so let's go ahead and search the header tag in this control f header and try to put here maybe the closing part okay so you know our header stops here right our header stops here so i'm going to collapse this container and it's the one that i'm going to put the other side so i'll copy this part only you see i copy up to main this part i just first collapse it and i don't put the header tag and the main tag because it's already in what in footer so let's go ahead and paste this piece of code in our sign in page this piece of code i'll come and remove everything here and put this piece of code in this sign in page save come and refresh everything is okay you see everything is okay 
we have the logins there okay now the next thing that we're going to do now we're going to do the logic of uh, submitting uh, this login page okay the logic of submitting this login page so now let's go ahead and uh, work on this account creation form first so you're having first name so i'll come to my project and look for first name by just replacing control f and first name so i'll know first name is collected at this point okay so in this label i'm going to give the name of this input i'm going to give it a name and i'm going to call it first underscore name okay so that is very important this name otherwise if you don't put the name then that input will be ignored so the next input is going to be last name by just simply coming here to this input make sure that you put that input and give this one a name and i'm going to call it last underscore name okay so that's important so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to put the what the email address so we're going to come here in the input of email address email i mean sorry sorry name i'm going to call it email email so that's done so the next thing that we're going to do now we're going to put here uh the phone number do we need the phone number registration is that too much okay let's go ahead and provide it uh phone number so i'm going to give here name and call it phone underscore number and then after doing that the next thing that you're going to do you're going to collect the password okay password name underscore password make sure that you put this one in the input eh? so password then the last thing that you're going to do also password name so this one for confirmation eh? password underscore one this one for confirmation okay so the most important thing that you also have to do you have to specify this form it is a post form not a gate form so i'll click in the tag of form and then come to where the tag the form begins and then give it a name i mean an action i mean sorry a method of post means going to be a post form someone will be post and then um what's the next thing that you have to do <laughs> the next thing that you'll have to do is uh, specify where this form should be submitted to right is specify where this form should be submitted to so i don't know how we're going to do that but we can uh, create another separate file where we're going to handle the login what login logic okay the login logic so i don't know how we'll call the file but we can that's the concept like the logic of login should be uh handled in another file so we can call it login backend login logic or whatever <laughs> Let's go and call it login logic. Okay, so I'll, call, I'll just simply and create a new file and call it login dash logic dot php. So that is the place logic logic. Uh -huh. Now this is the place where we're going to handle the login logic so for for logging in. Okay, so let's come here back to login user interface and specify them the the action meaning where where the login should be the where this form should be submitted we say it's going to be submitted at login logic okay so this login logic is we're going to be handling the everything that has been submitted here so let's go ahead and uh, try to submit now our first form so I'll refresh here and then come and do what and uh, start here the uh, i mean submit the, the, the information so i'll put here the first name mohindo the last name that email mohindo at gmail.com password one two three four password one two three four and then i sign up aha uh -huh. when i submit you can see our form has been submitted here let us dump and see if what has been submitted has been received php and then say echo and put here maybe a pre tag and then try to dump everything print underscore r and then let us go ahead and dump everything that has come in the post like this save now if you come and refresh and then say resubmit you see everything that was submitted from uh, the form the login form or the registration form has been received 
hello and how are you welcome to our second video of creating an e-commerce web application my name is Mohindo Mubarak and I'm your tutor in today's video we're going to proceed from where we stopped at in the previous video and remember in the previous video we were able to create a registration form and submit the registration information and then we get it to another place so in this video we're going to start straight from there exactly so this is the place where we received the information that was submitted from the previous form and then we dumped it here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another file that we're going to put functions because we don't want to repeat ourselves so many times. So we'll need an external file where we're going to be put we're going to put reusable functions, okay? So I'll just go ahead and come here to files and then I create a new uh file, okay? New file. I'm going to call it function z functions that php in this file of functions is we're going to put a lot of logic or a lot of things that are going to be reusing so for example starting a session you know almost uh, everything here will depend on what on sessions so let us go ahead and put a code that will check for us if the session is started if it's not started then it will go ahead and start the session so that's how we start the session in php i'll explain properly what is meant by sessions and why you need sessions so go ahead and put that piece of code there so after doing that now the first thing that uh, we're going to do here we're going to check if there is already a user with this existing email okay you're going to check if there is already a user with this existing email because we will not allow two multiple users to have same email that's the first logic that we're going to begin with okay and then if the user does not has not agreed, then we'll go ahead and do what the logic of now registering this user after checking if the passwords are the same. So let's go ahead and do that first, okay? So to do that, it means that we'll need to connect to database, okay? We'll need to connect to database and select and see if there is some user who is having that what that information before or not. So it means that we'll need database what database connection. So here in our functions that PHP file, we're going to put a file, I mean a uh, we're going to put uh, the, 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 the variable that will store for us the database connection that I'm going to call con equals to my SQLI. Okay, hope you know how to connect database. And then the first parameter will pass the location of database, which is at local host. And then the second parameter will pass the what? Uh, the user, is it? What do you pass in the second parameter? Okay, we'll pass the user, I think, here, root. And then the third parameter, we'll pass the password. Okay, so for for Windows users, eh, your default password is always uh, nothing. So if you're using Windows machine, I think you may leave this second space as nothing, okay, here. So the last thing, we'll have to pass um, the database that you're going to communicate with. Remember, we've already created a database, which we called eShop. So I'll call that eShop. So I'm a Mac user, Mac users by our default password is root. Okay, so that is it. Mm, and you have to put here new. So it's going to be new my SQLI. Okay, new my SQLI and then the first thing pass the localhost, the next root and then root and then password. If you're Windows, you mean leave this one, okay? If you're using Windows. So after doing that, after creating our connection, the next thing we're going to check now, we're going to uh, do what you're going to select and see if there is a user with this email or not. So I'm going to include this uh, function, PHP function file, into our login logic. Okay, so that we should be able to use that connection. So I'll just simply come here and write require once, require once, and then I'm going to include the what? The functions file, which is under files stroke stroke what stroke uh functions dot php functions dot php so i'm just trying to include these functions into this file so that all the functions will be in one place but you'll be able to reuse them okay so let's go ahead and get this uh email so to get this email we'll just simply say uh, email equals to trim we remove all the white spaces and then put post and then get the what the email there 
so there we have our email now let's go ahead and write the sql that will tell if uh, this user already exists or not with the user with same email already exists or not so let's go ahead and write the sql just simply say sql equals to select all from what from uh, users where and then you pass email equals open the single single quotes and then you pass a uh, card bracket like this and then put the email like this okay so let's uh dump this sql by simply writing die and then put the sql and you see if our sql is okay before we do what we try to run it so i'll go ahead and refresh uh, you see our sql is okay our sql is okay now after doing that now let's go ahead and execute it uh, how you know we've already we already have a file called i mean we already have uh we already have here a function called con i mean a variable called con that has our what that has our connection of database so let's go ahead and use that con variable and say uh query and then we pass the what the sql then here we have what we call the response or the resource and let us dump the resource so to dump the resource we just simply come and remove this die guy and then dump here the resource let me dump it here the resource okay so we're going to see what is there refresh you see everything is okay connection is okay and everything is okay so make sure that at least you're at this point don't proceed before you successfully reach this point so you can see everything is okay and the number of rows that are being returned is zero so it means that there is no user who has this what this uh who has this what who has this user who has this email so let's go ahead and check that by putting this one here uh-huh okay numbers so here I can now know the number of rows that have been returned so you can now check if this number of rows if there are more than one so i'm going to check if this number of rows okay is more than zero okay it's more than zero let me die here and say user with same email already exists so they will not proceed with what with the registration process in fact we'll create a better user interface for that okay but for now let's just stop from there so i think that's the main condition um maybe you can put here post and see more things that they are submitting that's the main condition uh -huh. then you can check if these two passwords match if they don't match then you can also tell that passwords don't match so let's go ahead and do that uh, so we'll just check if so let's go ahead and get the password eh? so you already have the email let's go ahead and get the passwords so i can just come and copy as they are here so i can just come and say email is that and then you can get the password like this okay hope you're seeing that eh? so we're getting the password from post we can go ahead and get the password too okay password this and then you can go ahead and get the phone number let's get everything from the post get the phone number phone number and then we get the email okay the email i've already got it the first name and last name first name first name and first name here and then the last name and last name to duplicate a column just point in a column press press control shift and arrow down that's the shortcut for windows for mac i don't know for windows how it is eh? maybe i hope it's the same control shift and arrow down you'll be able to duplicate so we now have all the variables that have been submitted the next thing you're going to check if the password one is same as password two okay in fact that was supposed to be done before we check if there's already in the database so check if password one is not equal to password two then you can say passwords do not match okay and we'll go ahead and die here let me go ahead and put it here before we even check the what so i can die here and say password pass words did not match 
Okay, so that's it and that's it, okay? So password did not match, what else? Then if you pass those two conditions, I think we are now going to uh, register you into the database, okay? I mean to, to add you into the database. So let's go ahead and write the logic for adding the user into the database. Of course, it will be simply uh, SQL, which is going to be insert into users and say into users and then you open the bracket and then you pass here what you want to insert into the users okay so you're going to insert the first name the first name oh, sorry don't put the quotes like this first name comma last name and then uh, phone number and then first name last name phone number and then password and email password and email uh -huh. so the na the other thing that we'll have to register also is a user type user underscore type because you have to know whether this guy is a customer or not so by default we'll make this person a customer so also on password we'll have to hash it eh? we'll have to hash it so that in case uh any uh, hacker falls on our password you cannot know the password of what of people okay. so this password has to be hashed so you have to be password hash like this this is a file of php and then the first thing you'll have to pass the password itself which is under password and then the second thing you have to put password default this one eh? that constant so this logic will hash the password let me show you how the password looks like when it is hashed so i'll come there and die it there and then you can see this is our what our hashed password did not match how did you check if is not have to make this one not eh? not okay check it put this one as not so refresh you see that's a hashed password and that's what you're going to save in the database so let's go ahead so that's done now let's go ahead and now put the values so to put the values so you see how i'm writing my sql insert into users and i open this bracket and i put the everything that i want to insert i don't put a comma at last and then i close the bracket then I come and write the word values, values, and on open bracket and close it like this. So in this values now, we're going to put now the real values. So the first thing is going to be first name. Remember uh, the name of the variables here, the first name that you collected is looks like this one, okay? So it's going to be first name. So you put the dollar sign, first name, you can even put this curl bracket. Then put here a comma here, right? Put the comma. First name put last sorry last name last name put what else phone number so you have to follow this exact order that you used here phone number the next thing password okay the next thing is email and the next thing is user type okay User type, we say we're going to call this person a customer by default. Customer. So when someone creates the, fu the function, I mean, we create the, someone try to create the account for the very first time, we'll save that person as a what? As a customer. So later we can maybe uh, increase their privileges. So let's go ahead and uh, die with this SQL and see what we've come up with. But just simply come and put here, die, and then see what we've come up with. Refresh. See, that's our SQL. Uh -huh, I think here there is not supposed to be a comma here. Not supposed to have a comma. Refresh. It's beautiful. Okay. So let's go ahead and run that SQL. Uh -huh, so to run the SQL is going to be uh, insert. I mean, sorry, it's going to be uh, connection and then say query and then we pass the SQL. So you can surround it with the if condition if you want to see if this account was created successfully or not. So I just say if, and then I can die here and say account 
created successfully and then i can also come and say else and they say die uh, failed to create account just in case it fails to create so that's it that's it that's great so let's go ahead and refresh and see what we'll come up with so i refresh boom fail to create account so let's see what could be the reason first name first name last name last name uh phone number password email user type okay so what was the problem uh you can find the problem by also dumping that connection you'll be able to see the what the error so let's dump this connection and you'll be able to see the error echo uh pre-tag and then you can dump okay let's dump print underscore r and then you dump this in this sql okay refresh i uh, failed to create the car and then you can see an error list here here is where they give you the error field created does not have a default value okay you have to specify also the field created so comma created so you can also come here and create a variable for created and this is going to have just our today's time stamp to get a time stamp just put here like this time like that okay so let's go ahead and add here one more column see created we we'll also add it here comma and say uh created so from there now we can know i mean hope everything is going to be fine now refresh account created successfully i hope if i refresh right now they should tell me that user with the same email already exists okay so that is very great achievement okay now we have to redirect uh this back we have to redirect this back in case someone wants to create an email that is already ex i mean an, an account with an email that's already existing we have to tell them that hey this account already exists okay but before we tell them that let us first hey, okay okay mm, before we tell them that let us first log in the user right let us first log in the user who does it correctly so i'll come back and okay i'll go ahead and, ref and submit this form so user with same email already exist so i'm going to ignore that. i'm going to delete everything in the database that you should create a fresh account so now to log now let's go ahead and log in the user so we can create the 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 the, 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 the function for logging in the what the user so let's go ahead and do that you're going to just simply say here function and we're going to call it use login user okay login user so we have to put that function that it will be a central place where we'll be putting the what the the, the, the logic of logging in user so i'm going to, uh, to go ahead and do it and create that function so it's going to be function login underscore user so everywhere we want to log in the user will be doing it here under uh this centralized point okay login underscore user as it said in warning okay let's go ahead and do it from here okay so to log in the user so I'm just going to say function login underscore user open bracket call bracket and put here so why is it crying let me see uh Nope. Then why this function is not? Okay, we'll fix this function later. So let's go ahead and log in the user. Set so log in the user. We're just going to create a new session. Session. And then everything that we log in about the user will be under this user 
variable. And then after, we're going to get all the information that the user has submitted and put it inside here. Or we can just go ahead and first get that information from database and then save it. So let's go ahead and do that. Mm, no, that's not a good idea. Let's go ahead and create a function that's going to log in the user. So just simply come here and say function login underscore user. So uh, this function though, that we'll be using for what? For logging in the user. So you can say die time to login user. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this function and see. So that function, let's just call it from top here, but we'll put it in the right place later. Let's call it here from top here. And then we see, uh, refresh, time to login user, right? I don't know why it was warning me here. I don't know. But what are they saying? Um, at nev, I don't know. I don't know why they are warning me, but it works. That's supposed to be. I don't know why it's doing this. Return nothing. Is it now fine? Ah, this thing it doesn't know. Ah, let's just leave it. Okay, so now time to log in the user. I don't know why this error is there. Unexpected. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh -huh, now let's go ahead and log in the user now. So to log in the user, here it will be just asking for the email and password. Email and password to log in the user. Okay. So let's go ahead and log in the user. So the first thing is to do is to, the first thing is to, connect i mean to select this user from what from the database uh -huh. so let's go ahead and provide here the email and password that this person has provided so put, put email and then password okay so let's go ahead and see if the, everything that has been submitted is okay so i can die here with uh, email and then uh, password Let's see if everything there is okay. Refresh. Email and password is there. So now let's go ahead and now see if the to log in the user, the first logic that we'll have to do is to select this user from what? From database. So SQL. I've already written this SQL somewhere. So let's go ahead and copy it. Okay. So I'll come here to login logic and copy this SQL of selecting. Okay. So we don't need to repeat it. Select it. And then go ahead and do that. So we we'll go ahead and see select all from users where. Uh -huh. So here we have the connection. So if you want to use the connection that is outside here, you have to read the word global and then put that connection there. Okay. So that's the only way you can access this something that is outside. Read the word global and put the name of the connection on top of these lines. Then go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and we'll see what has to whatever has come. So can just simply say print underscore r and then come and see what has come. Echo pre tag. So let's go ahead and refresh. You see, there is only one road that has come. So we can go ahead and see if this road does not come back, we'll just go back and refresh. And, and send back that it has failed to log in. So let's go ahead and collect this row. So to collect that first row, we just simply say, um, you, okay, let us first check if this row is nothing, okay? If, if there is nothing that has been returned, okay? So if there is nothing that has been returned, we will return false, okay? We will return false. So just simply say, if numrows is less than one let us return false meaning that has failed to log in because of some reasons okay so return false mm -hmm. 
so that is in case so the other side will have to check if to return true or false so the next thing that we'll have to do uh we'll have to check uh now numbers is done now let us go ahead and collect this user so i can say user or can say row equals uh then resource that has been returned and then say fetch asok so this fetch asok is going to get for us the data that has just returned from what from database so let us go ahead and dump this data here refresh you see that's the data that has returned from what from database okay so you see when you this created is not being substituted <laughs> properly so let's go ahead and refix it eh? this created that's just you uh, forgot put a dollar sign here yes so mm -hmm. now after doing that now the next thing is to now check if the username and password is correct right username and password is correct so to check the username and password is correct to use again password verify you know this password is a what is a hash so this is our password that has been sent to us has been sent to us and this is another password in this row so i'll just go ahead and say uh if password verify okay if password verify so the first path you pass the string the next thing you pass the what the the hash okay so just put row row and then you point at password okay like this so i'll just put here not in case it fails okay so if it fails then i'll return again false meaning that password has failed okay so this row is here i'll just put here i don't know why it is behaving like this i think it's supposed to uh, it's a fetch asset so it is a uh, associative array you have to pass like this okay so i put here a note in case it is not verified and then i'll return false so if i come and refresh everything is okay now after having that now we'll go ahead and create a session so we we'll have to call session start sessions already started so let the next thing you'll have to do what to to log in the user so to log in the user we're going to keep this information into session session user so this session is a place where you can access these variables from anywhere so i just say session and then i put user and then here i can now get i can now save every information that has came from database here like this and then redirect this person to the account okay so this is when we have successfully logged in someone and then here we'll have to return true let's go ahead and return true return true that's when you have logged in you successfully so if i come and refresh we'll see nothing of course these are the same name already exist so let's go ahead and go back you see that's the logic of logging in i hope you can see it and i hope you can understand it okay so when every time we want to log in someone we'll be just calling this function and if it fails to return for us false if it succeeds to return for us true you get it eh? so let's go ahead and go to the login logic again and uh, go ahead and cut this method and put it here and put it here to account created successfully so what account is created successfully we'll have to log in someone okay and then after logging that person we'll have to redirect that person to their dashboard okay so let's go ahead and do that these errors we're going to see how to fix them so die uh here so let's go ahead and redirect this user to the path to their login to the dashboard so to do that we just simply say um dashboard no sorry we're going to say head and then in this header we're going to pass this location say location just write exactly as it is there location and then put a semicolon and then i mean colon and then pass here where you want to direct the user to so we are now going to create here a, sp a place where you will have to have the user account or the user dashboard so let us first see which one which is okay let's just create an uh, an account home eh? 
when someone is logged in or the user is logged in what should they see or to their home so you have here an account orders payment account addresses which list tickets single ticket let's just take this user direct to their what to their orders so we're going to create an uh, a, a file for orders eh? orders so account orders so i'll come here to my project and then i'll come here and create a new file i'm going to call it account orders.php okay account dash orders.php then i can die here and say okay i say account orders just i save that file so when the user successfully logs in let us redirect that user to account dash orders.php okay that's what we're going to direct if we fail to we'll show this one so let's go ahead and create a new account so that is my username so i hope you've understood this point here we're directing the user to what to account orders so let's go ahead and change this email maybe and then submit password 4321 password 4321 submit sign up you see success account orders so it means that here we have successfully logged in the user so that's it for today i hope you understood uh you can uh, rewatch the video or the parts that you don't understand that you should understand and just don't watch it like a movie watch as you practice now in the next video so we're going to now put the constraints like uh, redirecting the user with what with messages and completing the logic of uh, logging in and uh, a user right now i've completed the logic of what of registration only that we need just put the condition in case someone fails to log in i should tell them okay so that's what we're going to do in the next video we're going to work on the what on the complete login logic hope you not miss and see you in the next video hello and how are you my name is mohindo barak and i will come you to our third video of learning how to create a complete e-commerce web application not even learning just we are creating together an e-commerce web application so i hope you're good to proceed with me in the previous video we finished the registration logic where the use customer can create their account and they go ahead and log in in today's logic i mean today's class we're going to look at now the what the login logic so i hope you're good to proceed this with me if you are then let's get started straight to the what to the business so you can see i already have uh, already finished the implementation of sign up let's go ahead and imp implement now the what the sign in okay so what we're going to do we're going to work on this form and then change it to a post form and also define the action to why it should submit the what the login so let's go ahead and do that okay so i'll just simply come to our project or is it it is here and then i'll go ahead and open the what the login ui which is here and i'll log in okay so after log opening the login ui i'm going to look where there is what where is uh, this and the login form so this is the login form now it is here right so now we're going to define the first thing where this form should be submitted okay so to do that we'll just look where there is uh, the form itself where it begins from i think it's not surrounded with form eh? i see only the card this is the card of the entire form of login but i don't see where the form is so it means that now we have to put it by ourselves so this div that is surrounding the login form this div you can as well change it to what to form so by just simply putting here the word form oh no it's not be a good practice just just collapse this card body this one and cut it okay so if you cut it right now you shouldn't be able to see the form here so what you're going to do you're going to create now a form just simply putting form and then we we'll point you at post okay and then between this form between the tags of the form it is we're going to paste the entire form okay that we had cut so you can see the card mean this may mess it up this is supposed to be outside this card body can be here outside 
come to where there is a form make sure that you also close this tag from outside like this i see as if there is another form already let me first undo i see them as if i'm messing up with something okay so is there any form nope only one so let's go ahead and paste there what we had done so we cut that and then we paste it there so between this form we'll surround it with card body okay so paste there and then let's go ahead and refresh ah, our form is there it's working uh, the only thing that you may surround it with card body outside here so i'll go ahead and get this tag put it outside the form and then come and get also the card body and put it on top of this form okay so if you come and refresh things should be okay so things are okay though this registration is not inside the card no problem so <coughs> let's go ahead and now uh, work on the logic of what of logging in so the first thing that we're going to do we are going to define where this form should be submitted also maybe the mistake that we did previously this was supposed to be maybe registration logic and then we also have the login logic so let's go ahead and create the login logic right now i mean registration logic so we'll just simply count this file we'll not delete anything we're just going to save it as save as and then come and put here maybe register logic okay so that is the registration logic so let's go ahead and uh, change where the registration here where registration is submitting and then so we'll just come here and paste this one here okay so this registration is submitting register register logic.php and then the login is going to submit now to login logic.php okay and the method is going to remain post so another thing that we must make sure it is there is the is the what is the username okay i mean the email okay. the, the, the username or the emails so let's go ahead and do that so we'll just come and put here the input here the input and then go ahead and give it a what a, a name so name is going to be email and then also the other input the second one is going to be for password this is in input for password and then this first input is going to be the name and we give it name of email name of email so let's go ahead and now handle this login logic here so we'll just simply come here to uh, login logic file which is here okay login logic so here we don't need now the username and password and the rest we don't need these ones all what you need is the username and password uh -huh, so remove this password not much so we are just reusing the code that we had done remove checking if the user exists remove also this password remove the insert all what you need is here all what you need is here check if the user is logged in or not so it means that we're going to change this one just put surround it with if you see here we are checking if the user is logged in or not remember we have already written this function of checking i mean of logging in the user into the functions file so i'll just surround it with if and put here the first bracket i can put here die and say success and then on the else part i can put also die and say uh, failed so let's go ahead and sum and refresh here the page and then try to submit the correct information sign in you can see success so it means that we have successfully logged in the user now let us look at the failed scenario where we're going to submit the wrong password okay see failed so here in failed we are going to redirect back the user and tell them that they entered a wrong username or password so to do that we're just going to write here header and then pass pass location location and then here we pass 
uh, the path where we want the user to be redirected back. So we're going to redirect this user back to login.php. Okay. We're going to redirect this user back to login.php. So let's go ahead and say location back to login.php just in case this user submitted wrong information. So let's go ahead and refresh. You see, he's, um, he's being redirected back. So if we submit correct information, we see success. But if we submit wrong information, <coughs> we are being redirected back. We cannot even observe that it happened. Okay? We are being redirected back. So now you need to display, we need now to display the message in case someone's, uh, uh, someone was directed back. Okay. We need to display an error message that something went wrong. Okay. So to display that, we're going to be saving that message to display all the error messages to display in what? In a session. Okay. So let us go ahead and create the method that will be calling and it will display the what? The the, 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 the message to another page so let's go ahead and do that so we'll put that fun method in a function because we don't repeat ourselves uh, we're going to call it maybe alert function and call it alert so this alert will take two parameters the parameters will take the alert the type okay the type and the second parameter it will take the message so you will tell it whether this session i mean whether the message that we are passing is a good message or a bad message that is the type then the message itself will become the second parameter so what will this one be doing it will be just <coughs> it will be just doing what it will be just setting the session a uh, session and then it will um, check if i mean it, it will pass in this first variable alert and then the first the second parameter or the second dimension to pass the alert type so the alert type is going to be the one that will be coming through this variable and the other it will be now the message itself okay so that's the that's how we'll be say creating what an alert so let's go ahead and uh, create our alert here in case there is a fail so just simply say alert and then we pass uh, of course the first thing is the type so you can say danger so we'll be passing here the classes of bootstrap for alert types and then the second one is going to be the message itself okay uh, so what shall we do here we are going to say um alert danger so the next thing we're going to put the message okay say you entered wrong username or password okay so that's it and then after we redirect okay we set the alert and then redirect so let's go ahead and try this so refresh let's go ahead and enter the wrong password submit still we don't see anything why because i've not worked on the logic of displaying that alert Let's go ahead and put that logic in the head because because uh, because the head file will be in almost every file in this project. So let us put that checking of the of the alert or displaying the alert in the head so that um, we write it one time. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just simply go to our head file, which is here. And then in the bottom, I hope it will be here. Let us put it here and see how it will look like. So it's going to be something like, uh, it's going to be a div. It's going to be a class of uh, danger. I mean of alert. I mean of, yes, alert. It's bootstrap class. And then you can say maybe alert danger. And then you can put here maybe uh, some message. Let us see how it will look like. Refresh. That's how it has looked like. Is it so bad? <laughs> I don't know. Is it so bad? Yeah. You can design it later. You can surround it with what with the container if you want to. Do you? Uh, class container. Okay. Let's see how it looks like. Okay. We can put maybe some margin top. Mm -hmm. 
say pt maybe five okay so in case you have a message it will be coming here for now it's not that much ugly let's go with that for now so the next thing now we have to first check if there is a message before we display these things okay we have to check so it means that we'll also need to have to include the uh the functions in this head okay we have to include the functions so to do that we just simply come here to the head before anything is opened just put the question mark and open the php tag here immediately here on top before even skip any line let's go ahead and require once the functions eh? require once the what the functions should under files stroke functions.php okay so that is very important i have to put it on top here before anything is displayed okay so, and uh, make sure that it is required once because we require it multiple times and then you end up getting problems okay so now here we are going to check if the session is started if the session of alert is there so you're just going to say you're going to simply say php open bracket and put here and say close it here and say if is set okay the session you see how i'm writing session and you know now you don't know why you need sessions everywhere because they help us do it to check i mean to access variables in any sec in any file so you're going to say if is set session and then you're going to put here uh of alert okay if there is alert session set then you're going to open some bracket here curl bracket here then i'm going to cut this bracket and i'm going to open another php tag another php tag and i put that closing bracket okay so what does it mean it means that only html that is between these tags of php this one and this one is the one that is going to be executed eh? in case there's there's a lot that is set so let's go ahead and put this guy between these these pieces of HP of, of, of these pieces of of what of of php conditions this one and this one so this will only be executed when this is true and you make sure that you organize it exactly like that so let's go ahead and refresh beautiful see it is displaying but it's not displaying the correct message eh? but you know where the correct message is is in the section of message you remember how we set our alert here the correct message we put it here in the session message so let's go ahead and display this message okay display this message so just simply come here and put question mark php by the way you can do like this to do a shortcut of displaying eh? question mark and then in case you just want to display something you can do like this okay so now if you refresh i hope we will see the relevant message can you see you entered a wrong username or password great so the next thing we have to now consider the the, the type sometimes the alert will be a successful one not the danger one so you have to pass also the type so this type will come immediately here we remove the word danger and leave you see here there is just a dash leave the dash and then this part danger one that will be changing so put a question mark and put echo sign close the php tag and pass this guy like this okay the type so this type will be attached to this type and then we'll be able to tell whether it was successful one or not okay so it's after you've displayed a lot it should disappear right it should disappear so to decide to make it disappear we'll just simply and set the alert because we are setting here the alert so we come here before we close the bra the curl bracket here here before we close it here you see then you have to unset because it has done its task then it should disappear we unset it from here then put a semicolon eh? and set it press ctrl shift and f to organize your code to auto wrench your code ctrl shift f so that's great and uh, yeah, that's great let's go ahead and refresh the first time it will appear the second time it disappear that's amazing so that's great now we can now go ahead and do the same for the registration eh? we can now go ahead and do the same for the registration when it was not successful 
let's go and do that very fast so we'll go here login logic copy this alert thing eh? alert thing okay oh let's first finish the registration i mean the okay let's first finish the registration copy this then come to the register logic now you go to every place where we're putting die and change it eh? as well as changing also the redirection so go ahead and put this then after die okay make sure that it does not go beyond there and then you pass a die so here password did not match so here the, the reason will be password did not match so you just change the message to passwords did not match so that's in case someone enters something that did not match that's password not match uh, else here uh, account with same username already exists so we'll go ahead and pass our message and say account with same username already exists mm. so that's very good and then we we'll redirect back to login uh -huh. so here what else what else what else okay fail to create account here uh -huh. you can pass here uh, failed to create account failed to create account okay that's great uh, now here what else here account was created successfully okay account was created successfully so that's a success eh? and then we direct this guy to that place okay so here now it's going to be account created success successfully okay Suck says is that the spelling of successfully? I don't know. So that is great. Account created successfully and logged in successfully. That's in case we log in someone. So this one's going to now the type here is going to change to success, not danger. Okay. So that's great. Now let's go ahead and do for the log for the logic for the log for I mean for the login. We'll come now to the login logic here. And remove this one and put logged in successfully account logged in successfully okay so that is great make sure that also here you die so that is great I'm going to explain everything <laughs> let me explain okay so here in case you fail to log in we set in it in case login success remember we created this login function here that is turning true or false this one you still remember so um it gets logged in successfully it will tell you to are successful and then to direct you to the what to your orders in case it failed it will tell you fail and then to take you back to the login so that's great uh, let's go ahead and now uh do it and now look at these things how they work i uh, refresh and test them eh? first of all enter the correct information submit account was order so you go to order and mean that that was successful i had to set the wrong information you see account was logged successfully message is there wrong information you enter the wrong password okay let's create an account with an existing i mean with the wrong password that I don't match uh -huh. you can see password did not match uh -huh. so let's go ahead and create an account with uh, existing email password 4321 4321 submit see uh password not match uh, let us go ahead and put 4321 uh-huh 4321 but the email is existing user with same email already exists i'll just go ahead and create a fresh new user you have to test things before you proceed uh -huh, 4321 four three two one submit ah everything was okay account orders okay that's great so we can now successfully log in a what log in a user so now let's go ahead and uh, do what and let's go ahead and uh, and do what and create now the the, the account my orders account eh? So that we should be able to 
show the user's account when they are logged in. So to do that, uh, let's log in here. You see, account orders. So it means that we are logged in successfully. Now, let's go ahead and create that logic of uh, account orders. So we'll come to our template and look where is account orders. Account orders, it is here. Okay, so we're going to look and we're going to see where there is uh, the orders after the head. So here, you just search here in the template search, control F, okay, and look for list stand sign and the forward slash, the closing tag of head. Here, the closing tag of head, it is where you can simply know that uh, the header stops here. So we have here this title. I think this title also needs to make for it a what? Um, an external file and also the sidebar. So make for it an external file. Okay, so, but for now, let's go ahead and just put it as it is. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut this. I'll go ahead and copy them. And then I come to my file and then come here to where there is what? Account orders, this one, account orders. And then you're going to do what? To paste here, the data. Account orders like this, okay? So account orders, refresh, of course, we're going to have things that are disorganized. Let's go ahead and uh, include the head and footer. Include the head and footer by just simply coming here on top, very top, and include the head and footer. So you can just come and copy this one that's already here and come and paste it here at the bottom. Okay, and then come and copy the one that is already here on top and paste it here on top. So that's great. So we have head and footer. If we refresh, we'll be able to see someone who is logged in with a message account login successfully. So that is great. Now someone we can log. We, at least we can log in someone. Uh -huh. Now the next thing is uh, now to do the real logic. Like uh, when you click here, you should go home. Uh, we have to connect the things. Eh? When you click here, you should go home. If you click here and you're already logged in, you should not see this pop up. Eh? Okay, you should not see this pop up. Uh -huh. We should look also on the what? On the logout logic. That's what we're going to do right now. So we begin <laughs> We begin from where? We begin from here. If you're already logged in, you should not see this pop up. Okay, we should see only my account. So how shall we do that? We shall do that by just simply uh, doing what? Okay, I don't know even what to say. Okay, let's go ahead and begin here okay we begin here right now to, to make sure that if someone is logged in they should not see this pop up okay so to do that we we'll go just straight to our head to our head and look for this hello sign in okay so we'll go just to our head here our head here okay let me first close everything right click and say close others okay this is our head and then search for hello sign in it is here Okay, hello, sign in. Since we're using template, so you don't need to stress life, okay? So if you already sign in, you should not see the word hello, sign in, right? If you already sign in, you should not see the word hello, sign in. So we're going to create a method that will tell us whether you're signed in or not, okay? We are going to create a method that will tell us whether you're signed in or not. So, or you're logged in or not. So let's go ahead and open our functions. And then that method is going to be somewhere here. So we are going to create that method here. So I'm just going to call it is logged in. Okay. So we're going to go, we're just going to say function. Function. Shit. Oh. Function. And then put here is underscore logged in. It will tell you whether you're logged in or not. Okay. So here we'll just call this. Uh, I mean, we we'll just check if it set this user. Okay, if it set the user session, we we'll just simply say if is set the user session. If it set, return true, and then else return false. OK, 
okay so that's our function that will be telling us uh, the user is logged in or not just call it it will tell you this guy is in or he's out so let's go ahead and implement it here if you're logged in you should not see the word sign in okay you should see your name in fact you should see your name so um yeah you should see your name so let's go ahead and do that we'll just simply put here hello you see here there is hello sign in okay let's go ahead and change that <laughs> oh yeah let's go ahead and do it and change that hello sign in to change hello your name if you're logged in so we'll just break that down and put here an if condition i mean okay php open the tag of php put here if condition and so just put here if and put is logged in call it okay open the call bracket and then close it okay so and put here else okay so i hope we are together so i'll duplicate this and put down here so if he's logged in he should say hello your name if it's not logged in he should just say hello so of course if you're logged in your name will be under so i'm going to put here php okay hello name let me just put like and see if we are okay so far so come and refresh you see hello name can you see you can see now hello name so it means that you are, can now tell that you are logged in so uh, no of course you know the logged in user your name will be under uh question mark php your name will be under so i can put your equal sense is just displaying your name will be under session and then user and then name first name first underscore name that's where your name will be okay so come and refresh hello mohindo that's beautiful okay so if you're not logged in now what you should now see the what the pop-up i mean you should see the hello login okay hello login so hello sign in if in case you're not logged in okay now after doing that i want to zoom out eh? okay so after doing that if you're logged in you're not supposed to see this pop-up in fact when you click there it should take you straight to your what to your orders so let's go ahead and do that let's do that in the next video <laughs> so the 30 minutes so we meet in the next video where we're going to now work on this logic whereby if you're logged in it should not take to this pop-up it should take you to the logged in side so we're going to do that in the next video i hope you'll not miss i hope you're enjoying i hope you're learning so and if you already know i hope you're practicing so let's meet in the next video where we're going to proceed from here and make sure you subscribe please hello and how are you my name is mohindo mubarak and i will come here to our fourth video of learning how to create an e-commerce web application using php from scratch or using plain php in the previous videos the previous three videos if you've not watched if you've not watched them i really recommend you to go and watch them so in this video we're going to concentrate on uh, now working on the implementation of logout logic in the previous log videos we were able to create the account we were able to log in now in this video i'm going to work on the logout logic so i hope you're good to do this with me if you are then let's do it okay so in the very first place you can see here where at least you can tell that someone is logged in and we're able to do what to show their name okay so want when someone clicks here you should not this see you should not see this pop-up again of login okay you should just be taken to your orders when you click here or to your account if you're already logged in so to do that we'll just go straight to our project and then remove and then come here where there is um here 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 what is the modal where there is the modal this is the this is the thing that is launching up the modal okay this one so we want to put the logic that in case you're logged in this or this i this part it should show another link that takes you to the what to the, your account 
So to do that, we'll just again call our method, this method of checking if someone is logged in. Just put if is logged in, and then I'll duplicate this guy, and then come and close this curl bracket here. Okay, and then put the else part. Okay, again duplicate and close. So here we're going to put the link in case someone is logged in. And here we'll put the link in case someone is not logged in. So I'm just going to copy this very link that's already there, this one, eh? that is launching the model this one i'll copy it and come and put it here okay i'll put it there and then i'll come and put here now in case someone is logged in i'm going to put now the link that will take someone to their account okay so i'll just come and put here enough but then i remove here this data bs togo i remove this model and then i remove this href and in case i'm going to put here now um orders link okay orders link uh account orders link if i don't want to make a mistake i can just simply come and copy that link as how we wrote it here okay how we wrote it here where is it anyway here exactly so i'll come and copy it and paste it here remember we're in head so i'm pasting it here to account so instead of launching the model it will implement this one in case someone is already logged in so let's go ahead and refresh great so I click there you see it takes you to your account okay so by the way also this home let me remove this guy from home eh? so you are going to just look here where there is a html index that html so look for index index dot html here It's in, it's in the header here it is here index to this guy okay look for this guy index dash to dot html let us put there our main path which is stroke of course okay stroke will take you to the main path so let's come and refresh here it takes us to the main site oh oh no 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 not that how are we going to do it because it's going to be dynamic eh? it's going to be dynamic so i don't know let us create a method that will be bringing the. Let us create the constant for our what? For our site link. Because if we do like this, it will be disturbing. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a constant for our site link. So we'll just go to functions. And here on top of functions, we're going to create some constants. Eh? And among the constants, we can even put the database name and the rest. Okay. So we can put here define. Is it capital letters or small letters? Define. Uh -huh, the first thing you pass the constant name so the constant name the first one is going to be it's going to be base url okay base url and the base url is going to be the url for your project so if your local host is come and copy this url for your project right this one so if you have a different url what and what go ahead and copy exactly that you have and put it here because the one that you're going to be using that when you put our project online on internet you should not again have that problem of the direction eh? that is base url in fact you can even define here the databases and the rest in these constants so um we can now create um we can now create a function that will be generating urls okay we can create a function that will be generating URLs. In fact, so that you should stop. You should st stop this problem of suffering with URLs. Eh? So let's create that function. Okay. So that function, it will be. Then call. Let's call it URL. We'll be just calling that function of URL and give it something, and then create for us a clean URL. So it will be getting here what you call path. Okay. What you call path, and then, uh, it will be. By default, let us make that path to be forward slash. Okay, so it will be getting this base URL. It will be returning just. It will be returning base URL dot, and then it adds the what the path dot path. Okay, dot path. So that will be the task of this guy dot path. So okay, so it will be getting the base URL and adds the path. So let's go ahead and see if it works. So we'll just simply come now, you see? Hope you've understood it. Eh? Now let's go ahead and uh, do that here in the head. 
okay so let's just look for that index whatever here so let's go ahead and put our php question mark uh question mark equal sign and then you call this url and then you just pass the forward slash or you can just pass nothing okay let's go ahead and see refresh uh-huh you see you click there it takes us to the home page that's beautiful we no longer suffer now with what with url click there take you to the home page you click here take you to my account you click there take you to the home page click here take you to my account that is great okay so now if you're in my account the next thing that we have to check we have to check if you really logged in because someone can find a way how to get this link and they try to access my account before they really really log in so how are we going to do that <laughs> i'm going to do that okay i'm going to do that by um creating a method allow logged in users okay so let's go ahead and uh, create that method um we're going to go here and say how should you call it you should call it protected area i don't know yeah maybe logged in a allow logged in users i don't know how we will call it let's call it protected area so that method is going to be allowing if you call that method that method will only be allowing logged in users to access that particular one particular areas so let's go ahead and put this function create here come to functions here and create that method here okay we're going to call it protected areas okay so then call it pro protected areas you in function remember pro protected protected area okay or you say private area or logged in users whatever i call it okay protected area so this protected area will first check if the guy is, is logged in if he's not logged in it will kick you out back to what to home page uh, so um let's go ahead and 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 do that and do the protected area part okay so it will just check if is not set eh? if is if is set so it should just put here the opposite here not like this okay if it's not set the session of what of user it's not set the session of user it should redirect you to the login page first of all you can first set the message alert i hope can i access alert like this i don't know i don't know let's see if it will allow to access alert alert and then the type will be danger i can say maybe warning warning and then the message will be um login before you proceed login before you proceed you proceed or can say maybe unauthorized access i'm going to say uh an authorized access comma login before you proceed so that is the first that will be calling to check if something is for the area that are protected mm -hmm. so the next thing we have to redirect header and then say location and then you take this user to what to login dot php uh-huh and then we die we don't allow this user to go beyond here in case it's not logged in so we'll be calling these methods on top of every file that you want to protect so for example this account account orders account what does it account orders it is protected so immediately after including the the what we can even first first require here require once even before you include the header require once the what the file stroke functions eh? the php you require the functions the next thing check this guy if he's logged in okay if he's not logged in he will not go beyond here okay uh yeah that's it <laughs> let's go ahead and see that if it works beautiful it works okay now let's go ahead and log out and work with the logout logic so where shall we put the logout logic i also don't know <laughs> i think we should put here the logout button here right let's put the logout button here 
so to put the logout button here what we will do we will come to we're going to just look for this payment method of which you can find here and account orders eh? we'll just search for payment method here so here instead of payment method in fact we can remove that payment method and put the logout uh, okay, let's be, oh sign out is already there sign out i'm not seeing it where is that thing sign out as i'm not seeing it sign out is it in the modal i don't know addresses profile addresses profile info i think it's somewhere here let us look at the original template okay it is think under account here ah let's just go ahead and use this one eh? let's go ahead and use this guy this guy okay so uh payment methods i'm seeing sign out button here but i cannot see it in the what in the ui see it's addresses here and i'm pointing at that right place oh yeah it is hidden on the large uh, screens eh? it is hidden on the large screens it's only shown on the what on the small screens okay let's remove this guy then it will be visible refresh sign out is there okay so let's go ahead and put the logic of signing out the user when they click here so this is the link it's here okay so let's go ahead and create this link and it's going to go to sign up.php sign out.php stroke sign i can make it log out log out dot php so that's going to be our logout file so refresh click there logout.php so let's go ahead and create that logout uh, what logout file control n control s logout.php there it is now open bracket php so the first thing is start session session start oh just include the function of this function okay function with the function 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 include these functions where did you include them here yeah. once include functions then uh, let's do the logout logic we can also write a method for logging out let us write a function for logging out okay let's just log out let us write the method for logging out okay to just be systematic so i'm going to write um, a function for logging out so to log out just can even duplicate this method of is logged in duplicate it and call this one log out okay so log out to just unset okay if it's set it's just unset and set this session and set and set everything that is in this session you can even unset the entire session so that someone should start afresh so after you have to direct this person to login page or to home page okay so let us redirect this person to home page once someone logs out should you take him to login page or to home page that is yours to discuss okay so i i check if this guy is set i unset and then i set back this guy to login page so now on login page i mean i'll go ahead and call this method in the logout function i mean logout file okay so I include the and then i log i call this method logout okay so maybe you should also send a message and say alert and say success 
and pass uh, logged out successfully okay so that's it so it means that here we have no logged out user successfully now let's go ahead and refresh uh-huh logged out successfully now we can see you see now here we are now seeing sign in so if i try to access a protected file like um account orders okay now you see unauthorized access login before you proceed and i'm redirected to the login page that's amazing so let's go ahead and try to sign in you can see your account was signed in successfully that is great okay that is so great you can now log in and log out great now what else you can log in you can log out you can go to home page ah now we are moving now we are moving so the next thing that you're going to do now is now to upload products <laughs> is now to upload product okay you should be able to add a what add a product so first of all we'll have to determine what we need to collect when you're adding what when you're adding a product so just come to the template and you see how we add a product so come to account and come here to vendor set vendor and then come here to product add okay so this is the form that you have for adding a what for adding a product so you just add new product and then we'll have a product title then we'll have the photos you can use here the drop zone and then we'll have the description and then we will have the, pr the price and selling price then we have the product tags separated with commas ah. and then we have product file for sale i don't know what's that <laughs> and then you have here somewhat some product uploads i mean uh, uploading a product okay so that must say let's go ahead and uh, do that let's go ahead we'll begin with product category and then after we'll do the rest okay so we have a lot of things to do because this is the main 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 part and we're going to finish here too much time so let's go ahead and do that okay so first of all a product will have a category so it means that we'll need a category first okay and then after he can upload products uh let's go ahead and do that okay so i'll begin by going to my database and we create a select a specific database that we're working with and then here you're going to create uh, our category okay you're going to create the categories so the product category so i'll just go ahead and say a new table and then i'm going to call this one categories so this one go so we're going to have products categories i think it's the first thing that we're going to do even before we even create a product because a product category a product will depend on what on a category so product categories uh -huh. now the first thing a product category will have an id it will have an integer and then uh and then it will have a default what a default value no it will be it incrementing the integer of this product okay so after doing that the next thing the product category will have a name uh maybe i can make a text and this product category will also have a what will also have um photo i has to, can make it text now it start getting interesting and maybe this category product category will have the parent eh? parent or oh, parent id in case it is a subcategory so it will have a parent id okay so what else it will have description can add here it will have description this description uh -huh. this can be also text and also it will have what a, sl a slug no let's, let's leave the slug but <laughs> okay so can make this on nullable 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 okay so let's go ahead and quit the what category so i'll just go ahead and say save okay so you now have the table of what of product categories 
So now the next thing you're going to do now, we're going to now create the form for product category. Okay, of adding a product category. Then after product category, then we'll have the products themselves. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first thing that you're going to put, you're going to separate this sidebar so that it should be independent and it should be, we should be able to do what to program it from its from my side and avoid us repeating ourselves. So this sidebar and this top bar, they're going to be put in a separate file. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So I'll just simply come to a project. That's the first thing that I'm going to do right now, to put this sidebar aside so that we should not repeat ourselves when coding them, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to come to our accounts, orders, and look for this sidebar, okay? So I'll come and collapse this guy where there is my orders, collapse. Uh-huh. I'll come and collapse. Uh, that, I think this is the title, that top title, that title bar. Okay, that title bar, it is there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, do we need also to put it aside, separate? What do you think? Yeah, let's put it aside. No, let's leave the title bar there. Mm, we will repeat ourselves. Title bar, title bar, title bar. Title bar. Do you need it anyway? Let me see when we have it. Title bar. Uh, it will be showing just the title and account and the, uh, this one don't need it. Oh, it's not dynamic that much. Sort orders. It's not dynamic. It has also a site sign out button. It's not dynamic. Let's leave the title bar there. We'll just make only the sidebar aside this one eh, to be dynamic. So I can cut this sidebar. Okay. Refresh. So we're going to put that sidebar in a separate file. So let's go ahead and uh, create that and do that. So I'll just simply come here to file and then come and say new file new file and come and put account dash side bar dot php so we we'll go ahead and paste that account side bar there uh -huh. so let's go ahead and call it so if you refresh here it's not there so we're going to call it so to call it i can be like renaming so i can get the real name eh? so I'll go ahead and call it in this where we removed it. So I'm just going to say include. Ah, sorry. Put here PHP and put close it and put require once and then we call uh, files files stroke the sidebar. Great. So if you come and refresh, the sidebar should be there, meaning that we'll be now writing only one time and then we reuse many. That's beautiful. So now we see that we're beginning with what? With account say with categories, setting the categories. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, create categories. Well, let's go ahead and first remove all these unnecessary things. Eh? Let's go ahead and remove all the unnecessary things that are in this sidebar and then uh, we can start putting our own eh? so i'll begin this is our account orders let me first create a simple layout so i'll begin by removing this account orders table here <coughs> and just say i remove the pagination i remove this toolbar I can say main content go here. Okay, so come and refresh. Uh, main content go here. So we don't need it from that top. Uh, just go ahead and see this toolbar may remain. Can put here maybe main content go here. Let me see where it is. His main content go here. So yeah, that's it. That's where main content will be going. Uh -huh. So the next thing, we have to save this guy. 
this guy this my orders as a what as a template so that we can be able to reuse it again and again okay we're going to save it as a template so i'm going to save it by saying save as and maybe i can call it account template so when you want to start another account thing we will be just coming and copy and paste this one template okay so the next thing we're going to remove these unnecessary things here so that we should have thing that we have worked on only that are displaying here so i'll just go ahead and come here to sidebar sidebar and then the next that we're going to do i'm going to add the categories so i'll come here and remove this dashboard and then we're going to add here the what categories orders you see have orders so i can remove all these sections and then add the categories so here in configuration let's remove all these so that we can have a clean thing okay so i can put here maybe admin dashboard admin dashboard so here in the section of admin the first thing that we're going to add there did you remove the logout no let's leave it there uh-huh so in this section of admin we are going to add their products categories products categories products categories okay so now let's go ahead and create the file for products categories so everything that is concerned the admin maybe will be beginning it with what with the word admin okay so we're going to put here admin categories or can put pro i don't know i should say but admin categories so we know that will be a file that concerns admin categories i mean categories for the products because this same dashboard would be logged in by what by normal users or customers products categories so just go ahead and create a file and we're going to reference it to as admin dash categories dot php so that's going to be a file that will be handling the what the categories part okay so let's go ahead and create it so we'll just simply come here and say control n control v, control s uh-huh this is the file of categories now if you come and refresh here you'll see products categories click on products categories it is taking us to admin categories is it not found yes it's not found because we save it here in files we have to remove it and put it here outside okay move put it outside i saved it in files okay so save refresh admin categories so you see this admin categories it does not have anything so what you're going to do you're just going to go to add to template account template copy everything there come and paste here so that account template is where we'll be beginning from when we want to create an account file so refresh you see everything is there so instead of putting here my orders you're going to change it and put categories categories so come here my orders change it to put categories okay i can simply say products categories like this so maybe you can also add my orders dashboard my orders on dashboard so come here to sidebar okay sidebar here and duplicate it eh? duplicate it and add it there are my orders how should you how did you call it account orders account dash orders okay so now that account orders will be outside the administrators dashboard so i'm going just to duplicate this aha uh -huh. <coughs> so admin dashboard will be on top and this one will be just my account my account this section and my account will have my account orders and will have my account orders and what my orders and they'll sign out so admin will have for now categories the admin section 
categories, products categories. So I hope you are together. So if you come and refresh, now you can see we have two section for administration. We have products categories, and then you have my orders. This is just for orders, eh? For administration and my orders. That is great. That is great, and there is sign out. So when you click here, you see my products categories. In fact, should be <laughs> products categories, not my orders. Eh? Where is it? Here, change and change it to admin dash categories. Okay, that's great. So refresh. Click here, admin categories. I mean products categories. Click here, my orders. Products categories, my orders. Products categories, my orders. Now, this is the place now we're going to add now. The logic of uh, listing the categories of products as well as creating new ones. So let's do that in the next what? In the next video of how to add a product with its photo and all that logic. Let's do it in the next video. Hope you not miss. Goodbye. Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to the fifth video of uh, creating a complete e-commerce web application using plain php so in the previous video we stopped at the level whereby a user can log in and log out and also started the logic of uh, this sidebar as well as uh, creating what products category so in this video we're going to stay to resume straight and proceed from where we stopped at in the previous video whereby we're going to look at how we can create categories in our what in our project but uh, I would like you to know that uh, when you're going to create categories, I'm going to teach you how we can create components that can be reusable so that you create them only one time and reuse them again and again. You can even reuse them in the projects, in, the, in, in different projects. So that is what I'm going to do. So it's going to be a slow process and boring, but it will be very, very advantageous even in this very project to accomplish it. So with that said, I, I, now, I now hope that you have that in your mind. Now the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to create a page that we are going to add category into our, into our system. So to do that, you're just going to go ahead and duplicate this very page. And the other one is going to, you're going to call it add category or product add category. And in that page, it's, going, it's where we're going to put the logic of uh, doing what? Of uh, adding a category. So let's go ahead and uh, come and duplicate this one, this one, by just simply coming and say, shift servers, file servers, and then I'm going to call this one categories dash add. So admin categories add. So it's the one that we're going to use for what for adding a new category. Let us just temporarily put it on our sidebar menu, so that we should be able to navigate to it. But when you proceed, we will create for it a button on the categories page so that someone can use that to navigate to it. So we'll come to the administrators, what? Administrators uh, section and we're going to add something new. Where is it? This is administrator section and we're going to add a what? A category add. So we'll just come and change here the link and make it admin categories add.php and then the title is going to be category create product categories create or add product category category something like that create product category so if we come and refresh we should be able to see it it is here create product category so when i click there i should be able to navigate here so here is where we're going to put our what is where we're going to put our form for adding a product so you have to go first now to the template and you see which form we can use for adding a what? Adding a product, a category. I think this one can help. This form is called add product and it's in the file called dashboard add new product. So I'm going to copy this name and look for it in our template. You can as well press control P, control P and then paste there. You'll be able to see the specific file that you want. So I'm going to go to my products, add categories to this section where there is a main content here. And there I'm going to 
copy and paste uh, the logic of adding a product category so I'll come here I'll first look at where the header stops okay of course the header is stopping from here okay and then the dashboard starts here then I will go ahead and look this is the top bar the top bar so I can as well copy it if I want it the title bar this one on top so it's already there this one's already there we already have it there and then after we have uh, the sidebar it is here so we don't need sidebar also then we'll have now the content itself which is here so in this content you can see there is kind of a section and there's all that logic let us look how let us see how ours look like um where is the content the content we expect it to be here okay so this is uh this is the section that the other is the other side so i can collapse this section and i remove it and i go to the other side and get where there is content here and then copy copy this one and come and paste it here we're going to remove even those that we don't need for the beginning so i'll come and refresh here our project and you can see we've come up with that okay have this one select category in case we have a parent category so we've come up with that so what i'm going to do i'm just going to remove this select category and then ignore it select this one eh? i'm going to remove it for now so we can have something that is much more clear and straightforward so come and refresh we have that uh oh i don't know why but okay we'll see how we fix it so our concentration should be um maybe you should change this title for the admin because the admin is having something different slightly from the what from the normal customer so come and refresh yeah that's what the admin has okay we'll modify that later uh -huh, so there's add product here uh, everything's just disorganized i don't know why so refresh what we have here uh what did i do i just removed everything okay let's 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 stay there okay so i'm going to put here a section for the product title the the, 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 the category title okay the category title that's most important maybe you can even first leave in these images and the rest just first remove everything and just keep with what with category title so i'll come and remove this select okay maybe i can come and okay let me first remove everything and we concentrate on the name first so i'll come and collapse this one collapse this one collapse this one and remove them we can add them eh? collapse this guy remove and this one remove we can add them anytime so if i come and refresh now we will see that okay so it's going to be it's not going to be product title but it's going to be category name okay so product category name you can call it category name like that so after doing that so now the next thing is now to enter the name but before we start entering the name as i told you that i need us to create components that should be reusable in a way that um, when we want to implement and to create another form we don't need to do what to repeat ourselves that much so here i'm going to create a what a special uh, form field that i'm going to call a text field and then we'll be calling that text field and then it will be a function that will be in one place and then you'll be able to do what to reuse it to avoid us repeating ourselves so i'm going to copy this input okay input in fact i should cut it and then i'm going to create here to functions and the bottom of the function here i'm going to create an a what text input okay so i'll just simply come and create a function and this one i'm going to call it text underscore input i can call it input input like this okay so this input for now it should return just that complete text as it is here okay because it's a string let us surround it with what with single quotes like this mm -hmm. so i'm going to call it this side okay i'm going to call it this side here 
So to call it, I'll just simply put here equal sign like this and then call it and then close here. So here I'm calling this input. Okay, this input. So if I come and refresh, you see, if I come and refresh, should be working. You see, it is working. So now this input, it will be receiving a name because it will need a what? It will need a name. So when you are when you are passing parameters to this input, we should give it a name because it's going to be dynamic and uh, it is going to be used by almost everything. So we need to be specifying uh, its attributes. So the first attribute is going to be a name. So let's go ahead and do that. So to give it, we are going to be using arrays to pass the attributes. And this is how you can use arrays by open square brackets like this, square bracket. So the first thing we're going to give it a name. So name, and then it's going to be like this, name. So that's how we pass what an array. So a name is a name. So let's go ahead and uh, receive this data here. And say maybe it's called data. So the first thing that you'll have to check is what is a name. So let's go ahead and say uh, name equals. Uh, by the way, did you know that you can write an if sign, uh, in line if sign by just simply putting like this is set and then you pass this for example and put here the name and then you put here the question mark the question mark and then after you pa you pass the default value in case this one is true so if it is true it should give us the name otherwise then you put here the columns otherwise it should give us nothing so it means that here we are checking in if the name is set we will be given the name if the name is not set we will be given nothing so this name is going to be substituted here in this column somewhere where there is a name so this id you can even remove it or in fact you can even make the name as a word as same as id so let's go ahead and substitute a name here so substitute a name here it's going to be again these dots separating and then okay so it's going to be name equals then this double quotes and then we're going to separate this string by adding like this like this so this one's going to be this is going to substitute this one here so let's go ahead and see what we've got refresh everything is okay and then we can go ahead and put this one as a id as an id id and there's also a placeholder as a placeholder so by doing like this we'll not repeat ourselves again and again and again to do same thing if you come and refresh so expect what we've sent to be here as a, a placeholder you see that is great mm -hmm. so after doing that, the next thing, in fact, we are supposed to even pass even the label. Let us pass the label because also the label will need us to repeat ourselves. So let's go ahead and copy this label also and put it the other side. So I'll go ahead and cut it. It's boring, but it's part, the best part of it. Okay, so let's also add here a label. Oh, sorry, here. So the label will be coming here. So let us go here and put the label text. So let us pass here another option called label. So label will be label. In case label does not come, it should be substituted with what? With name. Okay. So by doing like that, you will realize that we will not repeat ourselves. Though it is boring, but we will not repeat ourselves. So the label is going to be the one that will be displaying the label text yeah so to stop to to do it just put double quotes like this single single quote and then put the dots and then do like this so this label will be substituted there so that's a very powerful technique it will not allow us to even repeat ourselves so here the label is going to be four and you're going to pass the what the name because the name is the id of an input so i'll come and rub here put single quotes put dot dot and then put here so if i come and refresh if i come and refresh you see the label is there 
so you can even uh, okay yeah the label is there and then you click on the label you go there so if you want to specify the label so maybe i can add another class text capitalized capitalized or capitalized text capitalize yeah capitalize so you see the label if you don't specify it it will give us even automatically so if you want to specify the label it means that you'll have to do what to come here and pass another thing called label label and put maybe uh, uh, maybe a category name like this so if you come and refresh everything is okay you see a category name has been substituted so after doing that so the next thing that you have to do is the values eh? the values the values are very important uh, because we don't want to refill for the same form twice 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 in there is an error that has occurred so what does it mean it means that um, I'm going to use sessions to keep these values in what in one place so in case there's an, a, a value that is in the session that in that, that is that is in a form session then that value will be substituted in that field so that would help us not to do it to repeat ourselves so let's go ahead and do that logic eh? so i'm just going to say value value by default equals to nothing and then i'm going to check if is set and then I'm going to put here a session and then I say form okay form and the next thing that I'll have to do I'll check now the form name um, of that particular input okay so if I if you check there and then the second thing that I'll have to check if is set that form name of that particular input so I'll just go ahead and pass here the name so it means this name will come first uh -huh. so the next thing i'll check if it set this particular field name okay field name so there as well be keeping the what the values from so i'll go ahead if it's set if those are set i'll go ahead and uh, replace them with this okay like this mm -hmm. but sometimes but sometimes you need a specific what a specific value so if a specific value is coming it means that we need to overwrite this one so how shall we check if a specific value is coming of course we'll check it in this data array okay so i'll just simply come and put here maybe value so we'll be passing it here value and then put here value otherwise it should be replaced by value itself so that's great so after we'll have to put this value into the what into the form so to put this value into the form we'll just simply come here and then this value into the form uh, and then after we'll have to give a uh, value you can put even after this guy after this class put value equals double quotes dot dot and on yes dot i mean the those single quotes that dot and then put the value so it means that you can now even initialize using the value so if i come and refresh let us see if we don't have an error yes we don't have an error but if we pass the value say the value is equal to ramina come and refresh you see the value is there so if the value is not there it will not even crash and everything will be right so that is great uh what else uh now we can pass also maybe the error okay the error in case there is some error you should be able to tell us maybe sometimes uh, some forms come with what with errors so the error will be here on bottom here like this so let's go ahead and do that uh -huh. let's go ahead and do that so we'll just come here and maybe create something what you call error text error error so let's first create another value called error error 
So this error will be specified here or here. And then send me that we also need to create another error here. And these errors sometimes we'll set them through the what? Through the session. So we'll have to pass them also through the form session. So I'll have to put here the name uh yep and maybe we can add another parameter <laughs> this one will be storing the what the value so it will have to add another parameter of value okay value so let's add another parameter of value so i'll have to check if the value is set okay so i'll have to add another parameter here value so that you should not mix up with what with errors value so i'll come and collect here from the value field this one okay so let me remove this for now and i'm going to work now on the what that of error so we'll check if the form is set in session if the form name is this particular name is set in session we check if the name value is set now for this one it's going to be the error is set okay so if the error is set let's go ahead and create the what we call the error text okay and that one will be attached to this form so if it's not there it will be just an empty thing so let's go ahead and do that so the error is going to be the error is going to be maybe i can call it error text error underscore text okay error text by default is nothing it is empty space so error text is going to be um equals to this error div that we just copied the other side okay so let's go ahead and make this one I uh, give it a class of text danger, text and danger, so that it should be read. And then we pass the error now. Okay, pass the error here by putting dot dot then the error. So that will be our error text, and it will be set only when there's an error in session. So after doing that, we'll go ahead and uh, pass and add it here and add it to this one. Okay, so I just simply can't say dot the error text. So if there's an error text, it will be added automatically to that particular error. So after doing that, so we've set the errors on that. What else do we need to do? Uh, maybe extra attributes. Sometimes you want to pass extra attributes to the to, to the what to the form so i can come and call it attributes here attributes okay and then by default nothing ah, so i'm going to go and add it here in the input eh? so i'll just simply come and say dot dot no, no let's put those attributes at last because they're optional come and give here dot 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 and then pass the i think then pass the attributes so in case there's someone who attaches extra attribute they'll come here so i hope you've done that now this is a function for text input <coughs> it is look it is boring but uh, it will save us a lot a lot a lot a lot of our time even in other projects okay i invented it <laughs> so refresh here everything is okay now let's go ahead and submit this form and see what we can do with it okay so i'm going to submit this form to admin categories add so we'll just simply come here press enter so I copy the name collapse and then come and put action the form does not have action 
does not have the i mean do i have the form yes the form is there it starts from here okay and we're having only a single input there so let's give it action uh -huh. and then after action let us give it method and make it post okay i think those are the things uh -huh. so let's go ahead and submit can even remove this to make it much more simpler so let's go ahead and uh, submit so before we submit uh, let us write the logic that we receive this form so since we are submitting in the same file as you can see we are submitting to the same file so what i'm going to do i'm going to write here on top logic that will be checking if it's something that is being submitted or not so after protected area i'll check if if is post method eh? you can as well check if it's post method by just simply coming here say check if is post method php okay so i want us to see this i can check if there is something that is being posted so i'll just come here immediately after protection i check if it is post then i can say uh Then I can say here print underscore what uh, post so I can get all the values in the what in the post and maybe I can die from here. Okay, die. Okay, so save. Uh, come and refresh. Everything is okay. Try to submit. See, there's nothing there. I uh -huh. try to submit maybe uh, kids submit you see kids have come now let us try to test and send back the error okay let's try to send back the error by just simply saying return i mean uh, return i mean uh, header uh, location And then we specify the sign so also one more thing that i would like you to know i mean that I'd like you to be doing so is to update the form immediately when submitted whether it is successful or not we should update it so that we should be able to do what the form in sessions that we should be able to retrieve that back our what our data so if i come and refresh here you see i'll add add let me do like this Okay, so now you see, even if I put here something, it is lost because it's not saved in the session. So as we said, if you want to save it in the session, then you have to look here. You see how we're saving our values that are already set in the session. You save them here through forms. Okay, through form, then uh, the value. Eh? Is it? It should be how should it be? It should be through form then the value then the name i think yeah then the name so this should come first uh-huh form value then the name so this one should come first here yeah form value then the name it should be grouped by value i think yeah S yes okay so after doing that now let's go ahead and refresh of course we did not see anything but now we need to set this value that have been submitted straight to the value field so you just simply say session and then you specify the section of what i mean form and then specify uh, value equals whatever has been posted okay so here you see i'm initializing uh into the data that has posted into this one so if i refresh and now you see i'm not being able to get what was that i did before but if i refresh come back now something should be there refresh let's see ah submit okay it is not coming now let's see what will be uh, causing the problem form value ah so let's see this side uh-huh form then value then the name Okay, so let's also see here, form, 
value then the name oh this one should be not in quotes because it is a variable yeah i hope yeah let's go ahead and refresh mm -hmm. see you see name has come there so if i say john do submit see even though i've been redirected back but i'm not losing the data that is my form that is very powerful very very important to users when they redirect the user don't let them lose their data so that is the reason why we've taken this time doing all this stuff so the next thing is now the errors so the error should also be a error i mean the name should come after errors okay error and then then here error then name okay okay likewise here error then the name mm -hmm. so here we check form then say error okay if form error is set then we check if form error particular name is set mm -hmm. if it is set then we'll go ahead and do it and display the error let's go ahead and see how this one can be done it's supposed to be arrow like this okay so let's go ahead and test this the error part uh, then uh, how should we do it so it should be just um, a group of errors okay Oh, yeah, a group of errors. So I just simply say error, and then I initialize it to an empty array, and then I pu I push in uh, the that one of maybe for example name, and then I say name to long something like this so if i come and refresh submit you see the error has come the error has really come so and we do this only in one piece single of file so when we need an input we will not need to repeat ourselves again doing all those things you can use that even piece of code this one eh? you can use it even in what in your different projects in your other projects and doing writing code like that it will save you as will save you from what from suffering okay so let's that's it i think now what's remaining is um, now working with this logic and submitting it to what to the server okay so we have finished creating our heart and input now in the next video we'll look at how now we can submit this input and this input is very powerful to the way that you just do like this and then it does all the logic of checking the error, resuming content, and all that, which is really important. So make sure that you understand all what you've done. So let's meet in the next video. We're going to now look at um, submitting this data into the what? Into the database. Hello, and how are you? My name is Mohid Mbarak, and I welcome you to the sixth video of creating a complete e-commerce web application using plain PHP. In previous videos, we reached a level where we were able to do what? To create now a category or a product category. Now, at this level, we are going to see how we can add category photos or in our website. So it means that it, we are now at the level of uploading images of what? Of, of category and products in a what? In a website. And there is, if there is something that you did not know, you should know it now. That website starts becoming interesting when they start dealing with files or file uploading or file displaying. Because files such as images, they make our websites really look good. You can imagine a website without images. But the more the images we put in our website, the more this, the, the, this, the slower it starts becoming. And users don't want to listen to any website that is really slow. When the website becomes slow and then the users will start dropping one by one because they want fast things. Though images make our website look great, but... When it comes to speed, 
images will make our website look slow, be start beca be start slowing, and users will not like always the websites which are really slow. So it becomes interesting to start optimizing the images in your what in your website, and that's what we're going to look at in this very video. We're going to learn how we can optimize the images size when you are uploading them or there when the users are uploading the images to a what to a website because if you create a platform that will allow users to share images to a website what does it mean and a user can upload an image that is 3 mbs or 5 mbs and you know this image will go to the website but when another person or when the user will be previewing given that very user and start slowing 5 mbs is a very huge image what does it mean? It will start creating a bad experience to your what? To your users. So we're going to learn how we can compress, how we can crop, or even even uploading the images to what? To the web server or to, to, our, to our system, and then we compress them, and then we do what? We make use of them. So with that much said, you now know what you want to do. Let's go ahead and start doing it. So the main point is we're going to learn how we can upload the images to our website as well as how we can compress the images that have been uploaded to our website so this is the form that you had created before and we're going to add here one more field that is going to allow users to pick images and then upload them to our, to our website so here the main part is going to concentrate on image and then as, uh, after we have handled the image thing the photos thing then you can go ahead and do what and see how we can proceed with saving this uh, item to what to the database so let's go ahead and do that um <laughs> so where, where are we uh this is our form that had created but uh, this time we are not going to use this uh, dynamic form we're going to create just a simple image form so this is uh the file that we had created for adding a product so let's go ahead and add here another another input we're going to simply say uh, it's going to be a div and it's going to be a class of um, row and then it's going to be another div and going to be a class of call uh, 12 and then we're going to put now here another div and going to give this one a class of of what me increase the font and collapse here so you can see things clearly so here i'm going to give it a class of um a form control of not form control yeah form group form dash group and then here i'm going to give it a label and you're going to give it for maybe a uh, photo okay so this is going to be category photo or image and then here we're going to now give an input and we're going to call it a uh, photo i don't know how we called it on database let's just call it photo okay so here we're going to give it type of file and then we're going to pass accept and it's going to accept dot jpg dot jpeg dot png ah, i think those are the types of images that we we'll need to deal with the rest we'll ignore so that's what you're going to access so if you come here and refresh we'll have our input there only that i need to give it here some class a class of form control form control like this okay so let's go ahead and refresh and see what we've got see we have that there so i can simply come and give here some what maybe some empty of four so we can have something like this so this is our image so how to put type image type uh, type file sorry <laughs> type file and don't forget to give it a name or oh, types already there don't forget to give it a name in fact this was a name not type eh? okay name like this so i think they are good so if i come and refresh we'll have that okay so we can go ahead and select an image and then upload it so let's work on the logic of uploading first so to upload an image in php first of all we need to uh put make this form to be of type post and the second thing we have to add an encrypt 
encrypt type of multi part form you see you have to add this thing here encrypt equals to multi part stroke form data otherwise if you don't add this then your form will not be able to upload an image please go ahead and add this in your form so after doing that now let's go ahead and see how we can now upload this as what as an image so i'll go ahead and first work here and uh, where we're receiving this form we are receiving it at this point so i'm going to put here just echo uh pre-tag so right now we're going to concentrate on files so we're going to be print r print underscore r and then we're going to put here files okay then i'm going to die here so let's go ahead and now upload the file and see if we'll be able to get here so i'll refresh here i'll come and now uh, it's coming for the first time oh this is supposed to be when it is post when it is post so i'll cut this one and i put them here it's supposed to be here 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 this was just for testing so i'll just put them here so ah so let's go ahead and see what we've got so i'll come and refresh okay so i'll go ahead and upload here an image so i'll get some photo from my computer i have any serious image here mm, yeah let's upload that one okay so i'm going to put it okay let's go ahead and upload so I click on upload you will see we are able to get this information that has been uploaded into what into the file so i'm going to create a function as i told you that we're going to practice good practices here so that we should avoid even repeating ourselves i'm going to create just one function that will be able to upload an array or a group of images that have been submitted into files and then give us the results of locations where these images have been uh, saved okay so we're going to create just that one function and we'll be able to reuse it even in different projects that you will be creating okay so let's go ahead and create that function so for that function we'll just simply come to file and and then i'll come and functions here and then i'm going to create it here but i already have that function so i don't see the reason why i should create it afresh i'm going to bring that function here and then i'll explain it to you step by step as you understand it so this is where we're going to put a what a function i th i'd create that function because it's called upload images eh? i'll copy it and then come and put it here and i'm going to explain everything step by step okay so this function is here i called it upload images so you'll go ahead and create a structured function this function i'm calling it upload images okay so this function will take the files or will take anything that you have uploaded from what from files and then it will be returning you an array so at first place it will check if these files are not empty so if they are empty or null it will return you an empty array the second thing it will check if this file have somewhat a name as you can see here a file the next thing it has a what a name so if it will check if this file has I said <laughs> uh, this one is not applicable here and this is not applicable here uh, let's just go ahead and create it afresh <laughs> let's create it afresh okay so after doing that so here i've checked if these files are not empty so the next thing we're going to check uh we're going to start looping through these files as we are uploading them okay so i'm going to put here uploaded files array uploaded images okay it is here just an empty array and then we're going to start looping through that uploaded through those images and we see if they exist or not so let's go ahead and first die here and we see if everything is okay here okay so i'll put a semicolon i hope you're still together here so i'm going to come here to in fact if you want to navigate you press alt and the tab key you'll be able to navigate through these files eh, that you have opened in windows i mean on mac you press control 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 and what and the tab key you'll also be able to navigate so let me navigate to this file okay where we are going to upload the images and i'm going now to call this function of upload images and i'm going to pass to it 
the super global variable or files that you're uploading so i'm going to say upload images and i'm going to give it these files here here okay like this so after doing that here i'll just expect the results eh? images i can just simply say images images yeah the one that i'll expect here that have been uploaded okay so let me go ahead and dump what will return here so after doing that let's go ahead and uh, now receive these files so we create here an empty array and then here just die okay so if i refresh here you can see we are here now we're at this point okay so now the next thing i'm going to loop through this file that i've just been given to me okay and then we see how we can now start doing the logic of uploading one by one so i'm just going to say for each and then for each and then i can put here maybe as as what as maybe file let me call it file okay so it is a single file we are looping it together so now now after doing that the next thing is now to start uploading this file one by one first of all i can state the memory to be unlimited to, okay and then after we start uploading one by one so to upload one by one so here i'll just simply first come and check if it's set okay if i don't want to see let me die here let me print underscore r and i show you how a file is a good file echo a pre tag here so we are going to see what a good file is comprises of okay so if you refresh here so you see a good file should have these parameters so i'm going to check if this is set and this one and this one this one and error is zero then i'll be able to proceed so to do that we just simply say if okay if it's set i think i already have it here Okay, if all these are set, then you can go ahead and proceed with uploading files. I hope you can see that, okay? It's not complicated. So I'm just saying if this is file, not files. If it's set the name, if it's set uh, the name, if it's set, I'll check if the error is set. I'll check if the file type is set. I'll check if the the temporary name of the file is set and then the name so i can die here and say uh, good in case everything is okay good so if i come and refresh here you'll we'll see good so it means that uh, everything is okay so for this particular file that we are uploading at this point so after making sure it is good now uh, let's go ahead and now do the logic of what of uploading the file so to upload the file you can see uh, we have to uh simply say uh, these are other things that i was doing another thing it's not important here uh we have to simply say the, you have to simply move it like this okay you just simply move it like this let me see do we need extension yes um okay so we're going to create a file name and the file path so they are the most important part so we are here we are at this point right here at this point don't be confused by other things okay we are this point so the next thing we are going to create now uh the, the, the we are going to play we are going to get the extension of this file because we need to know whether it's a png or jpg or all the rest so this is the extension of the file and i can get it by just simply putting here path info this is a inbuilt php function and then you say file and then you put the name here and then you put here the extension okay the this constant is called path info underscore extension it's a constant file of p it's a constant of php so after doing that you will be able to get the, the the extension of this particular file whether it's a png or jpg or the rest so the next thing that we we'll have we're going to do we're going to get the file name okay we're going to create the file name because we don't want the files to vary themselves so just simply say file underscore name equals time so this time will get for us the current seconds at this particular time the time and then you can put dash and then i don't need this make slug <laughs> don't mind about that okay say old thing that i was using okay so maybe we can put you also some random number some random number rand between maybe 1000 and 
and what and uh, 10,000 okay so and then attach this one so here what we're trying to do we're just trying to come up with a unique and then we attach the extension and without forgetting this dot don't forget this dot so what you're trying to do here we are trying to create a unique file name that will not look like another file to the extent of doing what to the extent of uh, overriding another file so let me go ahead and die here and see if this file is the file name that we have come up with if i refresh you can see this is the file name this is a number of seconds this is a random number and then this is a file extension so if every time i refresh you'll have a unique name to the extent that uh, these files it will never be the same okay so after doing that now the next thing that you're going to do we are going to now create the path where we need to upload this file to okay you are going to create a path where we need to upload this file so to do that we'll just simply come and say path okay path or target path okay or destination let us call it destination this destination equals then you're going to put this file into our folder called uploads uploads okay uploads so i'm going to create a folder and we're going to call it uploads so in that folder is where we're going to be putting our files so i'll come here to a project and create here a fresh new folder i'm going to call it uploads right click new okay new folder here new folder i'm going to call it uploads it should be on top in the project here where is it it should be on top eh? i want to put it on top move okay so this make sure that that uploads folder is on top here on top of everything can you see it's on top top here so after making sure that the file is then uploads i mean the uploads there now the next thing is now to upload the file there so i'll come here you see this is the point that we are so this is the destination let's look see how the destination look like the destination is a combination of the file path the the the, the, the upload folder and um uploads folder and the file name the new file name refresh here you can see upload stroke this so after doing that the next thing is now to do it to upload the file now to upload the file so to upload the file we use this uh, method where is it move it's called move uploaded this one eh? so we use this method it's called move uploaded file move uploaded file that's the method that we use and we are going to pass the file temporary path which is here file temp tmp name like this okay the file temporary path please note it properly and then we are going to pass the destination or where i want this file to be uploaded so once it is successful it will return to us the result whether it is true or false okay so we just can just simply say if it fails if it fails so it, you just do like this that's how we check if it fails so if it is true we can just simply say if equals false okay so if it fails then you're just going to continue okay you should not stop here but you can first check and see uh, if it failed okay so i then here i can die and say success instead okay so let's go ahead and see if it will upload successfully or not uh, as you can see our upload folder there is nothing there at this moment okay in our upload folder there is nothing there uploads let's go ahead and refresh and we see success so if we come to our uploads folder there is an image that has been uploaded okay there's an image that has been uploaded that is great that is me <laughs> okay so an image has been uploaded successfully now the next thing is we are going to see or how we're going to learn how we can compress this image okay we're going to see or we're going to learn how we can compress this image but about uploading it has been uploaded successfully so once you have uploaded the image successfully i don't know whether this time will be enough <laughs> um let us finish the uploads logic then the the, the compressing can come eh? so what once it has appeared successfully what you're going to do you're going to get this path okay we're going to get this path and add it in these uploaded files okay 
So what uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create here an array img. I can call it image. Or I can call it img equals. And in this first parameter, in this first parameter, I am going to put src, meaning the image source, okay, or the original image equals to the destination, of course, okay. So the original image is the destination. So after doing that, now the next thing is now we'll, we'll compress it. So the next thing would be the thumbnail, but for now we just have this image. So after we're going to return this back, okay. I mean we're going to add it in an array so let's go ahead and add it in this array of uploaded images that we created this empty array here okay we're going to add it here so just to add uh, something in an array you open open curb, open empty brackets like that and then you specify img like this okay so that's how we'll be adding the images so then when you finish, then you will be able to return this bulk or these images, okay? After here, after this, at the end of this function, which is this one, return. So by doing like that, you'll have created your good function that will help you to, that you can reuse it in different, what? In different projects. Let me close uh, what I'd just done. <laughs> these other things, I'm going to wrap them, eh? they're not important. Okay, so at the end of the day, you have to return uploaded images. Am I returning them in the right place? No. Yes, yes, this is the wrong place. I have to return them here at the end of the function, you see? Here. So, there we are. There we go. So, everything is now all right. You can pause the video and look at this function carefully and make sure that you understand it. Um, make sure that you understand it. Pause the video and look at this function create it and then you can be able to reuse it even in your different what in your different projects so now i uh, will just give only files or oh, i see this is what we call the function and just give it only files and then we expected img's back okay so that's the function you can see it's independent function you can see it right very independent and well functioning function in fact remove this die just continue in case it was not uploaded okay so you can pause the video and look at it properly now let's go ahead and see what we've come up back with come up come back with so i put here and then i refresh you see an array of src and this image if i just simply put a stroke here we should be able to see the image and you can see the image is there so it's great uh, it's great to have learned how to upload the image. Okay, so now in the next video now we're going to see how we can compress the image because that's the most important part. When you upload images, you have to know how to compress them. Otherwise, if you don't compress them, users will upload very heavy images to your server and the same users will suffer or run away because of the poor speed or the poor functionality of your heart of your system so in the next video let's meet and we see how we can crop these images using php or how we can compress them using php hello and how are you my name is mohindo mbarak and i will come here to the seventh video of creating a complete e-commerce app web application using plain php in this video we're going to concentrate much on how we can compress the images that have been uploaded to our web application using php itself we're going to learn how we can crop how we can compress so we have a lot of things to put together so let's get started so in the very first place we're going to set up the environment we're going to work from so this is where we are and i'm going just to come here to admin categories here where we are so here on top of everything before i do anything before i do anything here i'm just going to do that logic of what of compressing the file okay so let's go ahead and create a function inside uh, our functions okay and we're going to call it maybe compress file we can call it <laughs> thumbnail generator i don't know anything that you want so i'm just going to call it thumb generator thumb generator thumbnail thumb uh, just begin with a function name function name um, maybe I'm going to call it create thumbnail. Okay, 
create thumb okay we'll see what will pass to it but let's just create a plain function that we're going to call create that we're going to we have named it create thumb uh, creating thumb i've just died there and say creating thumb so in this function it's going to, going to put the logic of creating thumbnail okay or compressing the image so in this function i'm going to come back here to our file and i'm just going to call this function here and then stop the project here just we are concentrating on what on thumbnail generation so i'm calling this function it is inside this file of functions if i click i press control and I click on it i'll be there so if it means that if i come here for the very first time i'll just say that okay thumb whatever that's where we are so i'm going to what i'm going to do i'm going to put our two images on what on an i'm going to put two images i'm going to put the image on <laughs> on on, on in, in our in our folder where one that we want to compress so we'll be compressing as we are doing what as you're comparing so uh, i have here some image that you can use for compressing okay that you can use for testing compression the image is 1 mb 1.2 mbs so what i'm going to do i'm going to put this image in this folder of uploads okay i'm just going to put here temporarily that image in this folder of uploads so i'll come to uh, uploads here you know where the folder of uploads is i can say reveal in finder for those who are using windows you can see that word i don't know it's find an explorer i don't know something like that okay but the main point is i want to put this file here in uploads okay that we're going to use for practicing where is it anyway has it disappeared it has gone okay let me go ahead and uh open it i've just downloaded it here it's here showing folder it's here so i'm going to put that folder. i mean that file here in in uploads i'm going to rename that file as one so it's one dot jpeg so it's better to it is must you have to be knowing the what extension so one dot jpeg i'm going to come here and do what and uh, display it i want to display it on uh, what on the screen of our project so how shall we do that <laughs> let's display it here okay let's display it here just say img and src is under uploads 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 stroke one dot jpeg so if you come and refresh it here you should be able to see it let's come and refresh that file should be able to be seen it is there super huge very heavy let's go ahead and give it a limited width so give width a hundred percent i mean fifty percent fifty fifty percent okay refresh we have that file there let's just give it maybe uh 20 percent because it is becoming so huge that's our file that's our simple file that we're going to use uh to learn compressing okay that's the file uh, it should give it 35 okay so there is our file that's our file that you're going to do that to compress first of all let us determine its size we can determine its size uh, by using what file size uh, just that will need some php logic right so let's come in a tag of php and determine its size before we start compressing um file size how do you get it file size just simply say file size i think yeah file size equals put a dollar sign file size equals file size and then you specify the what the path okay the path here so you can now echo the path echo and then say maybe h1 <laughs> h1 and then put here a forward slash and then i can say original file original 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 file and then i can put here its size okay its size okay so that's enough so let's go ahead and refresh original file its size is here okay the original file size is here 
let us uh, change it to MBs. MBs. So just put here like MBs. MBs. Change it to MBs. Eh? So change it to MBs. We have to divide it by what? By a thousand. So I'll just put a stroke. One thousand. I hope. One thousand. Refresh. So the original file is ten thousand or one thousand. It's in bytes. I think it's ten thousand. Okay. How many zeros is? One, two, three. One, two, three. One million bytes. Okay, so it's one point two MBs. That's the original file. Okay, I can do it maybe some. Okay, that's an, uh, the original file. It's one point two MBs, and we are displaying it on the screen. Okay, so after displaying the original file, now let's go ahead and now do the logic of maybe now compressing this file. Okay, so to compress this file, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to need an um, one more, one more what? one more library i mean one more file that is going to help us to compress so there's a, a library on github it's called zebra image i don't know i don't remember the name it's called zebra image something like that so it will make our life much more simpler much more simpler in compressing these files so let's go ahead and uh, get that zebra image and put it in our, in our project so to get that zebra image just come to your github i mean to, to your google and type zebra underscore image in fact i'll put the, the the link to this zebra image file in the description of this video so you should not suffer so this is the image zebra image this one it's a php file on github to make your life so much simpler so my internet is slow <laughs> okay it is there uh, i'll save you from reading all this documentation but you can read for more details okay so I'm going to do what I'm going to, you see, you can crop, you can resize, you can compress. See, you can even compress. So I'm going to do what I'm going to, to, to put that image into our project. So to do that, I'll just simply come here to our files folder here, to our files folder, and create a new file that I'm going to call zebraimage.php. Okay. So after putting that zebra image.php in any file, the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to put now the code of this zebra image. It's just a single file. So you just come to git uh, to GitHub to this link and then come to zebra image file, this one here, this file. Just click on it and then click on this copy, this code. Okay. So you'll wait for it to process until it finishes copying. So it has been copied. So come and paste it here. Okay, I'll just do want it. I want to save you from doing a lot of things. So paste it there, whatever it is there, just leave it there <laughs> the way it is. Okay. So after doing that, the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to include now this is our functions file, eh? is it? Is this functions? Did I, am I the one who did this? How could I write these things? Okay, no problem. So after doing that, the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to uh, to include it in your, into your what in your project so to include it into your project you just simply write this okay you'll find here what they tell you to do okay this one require once then zebra let's go php this piece of line so we're going to come to our functions and put it there on top just put on top here require once zebra underscore image dot php so this image should be the same name as the one here this file name should be the same name as the one here so after doing that now let's go to our compress th create thumbnail uh, path i mean uh, m method or function here so in that one we're going to write uh, this piece of code uh, that we do when you're compressing an image i've already done them before so i'll not uh, waste much of your time i'll just take you step by step so I mean, uh, I'll just take you step by step. So the first thing that you do is uh, you're just getting the image quality. Okay, so the first thing that you do, you just, uh, we can first set the memory to be unlimited so that we should not have, uh, auto, we should not run out of memory. So you have to write that, write this line in your what, in your project set, a memory to be unlimited like this. Uh, so the next thing that you have to do is uh, to write the what, here I was checking if the source is created and the and the what and uh, 
and uh, the target. So here is uh, we're going to receive here the uh, we're going to receive and uh, okay, let's create here the source. The source is where the file that we're going to compress. So the source here is going to be files. I mean, sorry, uploads. Uploads dot jpg. Okay, jpeg is jpeg, right? Uploads stroke one dot jpeg. This is uh, the the path of the original file that we want to compress. So there are two things that we need. We need the path of the original file. Mm -hmm. So after getting the path, and then we get we create the what the target. Okay, where I want to upload this file. What we call the target path. So the target can be let us make it two dot jpeg. Okay. So this is going to be the original. This is going to be the generated or the cropped file or the compressed file. So after having those two in place, so the next thing that we're going to do, you're going to create now the zebra image instance, okay? By just simply saying image equals image equals new zebra underscore image, okay? As how it is there up, okay? So after creating the zebra instance, the zebra image instance, the next thing you're going to write this, okay? So you just say image auto handle exif orientation make it false okay but this one is option you can even find this piece of code in the other thing that i showed you so after we're going to specify here the source by just simply saying this image source path equals the source that you received here that you created here so the source path is going to be the source here and then we're going to put also the target where i want to or the file that want to be saved so that is the target so you have the source you have the target so those two after doing that so the next thing that you're going you can write and you see how we are setting them this is the name that you have to do target path like that okay can even not suggest eh? so after uh, putting this the target path the next thing you have to determine the quality okay the quality of the image that you want okay the quality of the image that you want so the quality will be ranging from 100 to different numbers okay so this is how you save the jpg quality okay so if you want to determine the quality aspect ratio okay if you want to determine the quality there are some parameters that i will show you that will have to set but let's uh, first leave that quality matter I will show you how we can uh, consider the qualities according to what you want. So the next thing you can you may want to do is to set the parameter aspect ratio to be maintained or not. It's better to make it maintained. And here in large images, if the image is too small, you should it be enlarged. You can set to false or true. And then preserve the time. That can be set to true. So that this image should not be created as new. And then handle if exit, this I've already set it. Okay. So you add this piece of line here so it only can make it to true so you have you can see and these things are what uh -oh. they can be auto suggested okay they can be auto suggested so after setting these parameters after setting these parameters so the next thing is now going to be to do is going to get the image size okay so this image size will help you to determine how you much you want to crop the what the file but that one I said we'll handle it later. So now the next thing you have, you may want to set the width and height of your what of your file. Okay, you may need to set the width and height of your file that you want to do that you want to compress. So that one you'll also handle it later. I'll show you how to. So here the next thing you may need to set now the image quality. So if you want to maintain the quality of the image. This is the place where you set it from. Let me just keep it simple. I'll set it to be 50. Okay. So after doing that, now the next thing we're going to now compress the image. I'll show you how we can vary those qualities later. But for now, let us go ahead and compress the image. So let's go ahead and compress the image. So to compress the image, we just simply say image resize. Image and then you, po you point to resize. And then here, in case you have, if you want to pass the width, you can pass it here. Or you want to pass the height, you can pass it here. 
So let's just go ahead and specify the width and assume that we want to crop the image into a square. So we can say the width is got 100 and the height is equal to 100. Okay, so we specify here the height and the width. So in case you want square images or square images in your what in your project, this is a place where you can square these images. So you can say the width to be 100 and the height to be 100 and then you pass this constant if you want to make it centered or not. So these constants you can find them in the zebra file itself or you can find them in the documentation of, of the zebra file here. You see? You can find them here. So now if it fails, if it fails, it will execute this path and it I mean to execute, let me die here and say failed to execute here. The reason why it failed. Okay, and if it success I mean if it successes, I mean if it is successful, it will be here. It will execute this uh, one. Okay, and I'll put here the note. Eh? I'll put here the note. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this file and we see if our image will be compressed. Put here done. So let's go ahead uh, and let's go ahead and run this file. So come to the project and refresh. It will take some minute. So you see success. So it means that now we have the second image here with the name of 2.jpg. Okay, two, it is here. So let's go ahead and display that image next to this one. You can just simply come and make this one two dot jpeg. Okay, same, same, same. So if I come and refresh, you can see our second image is here. And let us see <laughs> the size of our second image. So this is the size of the first one. Uh, let's go ahead and get the size of the second one. So size 2 and here is going to be 2. So you can see, fresh. Now the first image, oh, let's go ahead and put and update this one. Okay, so the first image, let me go ahead and, ref and reduce on their sizes. Maybe we can make it 20, 20 so we can see things clearly. So refresh. So you can see the first image is uh, 1.2 and <laughs> the second image is really, 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 really small. But you can see there's an image. Eh? So if you want maybe very small images that you'll just use for thumbnails, displaying something like that. If you know like uh, WhatsApp, eh? they do convert images and make them super small uh, f before they load. So you see, this one is very, very small in bytes. It has been 0 0.0001, but you can see, and has been cropped to uh, a square that you want. The height, we have specified it, and the width has been specified. So if you're creating your, your shop, you have to specify like how width and height that you want to use your photos, for example. You see here, we have, a, we maintain a specific what? We maintain a specific dimension for the what? For the images. You see? We maintain a specific dimension for the images. So let me show you here come here open image in new tab and we see and I show you how you can get this the dimension. So I'll open this image in new tab. So right click and say inspect. So you can see the dimension of this image is what? You can see them down here. You can see them here down in this white thing, this one. So when I move my mouse there you can see the dimensions are they measured? <laughs> They are not measured unless, unless maybe you save it and look at its dimension. Right click, show in folder, and then go to info, get info. So you can see the dimension of this image, uh, the width and the height. Are they specified? I'm not seeing them. <laughs> There is here. Maybe this image is kind of corrupted. Eh? Uh, let us look at the dimension of the image that we just uploaded. By the way, we can use even PHP to get the dimension of the image. Uh -huh, let's see the dimension of this image that we just uploaded. This one. We're going to finish. Don't worry. 
revealing finder let me show its dimension get info uh -huh, yeah, this one is not corrupted i hope um The dimension is here. You can see it is 24,000 pixels. I mean 2,400 pixels by 3,600 pixels. So that is a super huge image. So according to what you want, so you have to also define the dimension that you want to use in your heart, in your project. So that your images will not look that weird when someone is previewing them. So, that with that much said now, let us go ahead and see how we can improve the quality. So, the quality of uh, this image, in case you want maybe a bit more quality, you see, this beautiful girl, but she has been dropped to this size <laughs> and that quality. So, for me, what I do, I create a method that, um, I create a method that, uh, that, that considered for me the size of the image and then tells me the right quality to which I should reduce it over. Because you cannot set this quality. You see, this is where we set the quality from here. You cannot set this quality of uh, image, which is two, 1 MB, to have the same quality that you want to compress for the image that is uh, like 10 MBs. Or the image that is 500 MB, fake KBs, and you want to set it the same qualities of the very huge image. So what you do, you create a function like this one. It's optional, but you can do it. Uh, so in case you want to change the quality, in other words, you can change it from here. For example, if I put it 100, you can see the image is slightly much more clear and the size has increased. So if you put maybe like 200, refresh, you see the image will keep on increasing. Maybe you can make it like 600. And also another thing is the size that we set here, is the size that we set here. So if we set maybe here to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels, see, that's a good square. You see, the image is now slightly clear and is 0 0.2 MBs. How have I done that? By just increasing the dimensions here and they change here so this i've just made it much more uh clear so if i come and refresh and make it 50 but the pixels are okay you see it is there so it's just all about how you want things so here the image that has one mb it is 0 0.2 mbs and it's still clear and in the dimension that you want it for example if you want maybe horizontal image you can go ahead and send this one maybe uh width and make it maybe 800 okay so you may first determine the dimensions that you want and then this library will help you to compress the image to what you want. You see? It is now vertical. Vertical. You see? So if I make this one maybe 500 and come and make it maybe 1000, the image is going to stand. Okay, it has stood. And then the quality and the size still has reduced, has been compressed. So that's how we can do it. Um, so for the images that I'm going to compress, uh, another thing that I was going to tell you, this is the technique that I say that you have to determine according to the what? To the size. So here I first get the size of the image and then I determine what? Its quality. Okay. So here I change it. So if the image is like, more than 5 MBs, the quality should be 10. If the image is more than 4 MBs, the quality... So you can also design your own, eh? your own if. So I'm going to copy this simple function and you can also write your own. And then I'm going to paste it here. Where the compressed image it is here. I'm going to paste it here. And I'll be calling it before I start compressing. I'm going to remove this one. The function is just very, very simple for, for doing that. I just give it size and then it will tell me what to do. So I'll just come and call it here. I call it here and then I just pass I just pass uh, the image file size. Okay? File size. Of course the file size like this. And then I pass the image path. Okay? The image source which is here.
Okay, so let's see. so I was also considering the wheel, the rest, and but for now you can go ahead and do the rest logic by yourself. Okay, but for now let us go ahead and compress this one and crop them to 500, 500, 500, 500, and then here the quality will be returned. So this one will determine for me the quality, and then accordingly the quality will be compressed. So let's go ahead and refresh. You see, that's the image. The size is really small. It's really l slow. Uh, I can, I can do what I can increase maybe here, a thousand, there yeah, thousand. Or I can even come and play with the what with the compression sizes, the quality sizes. Let me refresh. So slightly better, but it is really small. But you can also decide on your own. So that's how I'll be compressing my images. And then s then I'll maintain the what? The original one. So that's done. Now what we are, when we are done here, I'll have to return the path of the image. Eh? I'll have to return the path of the image to whoever called this function. So I'll just return the destination. I'll return here. I'm already returning here. So if it successfully compresses, I'll return the new path, the target path. If it fails, I'll return the original path. So now after doing that, mm -hmm. so it means that you can also play with these sizes. So after doing that, so I've written, we have written the function that will help us to be compressing our images, right? It's a very important function and you can see it there. Straightforward. So now the next thing I'm going to now be passing here, the source and the destination. Source and then the target, the destination. I'm going to remove these ones. Uh -huh. So uh, we are seeing now how we're going to implement it. So I'll go ahead and copy this create thumb. And then I'm going to remove these unnecessary things that I put you on top. I'll remove this guy. Okay, so our function should be clean. I'll remove this function that we are calling so that our function should be clean. Everything should be okay. So if I come and refresh, I think we'll get an error calling something that is not having arguments. So let's go ahead and uh, do what and finish it from here. So I'll come here to admin categories and I'll remove this method. I'll remove this. So now we need now to implement it when you're uploading an image. We should compress the images. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So I'll just simply come now to upload images here. Images, upload images function, this one. And then here, after a successful upload of image, after successful upload of image, I'll have to compress it. Okay, I'll have to compress it. So I'll just simply do that by calling create thumb. And then I'll give it the the what the de the the destination is going to be now our 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 source okay our source then the target is going to be I'm going to <laughs> otherwise if you don't change the target then what will happen it will override the original image so I'm going to create here another file called thumb so this is the file name okay this is the file name so let us go ahead and create another file this thumb destination so it's just called thumb destination thumb destination so thumb destination is going to be is going to be the same uploads but i'm going to add here the word thumbnail thumb like this underscore okay so it's going to be the same name but the word thumb will be added to it to the thumbnails eh? So let me go ahead and pass here. I'm going to pass here the thumb destination here like this. Comma, thumb destination, put a semicolon. So it means that thumb destination will be almost the same file name, but the only difference will have the word thumb in front of the file name. So let's create the image, create the thumbnail, create thumbnail, okay? Or you can as well, yeah, that's it, okay? So after doing that, then we'll have to, uh, go ahead and add here. We see we are getting here the original image. 
so let's go ahead and add the thumbnail image okay so i can call this one thumb so this one is the original source and this one the thumb so it means that we'll maintain two images the original image and the thumbnail when we provide when we displaying these ones on the full screen of a product we we'll just show the original image but when you're presented pre presenting all the images we we'll show the thumbnail so i hope that's understandable and i hope you're the same page so that is and then return here they, we add them in uploads and then return them here so you see how i have implemented the create thumbnail you've seen how i've done it okay so i can even update this one from here by just pressing thumbnail equals to like this because one return from what has been uploaded so i hope you are together now let's go ahead and refresh and see what we've come up with so i'll come here and upload some new file okay i want to get here some image that is slightly big okay yeah let me upload this one okay so I select this image and i upload it upload so you can see there we are we have got our source which is the original image and the thumbnail so let's go ahead and check and open these two so we just simply go to the same name and then stroke so the thumbnail you see the thumbnail has been cropped to what you want okay uh, let's go ahead so it was max to maximize because this image was so small eh? and you say the image should be a thousand pixels uh -huh, so let's go ahead and see the original image copy that and paste it i have put upload twice so the original image is there was well, the original image of a written here yeah, the original image is there and uh, the cropped image is here the compressed so and these images are already now what in our uploads folder where is it uploads you see they are here they have come see compressed you see both of them are compressed but you cannot even tell which one is really compressed this one's compressed so thumbnail is so huge i think we need to reduce the pixels to a thousand okay that's good and uh, that's how we compress images i hope you've understood i hope you've understood okay i hope you have understood just watch as you practice so that's how we compress images in uh, php so in the next video now we're going to proceed and see how we can now save these categories into our what into our databases thank you for watching at this point make sure you understand make sure you understand okay so we meet in the next video now okay when you're going to proceed with this uh tutorials of creating an e-commerce web application goodbye hello and how are you my name is mohindo mbarag and i will come you to the eighth video of creating a complete e-commerce web application using plain php in the previous classes we learned i mean the previous class we just learned how to upload an image and we learned also how to compress that image so today we're going to proceed from there and complete that logic of uploading a category or adding a product category into our system as well as inserting it to the what the database so i hope you're good to get started or to continue with me if you are then let's resume so we stopped here where we were able to where where, where are we we are here we were able to do what to upload a product with this category i mean category with this what with the, its respective uh, file or image so what we're going to do we're going to create here one more category for example cl clothing okay save this image and i'm going to call it clothing so what i'll do i'll just come and say clothing okay and then i'm going to drag and drop this image to this file here okay and then i say upload okay so you can see the image has been uploaded with uh, as well as what as its uh, thumbnail so if i come and open this thumbnail i'll be able to see it okay so let's resume from there straight um where, where are we so 
uh, this is admin category add and this is a place where we've been uploading images and these are the images that we're getting so this is an array of images so let's go ahead and now see how we can insert this data into the database so to do that first of all we're going to determine which tables i mean uh, which information we need to insert in the what in the database by just simply coming to our uh, localhost stroke php my admin and then go to the categories so from there we will see the columns that we need to enter data into so i'll go ahead and paste these columns here put this protected area here and then i'll go ahead and post these columns here uh, like this and then i keep the naming okay so the id is not incrementing so we don't need it then we'll have to enter the name the photos and then the parent id and then the what the destination so let's go ahead and do that so the first thing is we're going to put this thing into an array and we're going to create a function that is going to do the whole logic of uploading these things in the same place without even um, repeating ourselves so after determining what we need so let us go ahead and put these things into what into an array so the first thing is the name so i'll just simply go ahead and get the name that will be that has been sent from the post for so instance i can just simply say data and then say name equals and then this is going to be what is going to be uh, the name that was submitted from the post. It's going to be named like this. Okay. So, and then we have the photos. So, you know, the photo is going to be the photo that we just uh, compressed these images. Okay. So, it's going to be photos here. So, after compressing these images, you should know one thing that these images are not... It's not a string it is a what it is an array as you can see here it is an array so we're going to convert it into json so that it should become a string and when we'll be reading from them we'll be converting back into a into an array so we're just going to say images i mean uh, okay, oh, here we're going to just put uh here in photo we're going to put json encode json encode so it's going to change these images into a what into a string okay then the next thing is the parent id we have not worked on that and the description we have not worked on it but we're going to <laughs> we're going to so before we go we, before we work on those ones let us first write the logic of uh, creating one method that will be working on the logic of inserting the data into our database so i'm going to comment this function eh, so that you should not keep on uploading images every time okay and every time we refresh i will uncomment it when you do what when you finish writing that logic of inserting the data otherwise it will keep on adding here images into our what into our folder so after doing that now the next thing is now to write the sql but as i said we're going to create just one function that is going to work on that whole logic of adding data into our what into our sql so let's go ahead and create this method okay so of course it's going to be in the file of what in a file of functions so let me first close everything right click here and say close others and then i'll come to functions it is here functions so in this functions file is where we're going to put uh, that method that is going to work on the logic of adding anything in our what in our table so let's go ahead and do that and create that same method so it's going to be uh, maybe you can call it my my insert db insert okay let's call it db insert function and then db underscore underscore insert okay and then we're going to put the logic there so first things first first of all we need the, the table name okay so let's go ahead and get here the table name this is going to be dynamic okay table underscore name the second thing we are going to need now the what the data so this data is going to be an array array of data so let's go ahead and now create the sql generate the sql so we can now generate the sql by saying sql equals to and then you open the bracket i mean open the quotes and say insert into so here we're going to pass now the table name insert into table name and then you say values 
Mm. Okay, so now after there, we're we'll going now to create a, a column of values, okay? A column of values and then the column of data. So let's go ahead and uh, see how we can do that. So here we'll be accepting, uh, in this data, we'll be accepting an array, an associative array. Otherwise, if you don't send an associative array, then it will not make sense. So we'll be ac uh, accepting an associative array with the what? With with um, the key as the table column name and the value as the value that's going to be entered in a what? In a row. So let's go ahead and just dump and just dump what has come okay echo 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 what echo pre-tag and then we just dump print underscore r and then dump whatever's come in data and die here so let's go ahead and call now this method to try to insert data into the category so i'll just simply come here and then say um here okay this is the place where inserting data so I'm just going to call this method insert data and the table name is going to be categories and then the data is going to be data of course. So this is how we'll be sending the data. See, this is the data name and then this is the, the, uh, the column name and these are what? These are the values. So let's go ahead and refresh and see what we've got. You see I'm trying to dump here everything that has come through with the data uh, parameter overable. Let's go ahead and refresh and see what we've got. So you can see we have um, clothing and then we have photo, which is just having an empty string like that. So after doing that, now the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to loop through this as we create an SQL with the name of value and the value itself. So now let's go ahead and uh, do what? And loop uh, through this data so i'm just going to say for reach okay so here yeah, it's going to be data okay and then as you can see here the keys i'll be will be saved here for example let me echo here echo echo uh keys and then and the value put here some HR so you can see this the difference save if I come and refresh here you realize that uh, the name is the key that's the name of the column and the value is the one and the value so this will be the name of the column and then this one will be the name of what of, uh, of, 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 of the key so let's go ahead and do that so you're just going to have now if you remember the format of our SQL we have the column, then the word value, then the values themselves. So let us go ahead and create uh, here a variable that we're going to call column names. Okay, names. Columns, column names, column names, column name, I don't know, equals to nothing for now. And then after, we'll just create another thing called uh, values, column values. Okay. Row values, whatever I call it. <laughs> table columns and table values. Uh, anyway, the main point here is one will be the col will store the co the names on the column, and the other one will store the names of what of the values. Okay, so after doing that, the next thing is well, the next thing that we're going to do. We're going to now do what? Now start adding. Okay. So if we realize that um, if you realize in SQL. At last, they're not supposed to be what? They're not supposed to be uh, a comma. So that's uh, we're going to determine whether we are still at the first or not. So I'm just going to say is first is is first equals to true. So I'll j I'll, I'll when once finishes the first, we'll change it to what false. So I'm going to check if is first and put here else. Okay, so if it's first, uh, if it's first, I'll make it now false. Okay, false. Aha. Uh -huh. Otherwise, 
we are going to add a comma because we'll know that something has been added to that column okay okay yeah column values I have to put a comma here comma uh -huh. uh, we put here a quote and then uh, also values so it means that um, if something is not the first if it's not the first you have to separate with the what with the comma that's the whole point of why we are putting here a quote otherwise if it's the first then we will not need to put the a comma before it that is how we are trying to trying to get the word the SQL. So after doing that, now the next thing that we have to do, now we have to add this uh, this value into this value on the what on the SQL the, the, the on the on the on the Excel. I mean on the on the column. So the column name will be uh, will be concatenated dot equal to. Always remember to add this dot in for before the equal sign others to be skipped so this one will be keys keys like that and then this one will be the value do, 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 do. trying to create things that will help us save time and then uh, this value of course will have to be surrounded with what with the uh, single single code say eh? so i can do like this and then surround them with like this single single quote at the each of them okay so let's go ahead and see what we've come up with so far so i'll just simply come and join this sql whereby you can just simply begin here with the opening bracket and then at uh, the end here at the end here we close their brackets outside this loop we close the brackets okay now the sql is going to be the sql is going to be i uh, remember I already have this insert into the table name then you're going to add here concatenate this guy dot equal to that then you add echo sign and then write the word of, i mean values values and then add this last one Ah, this one should be concatenating eh? dot dot put here dot and then add that okay dot like that <laughs> so after doing that now let us go ahead and echo this sql and see what we've come up with so far and see if you're on the track or lost it <laughs> refresh perfect we are still on track can you see that it's beautiful is generated you can imagine insert into categories then the name comma photo and then the values this comma this and then surround with these quotes so the other thing sometimes an integer it doesn't want to be surrounded with what with quotes okay so an integer is not supposed to be surrounded with quotes you know that so let's go ahead and check if something is an integer or not before we surround it with the quotes so to do that we'll first get how to get uh data type data type in php how how to get data type of variable in php how shall we do that there is this function called type okay let's go ahead and see how it works function called type okay you can call this one data type so before you add surround it with the quotes you have to first tell at least the data type okay equals we call it data type equals and then you pass here the value because you know integers you're not supposed to surround with quotes otherwise it is good it will cause an error so let me see the data type that we have here uh, for example let me see if it will work refresh okay okay refresh here 
a string okay so it is string so i'm going to say if it's not string then it should be left as it is if it is string then it should so i can i say now here if that data type is string if the data type is string it should be surrounded with quotes else if it is string it should be surrounded with quotes else it should be left the way it is hope that will keep us away from issues of so if it is string surrounded quotes else we don't surround it with what with quotes single quotes those single quotes are the one that i'm talking about eh? those single single quotes so i hope you are together now come and refresh uh-huh you see those are surrounded with what with single quotes let us try to now pass the data type that is not having a what as uh, that is uh, that's not a string for example an integer for example parent id where is it where is it where is it where are, where are we here for example let's pass the parent id we say parent id equals zero a pure and clean zero because an integer let's go ahead and see what we've got you see it was not surrounded with quotes can you see parent id it was not surrounded with quotes that's a powerful insert tool that you're going to use even in uh, projects that are not here so i think that's all let's go ahead and now run it that's beautiful so to run it i'll just simply let me first remove this echo thing and dying thing is no more echo no more print okay so let's go ahead and run it so to run it we have going we are going to first need global of connection con and then after we'll go ahead and execute it and just say if uh, con and then we pass the query query and then pass the sql then here can die uh, success and then here can die else failed okay refresh success beautiful okay so let's go ahead and return here whatever comes back okay let's return here return true return true and here return false like this okay so that's beautiful so that's great okay that is really great we can now use this function to to insert any kind of data in any table with simplicity wow so make sure that you understand it eh? you can pause the video and look at it very carefully and create such function for your own okay and make sure that uh, you understand it and also maybe implement it in your own projects so there uh, after creating that insert function so we we'll no need again to write uh, those kind of inserts we had inserts so after creating the insert function now the next thing is let me remove even this okay the next thing is we're going to check if it successfully uploads we'll direct to all if it fails then direct to the other side so i'll just simply say if 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 uh i'm just going to sound this one with if because the return true or false so i'll just surround this guy with if if db insert into categories this data is true i'm going to redirect to all categories else i'll redirect on this very form okay so let me remove these unnecessary things aha uh -huh. now what you're going to do here you're going to say if it's successful uh -huh. if it's successful we should redirect it to all categories okay here admin categories eh? i mean sorry yes so i'm just going to put here header and then pass uh, location and then pass the file so that is if it's successful let me also remember to put the what to put um the message okay so we just simply put alert and then say 
this one in case it fails so the class will be danger and the thing is going to be failed to create category please try again please try again okay so put your semicolon okay semicolon there so and here and here we put success success and then put uh, created a category created successfully created category successfully then come and close this guy here i can redirect to categories not categories add all categories and then here we die <laughs> we do what he he do die beautiful so save come and refresh okay ah create category successfully beautiful Okay, so now when create a category successfully, one more thing that we have not forget, we have to clean the form. Eh? We have to clean the form. You remember we are saving some things in the form here, so you have to clean this form and make it done. Otherwise, it will keep those stuff. So and we do that only here, 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 when it is successful and set, and then we pass that guy. So by doing like this, we'll be able to do what to have things in control so now the next thing maybe we need now to list the categories but before we list the categories let us first go and finish the categories form which is add categories where here 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 products what is admin dashboard create categories here okay so i have to add the description and the what and uh, the parent if it has parent or not so to do that we'll have to see what were you missing? Let me come and find out here to the from the table. Um we are missing the na the name is over, photo is over, parent in case it has a parent and description. So description, we're going to create again another input. So we we'll come here to our form of add. So we already have this first input and then we're going to have another input for parent category and some categories will have some parents so let me come here and call this one call md i mean call md6 and also create another one call md6 here okay call md so this is where we're going to have the parent category and then the photo i put here a uh, parent category to be option parent category it will be option and then parent category so it's going to also have this type of what of an input so i'll come and copy this and come and paste it here i'll just remove these two i'll only keep the word form group okay paste the guy there okay paste this one here and it's going to be parent category and the name is going to be parent category like that <laughs> no this is supposed to be name parent category parent category so after doing that description um we'll work on it okay description will work on it let's first fix this one parent category so let's go ahead and refresh okay so here you have parent category and here you have the photo so this photo okay that's okay now parent category is supposed to reference an existing category right it's supposed to reference an existing category a category that does not have uh what uh, a, a a a parent so what does that mean it means that we need to select all the categories that we have and then make them a drop down here so we have two things to do first of all to write the select sql function and the second thing is now to do what to to write also the drop down of uh selection so i don't know which one i should begin with <laughs> okay i think we should begin with the uh, selection eh? of uh, the drop down of selection then we can work with uh, in ui and then we can work with selecting the next video 
from database so let's go ahead and do that uh we will do what we will go ahead and this one for text now let's go ahead and create another one for select so i'll just simply press control and click on this it's going to look much more like select like like text so i'll just go ahead and copy this of cell text i'm going to create another one called select input okay so i'm just going to call this one select input select input so select input uh it will come with the data okay and then the most important part here is going to come with options eh? options because it's going to be a drop down so i'm going to put here something called options it's going to be horrible it's going to be not to be simple and this one i know because having some kind of selection so it will take the data itself and then the options so how does select look like let's first write here the plain html and then we'll come and put it here okay so select will look like this select ah like that then we'll have here what you call options 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 okay so that's how it look like <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and create it we will not fear it so i'll cut that come and paste it here okay uh -huh. first of all the label will remain the same the label will remain the same meaning this label remain the way it is then the whole problem is here in the input eh? in this input selection so let's put this one into uh what into quotes single quotes one one eh? so like this aha uh -huh. so the next thing this first thing eh? these parameters that we have here they are going to remain also the same these ones beginning from this up to the last they are going to remain the same so i'm going to cut them and come and paste them here here okay the only difference is this thing of options eh? so i can remove this guy here and i'm going to replace it with this guy so the only thing here is going to be that one of option eh? so the option is going to be these very options these very options these ones oh, the only thing here i also have to remove the value because we don't do the value here in select the value starting from here up to here has to be removed okay so now let's we'll see how we generate the options so i can come here and say um maybe i can call this one select tag equals that and then i'm going to create another one called select options okay select i'm just trying to show you how you can <laughs> create things that you're going to reuse again and again and again and again hence saving your time so options i mean select options options equals uh, nothing by default okay nothing so now we're going to loop through these options i'll assume it is an array this one and i'm going to loop through it okay so i'm going to loop through it for each aha uh -huh, like this so these options they'll have a key and a value so we'll make a key to be what the user will see and the value to be what i mean the key to be the value i mean to be the read the what they will be hello and how are you my name is mohindo bar and i will come you to the ninth video of creating a complete e-commerce web application using a plain php in the previous video we stopped at the point whereby we were able to create this dynamic uh, input for the parent category so in today's video we're going to now get the categories from database and then put them here so that in case the category is a subcategory the category that you're creating is a subcategory of a certain category then we should be able to select from the previous or existing category so in, in other words what you're going to do today we are going to select the category that already in the database and be able to display them so we have a lot of things to do to write that whole logic of creating a, a dynamic select uh function that will be getting data from what from the database let's go ahead and start doing that 
So I'll go straight to our code and this is the place where we stopped at where we're able to do what to display these things dynamically in this select input. So what you're going to do right now, we're going to get the existing categories from database. But I, as I said, we have to write functions that uh, will not allow us to repeat ourselves again and again and again. So if you write one function that will be doing for us the task of going to the database and select the data and give it to us for all the tables but one function, it would be really important for us in this project or even in other project so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to this functions uh, file this functions file and create that uh, function and we create that function that will be doing the task of selecting so what i'm going to do i'm going to expand this uh, files section so that you can be able to see some here in the files of function and what you're going to do here we're going to write here select db select that's what how that's how we'll call it i'm going to call it database select or what we call db select so let me look what we had put db insert so that uh, these functions at least they should be close to each other so this is the db insert you remember how we did it okay so i'm going just even to duplicate it i can duplicate it or let us just create it from scratch so i'm going to increase my font so you can see things clearly and i'm going to write function and then i'm going to call this one db select this is going to be a dynamic function that will be getting for us data from the table at any time or for all the kinds of table. So the first thing that it will get, it will get the, um, the table that's going to select from. And the second thing that it will get, it will get the condition. Okay. So after doing those two, so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to just start, we are going to start now writing the SQL. So say SQL equals to, and then from here, you say we're going to say uh, select all from, and then we specify the table, okay? So because this table will be provided, select all from this table. And then after, we'll have to add the what, the condition. But sometimes someone will not send a what, will not send a condition. So we can make this condition to be default by nothing, okay? So in case someone does not send a condition, we should not fall into, or we can just make it null by default, okay? So in case someone does not send a condition, we should not uh, fall into that problem of uh, uh, putting the condition when it's not really there. So after doing that, after writing this SQL, the next thing we're going to say, check if someone really sent a condition. So I'm just going to say, if this condition is not equal to null, then we'll go ahead and add that condition to this SQL. So let's go ahead and do that. Just simply put here. Uh, and we add where, where, and then we attach the condition here. Okay, we'll put the condition so ah like this. So the condition, I mean sorry, this will be condition will be here. So if condition is not null, then we'll go ahead and attach this condition in this SQL. So after doing that, <coughs> the next thing that we're going to do, we are now going to uh fetch the data. Okay. So I can just simply say uh, the what the response, I mean the resource equals to and then we run, we call, we first create, we first uh, put here global connection so that we should be able to get our connection that we had created before in this local variable, as a local variable. So I'm going to say resource equals to, then I say connection and then we run the SQL as con, I mean, sorry, query. And then here we pass the SQL. So after doing like this, we're going to go ahead and run the loop of fetching all the data. So I can say here uh, records, or you can say rows equals to empty uh, array. So let's go ahead and loop through the resources, I mean the responses here. So just going to say while, and maybe you can say maybe while row, while row equals to then you say resource, then you point at um, fetch a sock, fetch 
associative array asoc so like this and then whatever comes we are going to push it into this resource i mean into we're going to add it into this uh, row rows okay these rows so let's go ahead and do that just simply say rows and then you put this square bracket to push there something okay this square bracket rows equals to row okay so this would mean that this square bracket means that this record will be pushed to this array it will be added on top of that array so after getting all those responses that we have looped and added this uh, rows so the next thing we'll have to return all the rows by just simply saying return and then you pass the rows so here it will be able to do what return the rows that we have done what that we have collected from the database so let's go ahead and try our function and see if it really works i hope you've seen how i've created it so let's go ahead and try it and see if it really works so i'll just simply say db select and then i'll come here back to our admin add category this one uh, let us go back to top here and just test first okay so i can say maybe dollar sign and say uh, records or rows equals to and then you call the function db select so the first thing that we pass we pass the table so you can pass the table and say rows okay rows i mean sorry the table is categories eh? categories like this okay so the second parameter it's optional because it's just a, for condition and we made the condition to be null by default and it is null we ignore it let's go ahead and see if we really get these rows so i'll just simply echo here a pre tag and then after doing that i'm going to dump whatever comes back print underscore r and then we pass there the rows and then here we die so today it means that we stop the what the condition so let's go ahead and run this and see what we'll come up with i'll just simply come here and do refresh okay you see i'm going to refresh here so when i refresh you see everything has come back that is great you see all the rows have come back that is so great so now the next thing that we're going to do we're going to try to pass a condition and see if it will also work so let's see where the id is one so i'll just simply come here and put a comma and pass a condition so a condition will also be a string so i can simply say id equals to one like this okay so that's the condition so if you refresh see one condition has been implemented so our function is really working properly is really working properly only one thing that i did not do maybe in this where in this way we have to make sure where this when we're, when we're adding this condition we have to make sure that there's a space between here because if you don't put space then it will be attached to what to the so it's supposed to be just you can as well concatenate here like this and then we stop repeating ourselves by just simply adding this where like that it will also work so here i just didn't want to repeat myself here so let's go ahead and refresh and see if it's still okay still okay so you see that so it means that now we have one simple function that we will be using to collect all kind of data from the what from the tables on different tables so the next thing that we're going to do right now we're going now to get the parent categories parent categories they are categories which don't have what which don't have parent ids or the categories which don't have them uh which don't have parents the top categories like this one okay like the way you see this one clothing is a parent category shoe is a parent category then these ones on bottom they're the child child categories the one which don't have the one that have parents so it means that after getting these um after getting these categories where are we here after getting these categories we have to check if a category is having parent ids in fact you can even pass it as a what as a condition okay so let us pass a condition where the parent id is zero so if a parent id is zero we will know that is a what is a parent category so let's go ahead and refresh that so we are able to get the parent categories 
so now the next thing that we're going to do we are going to format these rows to be in a form of select options if you still remember our select options here then this format it's an id and the value id and the value id and the value that is the select format so what you're going to do also we're going to put here we're going to create the array for categories we will have the ids and the values so let's go ahead and do that so we will just simply say we're going to loop through these rows also we're going to loop this through this what has come back so which are going to be for rich and then we'll pass here the rows and then this will be the key the key of course is going to be the i the key is going to be do we need the key i don't think we need the key so i can as well remove this key i'll just put the val okay so let's go ahead and dump this value and see what, how it looks like so i'll just simply come and dump the value and see how it looks like by simply saying val like this okay let's see how it looks like so you can see the values are just id the name and the photo of that category something like that so you're going to just simply get, collect the id and the name id and the name so it means that we are going to create here another empty array that you're going to call that you're going to term it as what as uh, categories eh? categories cards equals to empty array by default and this category is going to have let me name it properly categories and these categories uh, it's going to contain it's going to contain the id and the name of that so the parameter here will be the id it's going to be val and then id and then it will contain val then the name like this okay so that will be our categories now let's go ahead and dump these categories and see what we have you see i'm trying to dump the categories now if you refresh uh oh something is not right attempt to read property id oh it's not supposed to be like this it's not an object it's an array so i have to put a square bracket eh? like this it's not an id it's an array you see so i'll cut this so put like this okay it's not an id it's an array so if you refresh ah you can see we're having the id and the value id and the value and there's a what the array so id is the key and the value is uh, i mean what we are seeing is the text okay now the name of the category yeah so that's great now let's go ahead and pass these ones to what to the options of select that I had created eh? so let's go ahead to the bottom and pass this one as option of what or select that we created so i'll come here to select okay i'll come here to select in fact this category is supposed to be on top here let me see we're supposed to put them here on top that can also work mm, but for now let's go ahead and focus on this one okay so i'm going to come here uh to select instead of passing this dummy array i'm going to pass now our categories okay our categories so if you refresh now we'll have you see clothing and because we had only clothing so some category they don't have parents eh? so let's go ahead and remove and put the empty thing in the first part first uh and put the empty data in the first part in the first row so let us do go ahead and do that so we can just simply come here here in this very first one eh? so we can add um okay we can just create here our first category which is just having empty so the id is going to be zero and the value is going to be is going to be what is going to be no category no parent category no parent so the category that don't have parent and then we add it to these categories eh? by just bring this and then say equal to i can just simply put here zero like this and then attach no parent hope that's okay um yeah i think that's okay so this is the first category that has no parenting eh? 
so if you come and refresh you see no parent as the default one and it is having the id of zero so now let's go ahead and uh, add the remaining columns the remaining uh, rows uh, we'll just simply come to our category so we don't have the description we have not added the description so let's go ahead and add the description section here uh, the description is going to be a select area so we'll just simply come to here and add select area so select area we can also <laughs> do for it uh, the dynamic one but for now let us just keep it simple we're going to just put here select area a simple one so i'll come here under this row and create another row here just give going to say div okay div and then this one's going to be class of um of row and then going to have here div that's going to be class of call 12 and then here you're going to have form in phone group form group and uh, you're going to have something like this just form group div class form group and then here we're going to have the um yeah now going to have the label of description and the text is going to be description and then going to have your text area text area of what of name description and then id description i can remove these rows and calls ah and then ah, that's it i think i have to give it now a class of form control like this okay so let's go ahead and refresh and see what we've come up with i've come up with that only that you maybe need to add here some margin top of three empty three or four so let's go ahead and refresh we have that one or three okay so after doing that so it means that we have created our form for what for selecting uh, categories okay so let's go ahead and now submit or oh, adding a category now let's go ahead and add this uh, category but before um, and add a category so this title have to change also upload category or can say add or you can say submit okay so what you're going to do here before we add this category into the into the uh, before we add the category into the database we're going to first check if this uh data is correct okay if the data is correct so let's go ahead on top let's go here on top and then we'll come to here before we save before we insert we're going to first dump the data and see if things are really okay before we start inserting so I just simply come and say echo and then put here pre tag and then we're going to dump everything that is in data before we insert it okay that has come through the post has come to the post print underscore r and then we first dump everything that is in the post before we insert it and then here I can put die so i'll save and then let's go ahead and refresh here uh, so you can put here maybe uh what is which other category do you have we have shoes let's go ahead and put shoes shoes and then the parent category it has no parent category okay let's try to test by selecting clothes and then we'll select its photo select here some photo and then just put here maybe some details about this so submit ah uh -huh. we can see we have the name we have the parent id it is well set and we have the what the description so everything is okay only that the photo is in file so it was not included so if i put here the data the whole data if you refresh you can see the photo the photo was not uploaded <laughs> the photo was not uploaded is it the logic after uploading the photo let's see upload photos yes 
Aha, uh -huh. so image, it's called JSON encode images. Oh, you see the mess that we are doing. We are cleaning images again. Let me put this one on top. Let me delete this. In fact, we are deleting everything that has an image. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh and see if things are okay now. So everything is okay. Only that the description is not there. The description is not there. So let's go ahead and add description. Uh, description. It is here. This is the name. And it has come, but we only have not saved it here. So I'll go ahead and add a uh, description here as this. So then we can go ahead and save. So I can remove this die. And then always remember to clean this form after you have finished saving. So let's go ahead and refresh. Perfect. So if we come and refresh now. If you come, if you try to add a new category, this sign out button should be for add new, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to add it there. So let's just go back and see. Create category, refresh. You can see we have the categories listed there. That is great. Okay, that is beautiful. So let's refresh and add maybe one more category. For example, gadgets gadgets and then uh can call this it has no parent and then you can give it a what a photo and then we can put here maybe gadgets details just for testing submit uh-huh category created category successfully so that's great i hope you can also you are also at that very point so make sure that you also at the same point. So after doing that, now we're going to display here the categories. Okay. They're going to display here categories. So we'll come here to our template and see where the quicker they are displaying um, products on the dashboard of the user. And you can find that under, under what? So this template is complete. Let's go ahead and see where we can display that. So just simply come to account, come to vendor, come to products. So in this product, so we will find a section where these categories are being listed. So what you're going to do is, I mean, the, the products are, going to be listed, are being listed. So what you're going to do, we are going to copy all these categories. I mean, we're going to copy this HTML and do what and uh, manipulate it by displaying it in the what in the category i mean by displaying our categories so let's go ahead and do that so we can find this in dashboard dashboard uh, products dashboard products so let's go ahead and do that so we'll just simply come to our template and then you have your dashboard products here so you can look where the products are being listed so you can see here from the template the products we are starting from here where there's what you are products so let's go ahead and search for that in our template this is the template and this is the file so let's go ahead and search for it by just simply pressing ctrl f and you can see your products are here and here so i'm going to copy here where they're being listed so i can collapse this guy so i can let me see where i have to start from as you can see from our category we have to start where there's the word content okay here with this content tag so let's go ahead and copy where there's content tag you can see the content tag is here so i can just simply collapse this section of content okay and copy it then come and remove this section of content and put what i want though we will align everything in the next video and make sure that things are looking okay in the next video so you can see i'll just post it there uh plain html okay now let's go ahead and refresh okay did you save oh this is add category sorry 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 <laughs> i've just deleted the logic that i just done this is for adding category so you have to come to categories this file of categories admin categories okay so i'll collapse and then look for content here i can collapse this guy 
and put the content that I want. Uh -huh. So I can come and uh, rename here on top, not your products, but I can put products categories on top. Okay, so there we are. So let's go ahead and refresh. So you can see those are product categories there. Okay, so instead of having this button, we can put there the button for adding new product. Okay, a button for adding new product. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll add it later. We'll add this here. Here I'll put the button of adding new what? Adding new category. Okay, add new. So after doing that, now the next thing we're going to now select and display the categories that we have here. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the selection. Remember that selection of categories, we already have it. We already have it here on add category. We already have it here. Categories. Okay, we already have it here. You can get them from here. So I'll just simply come and paste it here. Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our 10th video of creating a complete web application for e-commerce. So in today's video, we are going to learn how we are going to create together a form for uploading a product. So by the end of this video, I hope we'll be able to upload a product into our store or into our e-commerce website. And uh, we're going to learn all the tricks that you may need and good practices that you may need to do what to achieve that. So I hope you're good to upload this product with me. If you are, then let's get started. So in the very first place, you remember in the previous video, we were able to upload uh, product categories. So today we're going to uh, go ahead and upload also uh, the product, the products themselves now. So we're going to go to our template and look for the form of what of uploading a product you can just simply find it there and uh, what and uh, you'll find it you'll find it here and uh, account and a vendor and then add product you'll be able to get this form so what we're going to do we're going to create a new file that is going to handle that logic of what of uploading product but that file is going to look much more of what of a categories what categories add product so we're just going to duplicate the categories add products so that we should be able to build on that very one and we don't repeat ourselves that much it's just almost the same okay so let's go ahead and do that so this is admin products add uh, admin categories add so we're going also to come here now to our project and look for admin categories add this one okay so we're going to add there admin admin products add okay so i can just simply copy it and paste it you just copy and paste and then from there i can rename it eh? just go ahead and rename it as admin products add like that so after doing that the next thing we'll have to add it to the, our interface we we'll have to add it to our interface eh? so i can just put your uh, products add something like this one as the title so let's go ahead and add it to our interface to add it to the interface i'll just simply come to the sidebar you remember this interface is in the sidebar file so let's go ahead and do that by just simply coming to our sidebar which is under files and then account sidebar here so here in the administrator in the administrator section here i'm going to add one for another one for administrators to add a product so i can just simply come and duplicate this one pressing ctrl shift and arrow down i on windows i think it's alt shift and arrow down i don't know duplicating so i'm going to put here products add okay or create product i don't know we'll organize it later create create product and then we come and change here the link from what it was to uh, what you need. So I'll select here the href and delete it and replace it with this, uh, the name of this new file that we just created, admin products add. So after doing that, let's go ahead and see now. So I've just created this file, admin products add, 
and we've added also it here i've also added it here so let's go ahead and see what we've come up with so i'll just simply come and refresh here and then you'll see create products pre create product it is here so if you click on that create create product i'm seeing products add it is we are being taken to that section so there we are going now to do the logic of now uh adding a product so we're going to first determine what do you need to add a product we'll need the product name the f uh, the product description and then the product photos then the selling price and the buying price okay and then a product files for sale i don't know <laughs> this one but okay let's go ahead and uh, start doing that okay let's go ahead and start doing that so the first thing that we need we'll need the product name so let's go ahead and even delete all these others we can as well delete these other categories and the rest no but we'll need the categories eh? we'll need the categories so let's not just delete everything but you see the categories here on top eh? so you can see how we can put these categories on top here and we don't have it here so that we can go with the design okay let's begin with categories we need to put categories here on top so i'll come here to our project so i uh, will remove you see now here we are selecting only parent categories eh? but right now we need only chil children child categories because we don't want um we don't want uh the cate the products to be signed to parent categories the product should be signed to what to children so i'll put here rows equals db select and then we pass we get categories and then we put here where the parent id is not zero so it means that it should be the children categories aha uh -huh. so i hope that, that will work if i refresh here we, be, we should be able to see that i think it's not working not zero everything is zero in mean yeah everything is parent category okay we'll add the child category later let's try to add okay we'll add it we'll add it okay so after doing that category so here every category will have so we we'll have to remove this because every product will should belong to a certain category uh -huh. so the next thing uh -huh. now we're going to display these categories eh? this category section i'll collapse this guy for now i'm going to display this category section but as you can see this is the place where we're displaying the categories these are categories so i'm going to get this just form i'm going to get this guy and put it here where these categories are so i'll just go ahead and uh, copy that and come and paste it here so in other words here in our form ui you should also go and add form select in this user interface eh? we have to add this one class form select in its classes here here form control here we call it form select i don't know we begin form select okay does it have form control no nope. let's try to remove here form control and see what will come up with refresh and define parameter selected so refresh so we're seeing here and define parameter called select. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's refresh first. See, and find parameter selected. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that is all about. Selected in file two nine one, file then two nine one, two nine one. It is here. Selected it is nothing. So by default, just make here selected to be nothing, eh? Because it's supposed to be here on top. Sometimes nothing is selected. Okay, for empty. So I've just solved this by putting this selected outside here. Another copy outside here. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh. Now this is what we got here. Uh, I think we'll leave it like the way it was. We'll have to just put our categories here to keep it simple. Okay, so um, what else? We're we'll going to select the name. I'm going to select the name. So to select the name, I mean to add the name, it's going to be just as this input and then 
adding the name like that okay see input then the name so what else uh -huh. we're going to add now we have now the product name the next thing we're going to add we're going to add the products price buying and selling price so we're going to add here another input that's going to be two in one in one row so i'm just going to simply create here my div i can just simply use this one eh? i can use this guy so i'm going to create two divs and one will be here one will be here okay so okay this is just a column eh? i mean this is just a row with a column of medium six when it is on a large screen so here i'm just going to i can as well create here the first one that will always be 12 that is the name and then in this name i'm going to surround it here like this uh -huh. so here we're also going to have two so we're going to have this one here so if i refresh you'll see something like this i think that's what i exp that's what you expected so this empty is too big i can put it here on this one you can also remove it to see what you've come up with refresh okay here so i can put here like on the very column i can put here m2 empty to be two okay so that empty to be two okay should have enough space so here it's not going to be the name it's going to be the buying price so it's going to be price and the name here is going to be buying price and then you're going to duplicate this one here like this and it's going to be selling price uh selling price can okay let, maybe this one should be buying price buying price this one should be price as it is and then the text you can put here selling price so if you come and refresh you see everything is okay so it should be price oh, sorry this one should be the name 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 sorry name that is very important name and this one is the label name buying price and this one is the label it's going to be it's going to be label like this label 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 i hope that's it label like that let's, let's refresh you see yeah it's supposed to be like this buying price so uh now here's going to be selling price So the, the 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 tag will be price, and then the label will be selling price. So also one more thing here in the functions, when you are displaying this guy, this text input, let's go to that method. Uh, the placeholder should be the label, not should not the name of the input, should be the label, the placeholder. Where is placeholder? Should be the label here not the name okay so that people should not see how we are naming our variables okay hope you are together now so if i come and refresh we are able to see the buying price the selling price okay click there it takes you there click there takes you there so selling price should supposed to be name is price not damn mistake okay so here you have selling price buying price okay so after doing that now the next thing we are going to have uh buying price of added and selling price uh, we're going to have now the the photos eh? the photos so we're going to have photos uh if i refresh here we already have something like this for photos category image so here we're going to just have multiple uh sections so i can add these photos so i'm going to go ahead and copy this thing that we have done for fo for photos this one here only the input okay 
and then I can delete this. Okay, let's go ahead and just maintain it. So what we're going to do here, we are going just to duplicate this one. Eh? So I can delete this guy here. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to give a chance a user to upload six photos. So to give the chance for user to upload six photos, we can loop or we can just put here or we can duplicate them one by one. So I can put here product photos, eh? photo one, or the product photo one, like this. And then we'll come and give this name here. It should be different. You can make it one like that. Okay, so you can as well create a loop and do that, do it uh, automatically. So if I come and refresh, we'll have here the first product photo. So let me duplicate it here. So I can say product photo two, and then come and change this one to two. Let me also put this one per column. I mean per column here. Mt three, and here also Mt uh, three. So if you come and refresh, you have here the second product photo. Okay, so let's give a chance for someone to upload like six photos. So I'll come and duplicate this row, this row, and then I'll come make sure that the naming is different. So this one's going to be three, and make sure that this also is three. This one is four, this one is four. So you don't worry about uploading them because we already have a method that can upload for us as many photos as we can and uh, on what on fly so then here can make them maybe this one to become four i mean five so this one should be five and this one should become six and this one should become six so that's great now those we have now our session where a user can upload up to six photos of a what photos of a product so you can upload one two three four five six i think six are enough okay so we can really find a way how to make them dynamically adding the photos so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do now we are going to we are going to do what to to add a description the description is already there and i think that's all we have the name we have the photos we have the description we have this buying price selling price and then you have the maybe you can also tags the tags we can leave them the option yeah that's it i think that's all what you need to upload a what a product it will have a name buying price selling price photos and then the description so let's go ahead and submit this so we have to change the submit submit action to what to admin products okay so let's go ahead and change this submit action where is it submit action here okay i'm going to change it here okay i've changed it so make sure that you also change it here to be submitting this very file so after doing that now let's go ahead and receive this data this side okay let's go ahead and receive this data this side and see what we've come up with before even saving the what in the database uh -huh. so we'll come here to the server when the post is being submitted and then uh, we save this data into the form and then let us try to dump everything here before we start inserting it into the uh, database so print underscore r and then die here and then come and put here echo and then put pre tag here so let's go ahead and see what you've come up with come and refresh ah so that's great now let's go ahead and do the logic so the product photo can say uh, product i mean the product name can say product one i have the buying price maybe five thousand selling price seven hundred Okay, let's go ahead and add the picture of this product just for testing can add that picture and can also add here another picture just for testing right for testing this picture is too small go ahead and get heavy ones here uh -huh. just for testing add another one 
and add another one. So you can add up to six photos to your of your product. Okay, this one's too huge. Let me go ahead and get light one. Okay, so that's enough. I then can put here some details about the product like this. Then let's go ahead and submit. Now you can see we have product name, buying price, and then the selling price, and then the description. Uh -huh. Then you can put here the method, and we start collecting this information. Let us put it on down before we start even inserting. So you have the photos will come here. The name, product name, remain the name. Buying price, buying price. It's going to be buying price. Okay, the description remain also. We're going to have buying price, buying price. Mm -hmm. The photos will remain. Can maybe change this one to photos because there are going to be many. And then maybe category, category. We have not said, we have not put the category. By the way, so we forgot to put the category, but something also important that we're going to add. Okay, so, uh, so price, also uh, price, price, and price. Okay, so we have the name, we have buying price, we have the price, we have description, then we'll get here photos. Oh, yeah, I get the reason why we're having problem with the product ID. I mean the parent ID, the other side. It's because we are setting everything to zero in the parent ID. So you have to come back and fix this in the categories. Eh? Categories add and change here. The parent ID. See, that's the mistake that we are doing. Parent ID to come from this side. And make sure it is an integer by type casting it as int and then surrounding this guy with its with a what with a bracket like this so that it should be converted to integer because the parent what so parent id is an integer like that oh that's okay now okay so now we have uh what else do we have we have uh photos ah i think now let's here we have enough now data about the product let's go ahead and dump what we've come up with only the categories remaining refresh so it will take some time because those images have to be compressed do you still remember those images have to be compressed so we'll have to delay a little bit compressing can take time you know so these images have been compressed successfully and everything is now okay Okay, so that's great. Now let's go ahead and save now this product into our heart into our database. So first of all, we're going to create the table of products. Remember, we'll be creating tables by requirement. So let's go ahead and create the table of products by just simply coming to PHP my admin and then come to our database, which is eShop, and then click on new to add a table of what? A table of products. So we're going to add here products. And then it's going to have around ah, six columns. So we'll begin by adding ID. ID is going to be auto incrementing and it's going to be a primary key. Uh -huh. So the next thing that we're going to add is going to be the name of the product. The name. So you come and put your name and make it a text. So that it should be as big as possible and default should be null. It should be nullable. Okay, so. The next thing is the buying price. The buying price, we can leave it as a, should we make it a text <laughs> or an integer? Okay, let's make it an integer so that you can get the whole experience of working with integers and 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 what and uh, texts. So that's an integer, you can change it as well to float. And let's say it can also be null. Then we're going to have now the price or what you call the selling price. Let's also keep it an integer and make it nullable. And then we're going to to add the description. Uh, the description is going to be text because it will be huge. And photos, it will be also be a text. So here I'll make it also nullable and make it photos. 
be also text because they're going to be many and can also make it nullable. Okay, so that's what we need. Maybe the last thing that we need to also put is the category. Category underscore ID. And just a category ID. It's going to be also an integer. We can also make it as uh, by default it should be zero. Okay, by default it should be zero. Or it should be one. Okay, so that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, that's all we need about the product. Have we forgot anything? Have we left anything that can be added? The photos are there and everything is there. And the rest you can add by yourself in case you want to add more. Maybe you may also need to get the person who had played this product user ID. Be an integer, yeah. By default, maybe you can make it to be one. So that's enough. You may add your own if you want to. So let's go ahead and save this by just simply clicking on save. So perfect, the table has been created for products. So let's go ahead and now insert the data. So let's go ahead and copy this and see if uh, we already have them. Uh -huh. So I can put this guy here. Okay, so we have the ID, it will be auto incrementing. We have the name, we have the buying price, we have the selling price. We need descriptions already there. Photos are already there. Remember, I already worked on this logic of uploading photos, and it's already there. Then we need the uh, category ID. It's ready. No, that one's going to work on it. You're going to work on it. So let's put it here on pending. Uh -huh. Then lastly, we need the user ID, the person who just uploaded this product. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that user ID. So the user ID, we can get it from the session, which can be under session and then uh, on the section of user. I still remember how we save the session of user, user, and then the section of that of ID. So from there, we can know where the user is. Let's confirm by putting this guy on top, here on top, and then maybe uh, die with session ID. Okay, can put there the double quotes so that should not be a string. A string will be ignored. Let's refresh and see. Ah, syntax. Let's first delete these things. Eh? <laughs> okay, now let's refresh and see if the user ID is there. You can see the user ID is there. So now we can leave this guy as it is here. So everything is there apart from the Category ID. Category ID you're going to fix. Let's go ahead and save in the database and see if everything will be okay. So I'll delete this and just going to put here products. Products. Okay. Products. Uh -huh. Then you can put here, you can say created, I mean product created successfully. Product created successfully. And then you can also put here fail to create product okay so we are going to put here another file for products products admin products so we need another file for admin products so the administrator will be single admin press admin all, all the products so let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this file of what of categories eh? copy paste so we're going to rename it as admin products this file of categories press enter and rename it as admin products like this press enter though so after doing that now i hope you are now good so admin products add is here and when it is successful it will be redirecting to admin products otherwise it will direct us back to admin products add okay so i hope that is now okay I hope that is okay so let's go ahead and re-upload and we see. So the remaining that we have to do is to add the products categories. So let's go ahead and refresh and see if things are okay. So I'll just simply come here and refresh. Can take some time because you know the images are being compressed. So Product uploaded successfully. So our product was uploaded 
successfully. So let's go ahead and add now uh, create product. Let's go ahead and add the category because we don't work on the category. So to add the category, we are going to put it. We are going to put it after the product what after the product name, or we can put it next to the what the product name. So let's go ahead and put and the category there. So we can just come to our input here. Here, uh, where there is name. So below name, we're going to put here the select input. And this select, just simply say, select. It's, it was called what? Uh, select input. Select input. That's how we named it, I hope. Uh -huh. So the first thing it will take, uh, what will it take at first, if you still remember, the data. The data is there. And then the next thing it will take the what? The options. So options already have. So the name here is going to be category ID. So the options, I mean, the options going to be the categories here, these categories, okay, that we just looped and saved. You see, I just got the categories <coughs> and looped them and put them here. So that is going to be the options, okay? So this will be the options. Aha. Uh -huh. This one should come outside here. Okay, options. So you can also pass the label. I can pass here the label as what as category. Category like this, and then the name, the name, the name, the name should be category ID. The name should be like this one. Eh? Category ID. The name should be exactly as it is in the what? In the database, which is category ID. So let's go ahead and add this. So now you see, we can have now, we now have uh, a subcategory here being listed. So that's great. Now we have to add this name here to the input. The, the, now, since we have handled the category ID, now you can have and we can come and collect it here. Okay, category ID. So we'll just simply come and put here category ID and put here category ID like this. So that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. So let's go ahead and now add another category with this input with the child. So I can just simply put here category, I mean, product two, product two, with the, the, the categories kids and then maybe selling price buying price buying price and selling price add one photo ah and then we can go ahead and submit this some details let's go ahead and submit that it's processing ah product added successfully so if you come to the database and come to the product sections at least you can see there's a category id this one which is five and this one is default so it means that category was uploaded successfully so hope you've understood and hope uh, you've got the point so you can see our products are being uploaded successfully now in the next video we are going to accomplish this administrator section whereby we're going to clean all the products we're going to clean the user interface to look okay and we're also going to make sure that uh, we can be able to even delete the what the products that we added in the next video i hope you'll not miss then after i will go ahead and start now working on the front end where the product can where the user can add products to the cut to the to the cut to the cart and also maybe check out and we're able to receive these orders so that's what we're going to do in the next videos but good enough you can see our product has been added successfully so i hope you not miss i hope you're understanding the concepts i hope <laughs> I hope you're understanding and I hope you're following. I hope you're practicing. So that's it for today. Let's meet in the next class. Goodbye and don't miss. Also remember to subscribe. Bye. Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to the 11th video of creating a complete e-commerce application using plain PHP. 
in previous video we were able to add a product into our e-commerce shop now in this video we're going to start straight from there whereby we're going to list those products in the administrators dashboard and then we'll also go ahead and learn how we can do the deletion part and also the edit part and then also start working on the displaying these products in the front end on the side of clients if the time will allow so that's what we're going to do today so we have a lot of things to put together so let's go ahead and get started from where i stopped at in the previous video straight so as you can see uh this is our project i've already opened it and uh, this is where we stopped at so we did we, we created the categories where we can list the categories but we have not created a section where we can list the products on the side of administrator so let's go ahead and create that section where we can list the product on the side of what of administrator can so we have the section of categories so let's go ahead and do that so to do that i'll come to our project and then this file of listing the products is going to look much more like this one that lists the what uh the categories so let's go ahead and create that one for categories i mean for products by just extending or duplicating that one of um, admin categories this one so let's go ahead and do that so this is admin categories where is it admin categories it is here so we're going to change this one we're going to just duplicate it and make it admin product so i'll copy it and then paste it so it is here so what i'm going to do i'm going to edit it and name this one as admin products so this is the section where the administrator will be viewing the product i think the file is already there only what we need is to implement the logic so i'll copy this what's in this data of admin products i'll copy it all here this one that is in uh, admin categories eh? so i can delete even this one because we already have it but if you don't have it you can go ahead and create your own so i'll come here to admin products here and then i'll paste there oh i can see the problem this, this is admin products add and then this is admin products so i'm going to paste there uh, the categories the one that i've just post copied from what from categories this one so admin products is looking like this looks like this of admin categories okay so now what i'm going to do now i'm going to add this one in the part in the sidebar so that it should be accessible so if you did not have this admin products file so go ahead and do it and you can just copy that of admin categories and paste it here so let's go ahead and put that in what in um, the sidebar i mean let's go ahead and put it in the sidebar of administrator so that it should be accessible so i'll go ahead to my files and then look for sidebar that the i mean uh, files and then sidebar is here so let's go ahead and add admin admin products so we have here products category and then create products create product we'll, we'll organize these things later so i'm going to duplicate this option eh? this option of product here so we're in this sidebar so let's go ahead and duplicate um this one you have products categories then you can just call this one products as it is so let's go ahead and look for this so the link here of products is going to be admin dash products.php so i'll rename it as admin dash products.php meaning that if someone clicks here he'll be proceeded to what to products file so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and now and refresh and see so if you refresh right now we can see products is there now so if i click on products i can see the same file almost the same file i mean the same ui but the, re the reality is this file has done what has changed so let me go ahead and work with that file now and modify this file so instead of having ca products category i'm going to come here to uh to products here and i'm going to change this one from products category to products like this so let's go ahead and refresh so we can see here products so meaning they are now on the right file so the next thing that we're going to do we're going now to add here 
real products okay we're going to add here real products so to do that we'll just simply come to uh, this top where we are selecting the categories and I'm going to change it to what to products so it's going to be products instead just it's just a matter of changing the naming I'm going to call this one uh, products products equals to db select and then here we are going to put products so this is a simple select method so we don't need to rewrite the sql so it's going to be products and you're going to order by ascending meaning the last product that was added it should show on the top so let's go ahead and refresh now of course we're going to get the error because we have not uh, put this uh, in the loop so i'm going to come on bottom here and look where there's a loop the loop is here and change this one to what to products so if i go ahead and refresh of course we'll see we have only two products so now let's go ahead and uh, substitute now the what the names if possible the what the photos so to do that i will just simply come and put here maybe this naming i can change it to pro so it can be slightly uh, different or meaningful so the first thing that we're going to do we are going to change here the name okay this name then we'll go ahead and change the pricing see so let's go ahead and do that so we'll just simply come here where there is uh, this name and we're going to grab it and then you're going to replace it with the name of the product so to do that we'll just simply put a question mark like this and put php and open question mark and put like this so here i'm going to put the equal sign here equal sign like this and then you're going to uh, name here as you're going to put here the name for, by accessing it from this keyword pro and i'm going to put it also here pro and then i point at the name because we made the product name to become the name and the product item in the table so let's go ahead and refresh so if you refresh you can see oh it's supposed to be an array not a, a um, object so we'll just go ahead and open the square bracket and pass the name like this so if you come and refresh now ah, we can see the product name has been listed there so after listing the product name now the second thing that we're going to do we are going now to put the price okay we're going to put the price here uh -huh. so to do that we'll just simply come and uh, copy this and put here the price okay price like this so we can refresh we have the prices there so the next thing that you're going to do we are going to put maybe okay for now we can leave that you can even go ahead and put sales but this one can come later okay so now the next thing we can do maybe we can put now the picture or the photos okay so let's go ahead and do that but that's not going to be a simple thing you're going to do some logic you know when we are saving this photo we save them in form of in format of json so getting the photo will not just be straight by just putting the photo name no remember we have a json that is containing each photo's original photo and what and its uh, respective thumbnail so we are going to need to first decode those JSONs and make sure if these photos are really there before we do what before we display them so let's go ahead and do that by just simply coming to here and first dump whatever comes from what from database so let's first dump and we see so just simply say echo pre tag and then say print underscore r print underscore r and then we pass the products and then list are here okay so let's ju we just want to look at uh, how structured our product is so you can see how structured our product is so let's go ahead and get this product zero and see what we'll come up with so i can say maybe uh, p equals to and then can just go ahead and dump this say maybe zero want to get a specific product and we see 
how we can uh, get those images out of it so if i refresh you'll see we'll have this so it means that if you want to get the image you'll have to come and pass here photos here photos so let's go ahead and do that by just simply passing the parameter of photos i mean your photos race so if i refresh you see we have a string of what a string of photos so once you have the string of photos as you know this photos is not just a may a single photo it is containing the thumbnail at the same time it is containing the uh photo the original photo itself so you need to decode this json so that should be meaningful eh? so what you are going to do maybe you're going to write a method that will be doing for us that task of uh, decoding those what decoding those uh, photos images not for so that we should not repeat ourselves again and again so let's go ahead and write that method we're going to call it get product photos or get photos okay so what we're going to do we are going to go to our functions our file of functions here this file of functions and then we are going to create a what we are going to create um we are going to create a what a um, function that can re decode for us this json and return for us at least meaningful what meaningful uh, image so let's go ahead and do that we are going to just say function get product image or can say get product thumbnail okay so this will be just getting for us a single thumbnail of a product so it will be taking a it will be taking a what it will be taking um uh, a json okay a json file i mean a json uh, string so after doing that we can now go ahead and see if this string let us first set of set a default um, link or a default image img equals to maybe uh, assets stroke default dot png or no image dot no underscore image dot jpg so this is an image that will be returning we will create an, an image called no image and we'll put it in assets so that's the image that will be returning in case there is something wrong so instead that there was instead of showing that there was completely no image we'll be returning this kind of image and this image you really put it there so we're going to first check if this uh, json is null okay we'll check if uh json i mean if this json that we've just sent is null will return that default image if is null we will return the default image so we'll just simply say return img okay so that's the first condition the second condition we'll go ahead and check if this session is uh, having a string less than at least three because um at least a json of a valid image two images that we're expecting the thumbnail and uh, the original image we should be having more than uh, three what more than three uh, str uh, string so we're checking if it's not empty so you say if str len of this json is less than what is less than um, maybe five i'll just say okay four uh then we can return that is still it should show this default image so after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do now we're going to uh discord okay json decode i mean let us now call here the maybe uh the output you can call them uh, the obj or the objects objects equals json decode so we're going to pass now this original json we're trying to decode it okay so it's going to return to us an array so let's go ahead and uh, dump whatever we have decoded so i'll just simply say echo and put here pre tag and then dump by simply saying print underscore r and then we pass these objects and then 
let's go ahead and now call this method and see what will come up with so i'll copy that name the name of the method and then i'll come here to admin products and i'm going to do what i'm going to get the photo by just simply saying uh get thumbed or get thumbnail and then i pass this uh photo path i mean the json okay of photos uh, to this get thumb function so let's go ahead and see what we've come up with so if i refresh here uh, uh it's supposed to be json decode not json encode okay so i'm passing this name of the photo to this create j get thumb so if i come here and i say it's going to be json decode not json encode json decode okay so it's going to decode for us the json that we had saved in the database so if i come and refresh you can see we're having our json there and also it is having this first image so the next thing at uh, this first image is inside an array okay so this one is what is an array so since you're getting only the thumbnail or, the, or only single image so what you're going to first do i'm going to check if this array is not empty so if it is empty we'll know that something was not right and then we'll also return again a default image so what i'll do i'll just simply come check here uh, and see if this objects are not empty so i just simply say if empty and then we pass that if they are empty then i should return an empty again a default what a default image or the inner image so right now if i refresh i should be able still to see it so there it means that now it is not empty so i can go ahead and get the first one which is in this position zero so you see i'm able to get now this specific one so the next thing that i can do i can go ahead and check if uh thumbnail is set okay i'll check if thumbnail is set mm, so i don't want to crash okay so i'll just simply say if is set okay this thumbnail okay i mean in position zero and then the other dimension since it's an object so you have to point it eh? you have to point so i'm going to check if this thumbnail is set so in position zero and uh, it is an object so i'll have to print it like this is set the thumbnail okay so i'm going to check the opposite of it if it is not set then i'm going to do what to return this again the default image so if i refresh it will still bypass there meaning that we are now okay so now if it is set it means that's what we're going to return the thumbnail now so let's go ahead and return the thumbnail by just simply saying uh so i don't know whether i should return it in form of array or in form of string of course i stand in form of string so we're going to just simply say return this okay so by doing like that we'll be able ha we'll be having this the path of this image so let's go ahead and remove this echo and then save okay so that's the image that's the fi simple function that will be getting for us the image from uh, the array that we did what that is saved in the database or from the json so let's go ahead and refresh everything is okay so let's go ahead and uh, go back to admin products and then i'll copy uh this what this uh loop so i'm going to get to, to uh, i mean this 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 method eh? so let's go ahead and copy that method and we'll be passing to it this uh parameter of photos so let me go ahead and delete this yeah so there we are good so here we're getting products and then so let's go ahead and display these images so to display these images i'll just simply come to what i'll just simply come to where the images are so you can see the image is where is let me collapse this so you can see clearly so the image is img oh it's in background i don't know let's say such img so here is our loop this is the loop and you can see the image is this side this side so i can put it down here maybe 
Now let's go ahead and put here the what? The thumbnail, okay? So I'd put the thumbnail, we just simply open our PHP tag, put PHP, and then close it here. So here you can put eco signs so that you should be able to display. And then you're going now to call our method that is going to do what? That's going to uh, decode the JSON of this particular product. And we get for it from it a thumbnail. So I'll press there. And then I'll go ahead and pass uh, this pro here. And then in a position of image. Hope you can see that. Okay. See, you just get product thumb and then i pass this pro and then i pass photos so at this point i should be able at least to see the products let us see beautiful so you can see we're able to see the images of our respective products though they are too huge but you can go ahead and work with the dimension just like we discussed so it is so great at least you can see that there is a progress so the image that you uploaded it has success it successfully uh, being displayed and we know this is a what it is a thumbnail so we successfully compress the product so with that much said so it means uh, it is great now to get started so you can add more products for you to test with so you just simply come here to create product here yeah? create product and then I can add multiple products for me to test so go ahead and add some more products for your testing eh? So let me add one more product. One more product. So the category is going to be kids, for example. And then I can go ahead and give it price, maybe 700. And then the selling price is 1000. And then after doing that, I'm going to go and select. I'm going to, I'm going to select the photos of this product. So I should have put the photos uh, very near for you to test with so let me see if i can get this photo and then i select another one okay and then i also select another one by the way you can also do the single select you can allow multiple photos let me select this one just for testing and then lastly this okay Let me select that one. Okay. So those are enough for testing. So I can say some details about this photo. So let's go ahead and submit uh, this photo. I mean this product. Submit. So you know since there is generation of thumbnail, it may take some time generated. So you can see it is perfect and our product is being displayed there. Can you see? It's being displayed there. So now let's go ahead and do now the logic of listing these products to the users. So listing products to the users, first of all, we're going to begin with uh, doing the interface. So we're going to create here a shop link so that when you click on this shop, you see a specific link. Now let us first open our, our what? Our, our template and see and determine which one do we really need to use. So I'll come to the template here and look at shop and then you can see different shops, uh, uh, shop layouts. So we have this one of grid left. So where it is a grid here and we have some products on the left hand side. Okay. So let us look at another one. There's another one called grid sidebar. This one where it is just uh, they are horizontal like this. Okay. Horizontal. So you can decide which one to begin with. So uh, so both styles are available, but it's up to you to decide. So this one is a for listing. I mean for squares, this one is for listing, like this. So let's go ahead and begin, I think, with this one, where you can have, I mean the square one, eh? uh, the grid one. Let's begin with the grid one, and then maybe in the next video, you can also work with what? With... Um, the list one so after determining that so the next thing that we're going to do is now to create this file in our what in our project so in our project you can remove this drop down and keep this one as straight shop when you click there it should take you to the shop 
and maybe this category is the one that will remain there so yeah, this one should be like the main shop straight main shop without anything so let's go ahead and do that okay and you click here it should take you to the shop straight so we'll just simply uh go to our project and then you're going to find that of course in the header so we'll just simply go to where the header is under files under header i mean the header file will be there so let's go ahead and do what and remove let me remove this good tag it's not necessary okay let's go ahead and remove uh what we're going to remove this shop drop down there eh? so you just simply come and search maybe shop let me find so many shops uh control f shop and then i can point at it like this uh -huh. so here this is the shop that you're looking for i think you can test it by just uh, ch changing something near it and see if it will reflect so it's the shop that you're looking for so as we discussed we don't need this drop down we want it to just take us straight to the shop when someone clicks on it so does it mean it means that you're going to delete this drop down you can even see it and you collapse it here and then you delete it and then after we have to remove this uh drop down class of relevant and leave only navling and then also remove this toggle drop down okay so it should be a plain link so you refresh here now we have our shop when you click there the shop it takes you to nowhere so let's go ahead and create now that shop uh, file so uh here it's called shop grid so let us go ahead and just for us to bring just called shop.php the default one shop.php so to do that we'll just simply come here and then we're going to create a fresh file so we're going to call it shop.php so this file is not created but we've put it there in the what in the link it is a place where we'll be listing the products so shop.php now we're going to go to the files and create it uh -huh. so i'll just simply come to our project and then we come to uh here and then we're going to paste here a new file we're going to create new a new file in this product i mean in this uh project here so I just simply come and click on top here and then i click on this plus to create a new file so i'm going to call it shop.php as you can see so let's go ahead and include the head and footer to this because right now if you refresh and click on shop.php it's going to show us nothing okay because of not put there anything so let's go ahead and include the head and footer so going to be question mark php and then you close here question mark and put so it's going to be require once and then we're going to pass here uh files stroke what stroke header okay so i'll copy it put semicolon i'll copy it and paste it here and then put here stroke what stroke footer like this so our content will come here our content will come here so i save i come and refresh and i can see the content is there the content is there so now after doing that now it means that we are going now to put the logic here of listing the products so let's go ahead and do the what the ui but i can see time has gone let's begin from there in the next video where we are we will now go ahead and create this user interface that is going to list for us the products at this point so don't miss in the next video we're going to proceed with what with uh, e-commerce development for a i mean a web e-commerce web development and uh, remember subscribe the youtube channel and don't forget to activate that ring button so that when you upload the next video you're there on what you're notified so the next video will start from here straight so don't miss and see you
Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our telehealth video of creating a complete e-commerce web application. I hope you've been following the entire playlist from the from where we started up to this point. If you're not following the playlist, I really recommend you to click on the top right corner on the card that has just shown and uh, begin from the first video so that you can be on the same level with us. But you've been following then that is great uh, then it means you know where we stopped at in the 11th video and uh, you know in the 11th video it's we stopped at this point whereby we are going to we say that we're going to display the content in the what in the side of our customers so we're going to display the product that we've been adding into our shop yeah the side of what of the customers so i hope you're good to go and if you really this is your first 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 video i recommend you please to go and watch the first videos on this playlist so that you can be on the same page with us so with that much said let's get straight into business and do what has brought us here today so i'll show you uh, this is the project i've already opened it in visual studio code i hope uh, you've been following as well as practicing and uh, this is where we stopped at exactly the previous video we said that we're going to display here our products. So with that much said, let's go ahead and start displaying the products here on the side of what? On the side of customer. So what we're going to do, we're going to first get these products from what? From our database. And then after, we'll loop through them and do what? And display them here. So to do that, let us first see if we have any function that can get for us. Uh, these products from what from the database remember we already have we had already pre displayed these products on the side of administrator so you can even go and benchmark from there so if i click on the admin file products i should be able to see uh, this function that gets for me the product this one okay so we are going to use the same function i believe you've been following and you saw how we created this uh, very function we are going to use this uh, very function to Get the products from what from database and display them on the side of what of uh, the customer side so let's go ahead and copy that function but you can access that function from here in the file of functions whereby where is it where's the file of functions it is inside files and then functions so you can look for that select function somewhere here okay it is this one so it will select here and get for us the condition and also uh, fetch all the records and give us back the what the records so we'll give it the table name and also in case we have a condition we attach it here so what we're going to do we are going to use this method to get for us all the products that are in the products table and we display them on the shop say, side so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here to the shop uh, dot php and then I'll put here our function, which is products equals db select. And then we're selecting from products. And then this is the condition. Uh, so why did you write one? We write one because we want uh, uh, to put true. So it will be whereby one. So one means that where everything. So we're getting all the products. And then we attach here order by id descending. So this one is just attaching the what? The order to descending. Otherwise, if you don't want to attach any condition, you can as well do what? Delete it. So this is selecting all products and we want to display them. Then the logic of doing pagination, we can do it later. So let's go ahead and uh, first dump these products. So to dump them, we we'll just simply put echo and then pre tag and then uh, write print underscore R and then we paste there the pre the products and then die to display so for what we've got from what from the database so let me go ahead and refresh so if i refresh you'll see uh, this is what you've got okay this is what you've got so it is an array of many products so if i want to be specific i can copy just one and then i'll be able to benchmark from this one to see what i display so i'm going to loop through this product as i'm displaying them so let me go ahead and create here just a temporary new file by pressing ctrl n and put these columns here just i've just copied this one eh? and then i've pasted it here in some temporary file new file here 
uh, I can collapse this guy so that you can see things clearly and let me close all the columns to the left I mean all the open files to th from the left yeah. Where is left? There's only right. <laughs> okay, let us close one by one so that we should have a few files not confuse us. So there we go. We have closed all of them. Uh -huh. So um, here, now we're going to look through these products. Uh, this one. We're going to look through and we display one by one. So I'll go ahead and delete this, uh, what we don't need. And then from here, I'm going to display. So before we display, let us first see how, um, before we display the products, let us first see how we want our shop to be from the template. And then we say where exactly we should display because this is just a plain header and footer. So let us first look at our template and see where, how and where we want to display these products. So I hope you already have the template in your computer and this is our template so we'll go just to the shop and then click maybe this shop left grid so this is the template that we're going to use so you see this is shop grid and then you have the categories okay and then here we have what you have the filters and then you have the brands but our main point we want to display the products here in this section you get it eh? So what you're going to do, you're going to look for this file, which is named as shop grid uh, ls, okay, left side, and then do HTML from our template. Then we'll copy, uh, we'll copy things uh, without footer and header, and then we put them in what into our section. And then after, we'll go ahead and replace these products into the real product that we've got from our database. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So I'll just simply come to our template. I already have the template opened here in my second Visual Studio Code instance. So I have two Visual Studio Codes, the one with my project and the one with what? With the template. So you can go ahead and do that. So we're going to look for this file that we've just opened here, which is uh, shopgridls.html. So I'll come and look for it here and We'll be able to access it shop grid ls.html which is this one so let us first come and see so uh so for what we have for us we have just a plain thing and we want to copy beginning from this word shop left grid so we what you want to do what you do you select this word shop grid left and you go and search it and that's the section where i will copy starting from so let me copy that and come to this and then control F and then look for that, which is this one here. There too. So this one here, this is where I want to do what to start copying from. So I can go ahead and collapse this guy. This means it is the main title header. This one, eh? you have to relate things. This is the main title. And then after this is now the real what the real content. Okay, the real content. So I'll go ahead and collapse it. So I have the title and the content. So it is well organized in that way. And the foot, of course, is there in the below. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy these two. Okay, I'll copy the two, the title and the content. So I hope you can see that and I hope it is straightforward. So if you don't have this template, please go to our first video. You'll find where we explain how you can get everything here. So let me go ahead and paste these things here. Okay, and then press Ctrl Shift. Ctrl Shift F to auto arrange your code. So I've just pasted uh, these things between my header and footer. They may look too many because it is just static HTML, but of course you can organize. Okay, so I can collapse. I can collapse this guy. So this is our header. This is our what? Our main content. So let's save and go and refresh. Save and refresh. Everything is beautiful. Okay, everything is beautiful. So now our task is going to be to remove these products, okay? To remove these products that you see here and then put our own products that we do what? That we really want or that we're the one that we're getting from database. So to do that, let us go and see where <laughs> we begin from. I think we begin from this where there is sneakers eh? and key it is, okay? Sneakers and kids, that's the category name, I think, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Um... I uh, will so we'll go ahead and um and do what and 
we are here uh, we can leave these others we can modify them later okay but our main point is just to change these products okay so let's go ahead and look for it so this is our header title the main thing and then this one we have the row and then we have the sidebar and then this is this whole sidebar the one that we are seeing here you see so we can collapse it eh? if you don't want to see it you can collapse it and then you can see here we have the toolbar this one with the popular what and what this one okay so i can also collapse it the toolbar and then we have now the products grid you see the products grid so everything is step by step okay and straightforward so what i'm going to do i'm going to come here so the product grid this is the interesting part others will modify them but let's first go straight to these products and then others can come for them as we're doing the finishing eh? so i'm going to come here to product you see this is a single product you can see comment it shows that this is a what this is a single product so our loop you're going to put it here when you're looping the single product so i can collapse this guy see can collapse this guy i can collapse this guy so there are many products that are displayed there but for us we just want to remain maybe with one interface and then we are going to loop it you see they are well organized in a way that you can even collapse them so i can select up to this okay you see how i've selected so that i remain with only one product okay so i can delete these others so if i save i come and refresh i should be having only a single product okay then these others are on bottom eh? so we can remove we can temporarily remove these other that are in bottom so that you can remain only with a single product um but later when you start doing the the algorithm of how your product should be organized where which section you want to display exactly you can go ahead and do that uh so for now let's go ahead and remove okay let's leave the banner let us remove this uh, row that is showing the bottom products so select the entire row here you see i'll select it i will collapse it the entire row and then delete the row like this so once i do that i refresh i'll be able to see i remain with only pagination pagination we can leave it uh we can use it in the coming time okay in the future but our main point here is to display these what these products so let's go ahead and now start looping and display these products as you can see them these ones so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here to our product and then we start looping as we're displaying this one eh? this so i hope you're not confused yet <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and loop eh? so you know we already have you can as well collapse this guy collapsing doesn't mean that you deleted you just make it uh, the code to be collapsed that should be shorter and stop wasting much of your space so i'm going to copy these products uh variable and then come and and put it in a loop and surround it with this product user interface this one eh? so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to simply to say for reach like this i mean sorry you have to open first php <laughs> php open and close like this and then after we go ahead and write a, a for each statement okay so it's going to be for each this one and then you put the what the variable then i'm going to close this curl bracket i'm going to cut this curl bracket eh? and then i close this php tag so that i should surround this guy with this so let me go ahead and do that so i'll come here where the, this curl bracket stops and then put question mark and close it like this so i'll cut this remaining tag and then come and open it here the last like this question mark php and then close it so it means that this piece of html code has been surrounded with what with this loop of php so it means that every time we loop we'll be repeating this piece of what of html code so let's go ahead and uh, see what we've come up with so far so if i refresh you see we're having three what three products displayed or simply three products that uh, we have done what that are displayed so we're going to go ahead and um, do what and start <coughs> and start doing what and start displaying and start putting the values eh? 
and start putting the values like the category name and also the the what the the <laughs> category name and also the product name and also putting it putting the link as well as finishing everything even the picture itself so to do that let's go ahead and do it and uh, after we'll see how we can optimize it so let us begin with the picture okay this wish list we can look we can we can it can wait uh, but let us begin with the pictures and then after the picture the rest okay so let's do that uh, so to make this variable relevant i can call it pro meaning product for example okay so let's go ahead and begin with the picture so you know i'll have i have already copied here uh, how our product is structured eh? so we have something called photos you still remember and these photos it is what it is an array of json which contains it's a json array which contains the thumbnail photo and also the main photos of the product so let's go ahead and uh, see how our photos are organized and see how we can extract a photo from what from our product so we can as well create a special function that can get for us a product what a product photo something like that but when you come to object oriented programming that's when we'll start uh, seeing how we can make much more sense out of this so let's go ahead and create a function that for it its task will be just to get us a product photo so to do that that function so what shall we be giving that function maybe we'll be giving it the whole product and then to do the whole logic to get for us the product what the product photos eh? so let's go ahead and do that function so that we write it once and then we use it multiple times so i'll come here to our product and then i'm going to write a function okay so here before we display anything or we can even come here on top eh, and first finish that all confusion of getting product photos and then we come here while i've already finished everything so let's come here on top 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 here here okay here so we know at least we might have at we should have at least one product eh? so this is an array you know so let me begin from here so the task right now is to get a product photo with simplicity with no errors that is the task that you're doing right now because it becomes interesting when you start dealing with the uh, file paths uh you'll start finding a lot of errors a lot of unexpected what because they are files you know so you have to do one function that will solve all those problems in one place and will not repeat ourselves to solve that problem so let me first dump you see i'm just dumping the products here on top i'm just dumping them eh? so if i come here and refresh i have the dump of my products so i'm just going to collect the first product uh, that we're going to use just as our sample space okay so i'll come here and say uh zero okay zero or i can just simply say create here just a variable i call it pro okay uh pro equals to and then i get uh, these products and then i put what i put zero here so if i come and dump this pro i should be able to get what i should be able to get uh one product Okay, with this structure you can see it here so uh with that said now what next uh what next now we are going to see how we can get just a this a list of products photos okay so uh as we said we're going to create a special function that will be doing that so that function will be giving it a product and then it gives back uh, uh, a list of product photos that are there in form of what in form of array so let's go ahead and create that function so i'll come to a file of functions i'm just showing you good practices so that you should not suffer so this is our file of functions eh? there are going to be pretty lot of functions here but don't worry so let us go ahead and uh, create what so i'll come in bottom here and create another function eh? uh, that we're going to call get product thumb haven't you ever created this function what does this function do yes on the code oh i think i've already created this function that gives for us a product thumbnail mm, yeah we already have it uh 
yeah so it's just repetition you know so it means we already have a function that can do that work for us that's beautiful well, i was going to repeat myself so let's go ahead and copy this function you see we'll be giving it just the json of a product uh we'll be just giving it a json and then it will do the whole logic of converting that json into what into product photos so that's beautiful i was going to just repeat myself for nothing so let's go ahead and do that uh, so i'll just simply call this function you see i already have it it's beautiful so i'll give it what i'll give it only the json so we know json is under product photos eh? this one here uh photos so that function will do the whole logic behind to get a what to get for us a product photo so if i do like this pick equals two so it will be able to get for us the product photo so let me go ahead and put this pick here you see pick like this okay so it should be able to give us the product photo okay so let's go ahead and refresh you see beautiful already have the product photo that is so beautiful we're going to repeat ourselves for nothing okay so it will be giving us the one thumbnail so that is beautiful so let's go ahead and display now this peak so we'll just simply copy this and then we can delete all these unnecessary things let me comment them you never know may come back so i can comment all these things and then come here here okay in the loop so where there is a uh, image you're going to call that function that gets for us a thumbnail you see the function i'd already designed it some time back okay here okay so we proceed um so i'll come here where there is uh image img where is it uh img so i'll look for it i think it should be on top so we have here uh, the class of columns and then we have the product card and then we have the button for wish list and then we have uh the link and then we have uh i'm looking for the image let's refresh and see again what we've got uh, the image is after the word sneakers after the word sneakers i'm not saying img is it a background image i don't know uh let's see okay it is here it is here this one here okay here 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 okay so um here we go so our image you're going to put it here okay so i'll just simply come here and put my php tag question mark php question mark and close it so <coughs> i showed you that a shortcut of displaying something you can just simply put here echo sign like this and then we'll call the func our function which is get product thumb and then we pass our product and then photos we give you the json so by doing like that it will be able to get for us the thumbnail so let's go ahead and refresh beautiful you see we already have the thumbnails in good shape and everything is organized that is beautiful so let's go ahead and put uh, and put what the product title uh -huh, the product name uh, then we come to the product category right and uh, so let's go ahead and do that uh, so it will be uh, the product name title we can come and cheat from here you see so the product title what is it what is it what is it it is this one uh, product name it is this one eh? this one so let me go ahead and remove this guy woman okay i'll just replace it with question mark php i mean sorry question mark equal sign and then question mark and like this okay so i'll go ahead and put a uh, pro pro and then we pass name like this okay so i'll be able to get this product name so the product names have have been updated that is beautiful then the next thing we have to put the product title i mean the product category um product category 
let us see you already have the product category id here but you know our it is just an what it's just an id so we are going to create also a function that can get for us a product category though that is not a good practice the good practice is to select the product with what with uh, its category and then you do what you you get everything together i think we should create a special pro a, a special function for getting uh, for us uh, products okay we will need to create that special function because products uh, they're going to become a little bit complex than than just writing a simple what a simple sql so um for now what should we do because i'm seeing time is running um let's first leave uh, this category but we will come back to it okay and then okay we're going to go do, we'll come back to it okay let us first display the price and then we we'll come back to display product categories and the rest and uh, because i wanted us to finish this in this in this video at least so let's go ahead and display the price so i already have uh, this price and so i'll come here and put uh, php php like this and then display a uh, dollar sign pro and then the price uh -huh. so after the price that is the selling price i think that's what you're displaying only yeah and uh, what else uh the link now to the what to the single product detail page then adding to cut will come back for it uh -huh. so uh, let us go ahead and uh, once i show you one important thing that you will need to know but before you come to let us first display the what the single product page okay link so to display the single product page link it means that we'll have to create another fre fresh product page that will be doing for us that will be displaying for us the single products so let's go ahead and do that i will come here to my project what i'm trying to do i want to see like when someone clicks he should now go to the single product page okay and see the whole details about the project that's what i want to do so i'm going to create uh, a, a special page for what for a product so let me go ahead and um, create that file so what i will do i will come and create a new totally quote totally new file here by just simply coming and click on this let me collapse everything and then i come and click on this plus here you see here and then i'm going to call it sorry here okay and then i'm going to call it product.php product.php so its task will be to display a single product so we're going to put here the header and footer so i'm going to select here the header and then footer and then footer we need that okay here and then between here i say uh this playing single product so this is we're going to be displaying the single product so i'll come and refresh now i'm going to put here a link in a way that if someone clicks on this product it should be taken to the single product page so let's go ahead and do that uh, so we'll come and collapse this guy and then come to our product which is here and look where the uh, anchor tags there is first of all that anchor tag that is surrounding the product photo this one eh? so let's go ahead and uh, and debunk it <laughs> so i'm going to change this one whether it's shop do stroke single then do html i'm going to change it to uh product dot php okay product dot php so refresh now if you click on this product dot php i mean if you click on the image of a product we should be able to be taken to where we're going to display this product so one more thing that we have to add is now we have to specify which 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 product you want to display exactly so you have to communicate the other side so to communicate the other side we have to pass what you call the gate 
okay you have to pass the id through the gate uh super global so to do that i'll come here where there is product.php and then i put a question mark and i put id equals to so you're going to specify the product you want to display so here i'm going to open the tag and put the what and put uh and put the id of the product that you want to display so how shall we do that we just say question mark equal sign and then here we are going to put a uh, pro and then we specify the, with the id like this so it means that we are going to display now uh, the product in this section and we are specifying the what the id so if i come and refresh here you see here in the bottom you just check here where i'm pointing right now so everything will have its own id so if i click on this you'll see I have the product and the ID of this product has been passed, which is ID 2. And if I click on this one and the ID of this product has been passed, which is 3. So like that, we'll be able to know which product that we want to display exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and add that link also to this this one. Then this one will put do it for the what? For the category. I'm going to just add it here. Okay. To add it here. So let's go ahead and add it there in the product name. Uh, product name so I can simply copy this guy okay and look for another anchor tag around here which is this guy but this one will be for the what for the category so we can leave this one for now by just simply putting java script we will do that when we work on the logic of category uh -huh. so here around the product name itself eh, we should put now when someone clicks there it should be taken the product name so i'm just putting product id product.php question mark id equals to this guy so that is beautiful product. Uh, then lastly do you have any other anchor tag that is still there i don't know maybe you have that one for adding to cart or which we'll come back for it later so if i refresh everything is beautiful and if i click on product it comes here i click on the product it comes okay so this add to cart we'll look at it uh, then lastly, uh, I don't know if time was already gone. Uh, lastly, I want to show you how now we should stop repeating ourselves because it is not good to repeat ourselves. You'll see that this UI, we'll need to use it even in another section. So it will be good if we find a way whereby we put all the UIs into one section and we don't repeat what? We don't repeat ourselves. But let us do that in the next video because this time has really gone. So please don't miss the next video. And I advise you not to give up. Please keep pushing. Even though you find challenges, work so hard and try, try, try. Don't give up until you finish the whole what? The whole project. Then in case you're really, really stuck and you cannot move on, Ah, my WhatsApp number will always be in the description of this of the videos. You can contact me and maybe I can help. So let's meet in the next video, guys. Goodbye. Hello and how are you? My name is Mohino Mark and I welcome you to our 13th video of creating a complete e-commerce web application using PHP, Bootstrap and my sql i hope you've been following from the first video until now so today we're just resuming from where we stopped at in the previous videos if this is your first video i'll not stop saying it please make sure you go and uh, watch all the videos before so you can be on the same page with us so with that said let's go straight from where we stopped at in the previous video and uh, proceed okay so in the previous video, we were able to display the products from our database and uh, list them accordingly with their respective pictures. Then in this video, we're going purposely to concentrate on creating a single product page in a way that if you click on a single product, what should you see or the details of the product? And then from there, maybe in the next video, we'll proceed on how a customer can sign up and maybe add their products to cart so let's go ahead and do that okay now um before we proceed to creating a single product page i'm going to show you something that is really important 
that you need in your programming experience not repeating yourself okay or avoiding you to repeat yourself for example as you can see we have created this user interface that is going that we have created this ui that is displaying what the product photos eh? but uh, you will realize that when you proceed for example when someone is viewing a product even somewhere for example when you're showing the related products eh? we may need again such a uis okay or even when someone is at home okay maybe like you are in the shop or maybe you you're just at the home of the product like the landing page you see you need again the same user interfaces so will that mean that we will again need to design different html's of course it is okay but it is not very okay why because you'll be repeating yourself and if you still remember always tell you repeating yourself as a programmer is a dangerous thing okay when you start making complex project so if you have any idea that can help you not repeat yourself then you better use it so that when you, there is a need for you to change something we just go and change it only once other than doing what and then repeating yourself so for us instead of these ui since we have known that hey we may need them again so let's go ahead and find a way how we put them in a function and then we can be calling that function multiple times or anywhere and we reuse it so in future when you want to change something in the in this ui we know that we will just update only one function and the entire project will be fixed or in case there is an error with that user interface we'll just fix that error only one time and the entire project will do it will be fixed then let's go ahead and do that please okay so the main point here i'm going to put this user interface for a single product in a functions and then we'll be calling it okay so let's go ahead and do that uh so i'll come and cut this guy okay so let's go ahead and create that function okay let's go ahead and create a function so i'll come to our functions uh this function file is going to become so complex uh, but you have nothing to do uh, it's going to become super complex i think the user interfaces we should be putting them down eh, to avoid uh mixing things on top so i'm going to create here a function that will be displaying a product so i can call it product ui something like that <laughs> okay so we're going to call it function product product underscore ui one so we may need maybe multiple user interfaces as you can see in our template you see how they are displaying a product here can you see different interface and when you come here and the way they are displaying here is single product eh? it's also kind of another different interface so it means that we may need some different interfaces even you see here uh, when you're viewing here some products on top you see like here different interface so it means that we may need different interfaces eh? so i'm going to call this one product user interface u1 i can call it product item ui something like that okay so let me just call okay let me call the product item ui so it's for a single item one and then it will be receiving what a product what we're going to call a pro and its task is going to be displaying the product so as you can see here it becomes interesting in a way that uh, we cannot write here html straight within php <laughs> Yeah, you cannot write HTML straight within PHP, otherwise it can become really compli complicated. Okay, so in PHP, there is a way how you can embed still HTML within it. And then you free write your HTML and again bring it back as a what? As HTML as it is, okay? So to do that, there is uh, this thing uh, called EOL or end of file. You can search here. Uh, in php i mean in in, uh, in 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 your google in google and search php eof not eol eof okay so it will do what you can use it to put html in the heart with it within a project so i can just simply come here and say a string or anything equals to and then you write less than signs three times like this like this eof like this and then after when you finish everything you come here at the end eh, and say eof and put the sign so if you do like this eh, 
PHP will allow you to write anything here. Okay? So anything even without saying that HTML or what like that. And then it will be treated by HTML. And the beauty is you can even put there your what? Your variables inside. So after we can return this um this uh string. Okay. So this gives us ability to write a block of HTML within PHP. Let us let me show you what we've just talked about, what we've, what we mean really. So I'll copy this name of the function and then come here to our uh, shop file and then come on top so that we want first test this product. I mean this thing. Eh? So this guy, okay. I'm going to call it and maybe I'm going to give it just a simple uh, variable test and then die here. So if I come and refresh right now, you'll see. Uh, we cannot see anything, okay? So it means that it is returning for us something. So the only thing is for us to print it by maybe putting it before echo. Then we'll see that we're able to print everything or the other HTML. So that means that we can put a block of HTML within PHP, okay? So if I come and do like this, something like uh, B and say uh, love and then put here B, you see? Uh, you see, love has come. So now, what if you want to put there the variable? Now, since you see, we, are, we know you are passing a string. Eh? When you are calling this guy, we are giving Jesus a string. So I can as well put this variable within uh, this block of HTML. So let me say I can come and put here, be like this. You see, so it means that this variable is going to come straight and use it here. So if I come and refresh, you see. It's beautiful love and then the test so it means that we can put our block of html in php so the main the main pit here we we'll don't repeat ourselves and do everything once and then reuse it so what does it mean it means that now between this eof i'm going to put there my code of what of uh, displaying a single product and then when i want to display a single product i'll be just calling this guy and it will be uh, returning for me the what the ui of a single product so we'll have put everything in one file and then we can reuse it you get it eh? so let me go ahead and undo here okay so i'll come to our single product and i collapse it this guy i cut it okay i can cut from here to here you see and then i come to this function and i put here between your f like this it may look messy but <laughs> that's the only way you can save yourself from repeating eh? uh, multiple things that are not useful i don't know why it's bring a warning here but no problem don't mind about the warnings it is just a plain html so i hope i hope i hope it's i hope it is still okay or maybe here instead of uh, i don't know how we can call functions Maybe that is what is causing problem here, like calling functions and the rest. I don't know. Let us see first what we'll come up with and then we can fix. Okay. <laughs> I've never used it also. It's my first time because I always use other advanced things. So let us go ahead and call it here. So it means that we may not even need to break this. Eh? But let me go ahead and call it. Then we, are going, you sh we should be ready to fix things. Eh? You know, things are going to break <laughs> no matter what, but we should be ready to fix. Okay, so here I'm calling it and I'm giving it the product. Of course, the errors are going to rise. There you go. So let's go ahead and start fixing these errors. So we come. So the first error, I think they're saying the error is on what? Line 331. Unexpected. Okay, line 331 here. So 331 here, they say they did not expect something. Uh, I'll just see what it is. I think this PHP is not supposed to be there. So we're not supposed to put the PHP targets off. Let's try to remove this and we see. So that we just put the, pro the variable directly. Or we should surround it, I think, with, uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So you see, I think it works. We have to surround it with either. Uh, let me see. We have to surround it with uh, curl brackets instead of putting PHP. 
so you surround with curl bracket it will be treated like a variable i hope so let's go and refresh and see if that error is no longer there so it was on line 31 331 beautiful the error is no longer there okay so let's go ahead and do it for the rest so here i will go ahead i hope it can as well call the function and surround it with a curl bracket instead of php tags i hope it can call function but i don't know <laughs> it won't i think so if it won't no problem uh, we're just going to come here on top of it and then maybe say a uh, thumb or thumbnail equals to and then we'll have to call our functions outside this guy okay so i'll cut this guy and then put here okay like this and then come and paste this guy here where there was the stamp here like this so i hope you get it eh? so instead of calling a function within this guy i first call the function here on top i save it somewhere and then i print it here so i hope that error also gone now we have error on 336 so this should be used of them so 336 uh, so i'll have to remove this guy and surround it with what with the uh, curl brackets curl bracket like this okay and then come and also do the same here so by doing like that we will not be able to repeat ourselves those are the techniques that we need like this great and let's do it here also cut the price and then remove these tags surround with curl bracket like this uh what else i think they're done are they done are they done yeah there's no more crying so we know that now when you have a problem with this ui we just come straight we know where i will have to fix it from in the whole project and once you fix it the whole project will be what will be fixed so that's the whole beauty of creating functions they look boring but once you do it you know you do it once so refresh boom everything is beautiful apart from undefined variable 1000 okay defined variable 1000 oh you are supposed to put here <laughs> so i had put here the dollar sign so it was taking like a dollar like a product so everything is okay up uh, now we have to echo here <laughs> have to echo right we have to put here the echo sign so it, it should be displayed so everything is all right you see that is really nice that is so nice yeah that is so nice uh yeah i hope is it it is nice let me see what's the difference between <laughs> our shop and this guy's shop uh left grid left grid yeah let us see ours there's ours something is not right is it zooming reset uh something isn't right i think everything is okay i don't know something seems like it's not right we'll see okay so i'll come and cut this so since we are not displaying html so it means that you can as well remove this useless breaking of html and then just say echo echo like this you call the method and i mean call the function and give it a product then to do the whole logic of displaying what a single product something is not right i think i think yeah what is not right i don't know is it zooming yeah it is zooming <laughs> yeah now they look similar <laughs> click here you see everything it looks similar yeah that is great okay so i click on a single product it should be able to take me to single product okay that is great so without wasting now we know when you want to change something we'll just simply come to functions and we come to specific this function for displaying a product and we update once only one time and the whole project is updated that is really beautiful okay so let's go ahead and proceed now to displaying a single product we have 15 minutes i hope they will help us okay so let us be a little bit faster okay in displaying a single product
Uh, to display single product, of course, we'll have to come to this file of displaying a single product. Okay, so when I click on single product here on the template, I see this is what we see. So let's go ahead and do what? And do that whole logic of displaying what? A single product. So we we'll need this single product page. So these guys, they have two. You can look for the one that you want. So you have pages. Eh? And if you come, you see, I think they have more than one. Okay. Where there is, uh, uh, this is shop layout. Yep. They have more than one A single item. I have this one also. You see, this is a UI that you can go with. But to save time, let us go just with the one UI. This very one. So this very one is called shop single HTML V1. Shop single V1 HTML. So let's go ahead and look for it. So we'll come to our template. You can press Ctrl P. Ctrl P and paste there the name of a file. It will take you to the file straight. Okay, Ctrl P and then the name of the file. Or you can go straight to where the file is. Okay. Now, after doing that, the next thing is now to know what you want to copy. So, you know, we already have the head and footer. We just need to copy beginning from this word. Uh, sports hooded sweat shirt. So I'll go ahead and search for it. So I come to this single file and then I search for it. Uh -huh, we have two, the one in title and the one in this guy. So here we go. So I'll go ahead again and collapse the title, page title, and then collapse the main page details. So we'll also work on the reviews. If you want to put the reviews, we can go ahead and collapse them. So these are the related products, that bottom part of related products. And uh, this is the you may like. So we may leave the you may like and we take only related products. So let's go ahead and copy from here up to page title up to here. Okay. From page title up to uh, related products. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that and paste and then start putting the whole logic of PHP. So we'll come here and come to shop, I mean product.php while displaying a single product. And then come and remove this guy, display product, and then put here. Okay, here. So the thing may look too much, but <laughs> that's the only way to go, okay? So the thing will look too much, but it will fix everything okay and you know everything once you have the knowledge the remaining is just time all about time okay so let's go ahead and refresh our page beautiful everything has come and uh, only the zooming is not working yeah i uh, will find out we'll find out the zooming i think it's just a javascript file that we need to add so that we can be able to have that zoom part but we'll come to it okay now after having that now let's go ahead and put here our product name maybe here the product category like that okay uh, let's go ahead and do that uh, to do that of course we'll have to first select the product from what from database but you know we have been sending the id in the gate okay so let's go ahead and collect this id that you see in the gate and then uh, do what and then uh, get to the product from database and then display it. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that right now. And so, uh, <laughs> so what? Um, yeah, I think we'll need a special file to get uh, product details, a special function eh? to get the entire uh, product details. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, get the ID. So to get the ID from uh, from what from the post, we'll have to come here on top, okay, and then um, check if it's set. 
the gate of id if is set is set uh, get super global variable id id so if we set then we say id equals by default let's make id equal to zero and then after uh, we say id equals to um like this so since our all ids will be integers so let us type cast it eh, to int okay so and then after uh eh, so we have the id so let us check here in the bottom if id is less than zero i mean it's less than one because our id is of product node will always be more than one we die and say id not found so i say if id is less than one eh, is less than one let's die here and say product not found like this okay so i mean let, let me say i did not found but you can display better his interface than just dying so if i refresh now if i put maybe let's say someone just came without giving us the id then we will say i did not found so let's go ahead and now get the product i think let us it's time now we create a function for getting the heart the product details and everything and then uh, moving around <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and do that um so i think for it to be here on bottom so now we have the id so we'll include the what the header that comes with function file uh, the next thing you're going to do right now to get the function the product function i mean the products the product let's go ahead and create that product function that get the whole product details okay so i don't know whether i've never created it even <laughs> i think i've never yeah let's get let's make it now eh? so go ahead and say function function and call it get product okay so for it will be just asking for the id only so we write the sql manually equals to select all from uh, products and then we should also get its uh, category details eh? products comma categories because we want to give you also the category details okay uh, where where product product dot id equals the id that you have sent id and then put and to link it with the product and what is it called products dot id this is the name of the table and then products and then say and it will write and as a word eh? it is an sql and so we link this product category this respective id and products dot category id let me make sure that i'm copying the right word category id category id equals to categories categories dot id so that is a sql that is going to get for us uh the product the product with its respective what with its respective category details okay because you know every product must belong to what to a category so let's go ahead and run this sql okay so to run this sql is going to be um it's going to be what <laughs> it's going to be uh-huh we need first the global we can as well cheat from here from this select thing eh? so after the whole thing we just come and copy from here after the sql eh? And then we put it here can cheat as well okay there we go 
So there we go. Ah, I think we are together. So here I'm just getting the connection. Here I am running the query. Here I'm getting the rows. Here I'm fetching the ASOC fetch associative array. So since we're expecting only one product, okay, since they were getting just product by ID, let us just fetch one time. We don't need even to loop. Okay, and return whatever comes. So from the other side, we'll be checking whether product was found or not. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and call this function, get product. So we'll come here now to our product. Our product what? Our product file and try to call this function. So since we already have now the ID that we've got from, from get, we can pass it here. So let us see what comes back. We can say uh, pro equals to, I can say P equals to, and then echo the pre tag. Let me call it pro. And then echo here. I mean, sorry, we print underscore R. Print underscore R. We'll try to dump whatever has come back. And we see what we have. So if I refresh here, you see, everything has come. And the beauty is even the category information has come. Only that, only that, the category, <laughs> its name, uh, its name, it conflicted with, uh, <laughs> yeah, its name, it conflicted with the product name. And its ID was conflicted. With the, so that's a challenge. I don't know how we're going to fix it in a way that we can even know the category name. That's a challenge. How shall we fix it? Uh, I don't know. Shall we? I didn't want to get two things twice. That's what I was trying to avoid. Okay, let's go ahead and get the category also separately. So product category. You can say category. So for category, we can put this, getting the product category, this function within this product so that it should come, they should come together. I don't know what you think, so that they come together. So when you call a product, it brings its product and its category. And if we, all, we will know that when we're calling that, we'll bring the product and its respective category together. Uh, yeah, let's do that to save ourselves from this body. Let's go ahead and do that. So, um, how shall we do it? Um, so, we'll have uh, what we call uh, let us first look at the scenario when the ID, maybe the product does not exist and we see what shall be returned. Okay. So the null will be returned. Okay. So that is okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, get this, the product, whatever returns, this is the function. Eh? So whatever returns, uh, we put it where? We put it in data so it will have data and the first variable will be the product uh, pro and the second variable will be the category to call the cat something like that uh, so i will first check if the product was found i'll go ahead and get its category so i'll say if uh, if what if pro is not equal to null and then i'll know then i'll know it's cut the, the category ID will be equal to Procat ID. So I will know if it is not null, then I will have the category ID. I, do, I, do, I just want to create a function that will help us not repeat ourselves. Okay, so that's the category ID. And then I'm going now to collect the category information. Okay, 
so i can use now our normal db select and pass the condition so i can just simply come put here i can write as well the our sql no problem let's go ahead and write the sql from here okay uh so the sql is going to be so right now here i don't need again to link the two i don't need to put this guy in the end okay so i don't need to link that okay so uh the question is the, the query is going to be here we're trying to get the product category details it's going to be select all product. from categories where id equals to procat id and remove this garbage like this so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and do what and get the category by using this fetch asoc so use connection and then i'll put here cut equals this like that so to make our structure standard uh, we should always put here uh, by default category will be null so before we display anything we'll be fast checking if category is not null and then after we'll return the data return the word that data like this okay so i think that's it okay let us see if we don't have errors so i'm dumping here and uh, the product and category refresh and code object line 22 line 22 so it is pro category id let us oh it's supposed to be uh what are they saying cannot use object oh it's an object really oh yeah it's not for well, there's no fetch asoc sorry it's supposed to be fetch associative so this is query uh let me see if i can attach here face fetch associative array yes so i'll also come here and attach here the fetch associative array so refresh beautiful so i have the product itself and the category so before you display everything we'll be first checking if it is not null because that is very important okay so that's beautiful okay so let me first check so i can as well so now i have the data here here so i can say maybe pro now we can define now our product data equals uh pro like this and category equals to cut so you can check if product is null then we say product was not found if this guy equals to null and then say die uh, product not found okay you can as well check for the category so that you know you check once and the once someone passes this level you know that it is everything is okay category category not found so would someone put a wrong id they will not be able to proceed let me say i put like this product not found but you can display these errors in beta we right <laughs> okay so now we have the product we have the category now we can proceed let me show you how we've designed this sql i mean this it's not complicated uh, just pause a bit and look at it carefully this is our function for getting a product we'll be giving it a product id so the first thing it will do it will select all from the products where product id equals to id you can remove even this word since it is now one table only can remove this it is just a specification so you get the global super global variable connection then you get the first result okay and then you initialize it and store it in an array of product that are in the array in this section of product 
then you also create another data i mean another category and then also straight in null and then you check if this product is not null then you go ahead and get its category id okay its category id and then also try to get the category id and store it in what in this side and then you also put it in cut so the cut will have two variable the one of cut and the one and you put them in array and then return the entire array so from this side where we are calling this guy from you receive the data here so you get the product and store it in the product variable and the category store it in the category variable so once you do that you go ahead and check if this guy is null the product is null then you mean that the id was provided in the get here in the get it is not valid you die if the category is null you, it means that the category that has provided in get is not valid you also die so if someone passes these three levels mean that these two levels mean that the product is existing and the category is existing then we can start displaying these things into what into a single page product so i think that is straightforward now we are going to see how we display the data that we've collected from database into this uh single page uh, a single product page so that's it for today uh, let's meet in the next video now when we're going to now display the real data into this but we have learned how to collect things the better way from uh, database and we've also learned how we can create a single uh, user interfaces for things that we think we may repeat ourselves above have learned also this eof okay so please let's meet in the next video and don't miss until you finish everything hello and how are you welcome to our 14th video of creating a complete e-commerce web application using php in the previous video we were able to collect the product from database with a special function and in this video we're going to concentrate on now displaying the product on each single page so that uh, if time allows we'll also look at a way how we can display or we can get the uh, reviews from users they submit their reviews and be able to display them on the what on the same product page so that's what we're going to do in this video so i hope you're good and ready to do this with me if you are then let's go straight into business so this is what i stopped at in the previous video i uh, was able to collect the product details but we couldn't display it eh? so now we are going to see how we can display the details for example here the product title and uh, the category names here and also etc okay so let's go ahead and do that okay so we begin with the uh, product title so i'll go straight to my project or to our project and we begin with the what with the category name i mean the product name here so you see where there is this is where we're going to substitute the product the product name so let's go ahead and do that so since we have now the pro here collected from database i hope you are following the previous video so i hope you're not confused i'm going to come here where is the response and replace it with the product name so i'll put your question mark equal sign and then question mark and then the less than sign and then i'll put your pro and then like this name okay save come and refresh boom we have the product name so it means that now if i click here we have here the relevant product you see it's beautiful okay so here we're going to put the link that can take someone back to home so let's go ahead and look for that guy here where there is home 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 here so i just put a stroke so when you click there it will take you back to home refresh when someone clicks here you take them back to home oh ho, ho, ho. It's supposed to be the name of our project so we already have here the base url uh in the functions i think we already defined it in our function are defined base url okay this one so i'm just going to put here the base url okay so here i'll just simply come and say equal sign and then put the base url so that 
if someone reaches there and then they want to go home they'll just simply click see they are home that's beautiful uh -huh. then there is shop so i have to put this URL stroke shop okay so I'll go ahead and copy that and then i come here and put uh, here where there is shop stroke shop dot php so in case someone want to go straight to the shop you can click here shop dot php beautiful uh -huh. then here i want to put now the product name itself okay so let's just go ahead and put here the product name um i'll just simply come and say uh question mark i mean less than question mark ego sign less than and then i put here pro and then i pass the name so i'll be able to display the product name there refresh the product name that's beautiful aha uh -huh, now it's time to display pictures <laughs> okay no problem you're not scared so we have our pictures in json and we've already uh, uh, prepared the function that gets for us only a single thumbnail the other one was getting only for us this thumbnail so let's go now prepare a one the one that will give us a list of pictures okay a list of pictures that attach to this to this uh, product let's go ahead and do that so let us first see where we're going to put pictures before we rush before we rush before we rush so the pictures are here we're just having this class of called image zoom no problem let's go ahead and do that so all that you need is an array of our pictures okay so let's go ahead and do that from top and we prepare that function so i'll come here the once we have the product let me go ahead and say maybe photos we can say images equals to so we are going to create now a function that's going to be getting us for us what the list of images that attach this photo so that function is not going to be so much different from this function that is getting for us the thumbnail okay so i'm just going to duplicate this guy and then we see how we can modify the data so come ahead copy that one that gets for us the thumbnail and duplicate it so we can call this one get product photos okay or product images photos okay so we'll also be giving it um so it has copied the product and the function name come here paste it and then also we'll be giving it what we'll be giving it product photos photos like this okay so let us uh, dump here whatever comes uh back so i can just simply say echo and i say uh pre tag and i put print and let's go r and then i dump everything that comes back in the image and die here so after doing that uh let's go ahead and now do the logic of getting everything from what from the other side okay so here we have uh what you call amg so <laughs> this was the default uh no image file and then you have check if the json is null we return the no image file so since we are expecting a list a list so we cannot return a static thing like this okay maybe we can define a static list that will have a thumbnail and a what and a photo url okay uh let us first see what we have here in json eh? and we see how we can design everything so let me put here echo and a pre tag and then i'm going to dump print underscore r and dump everything here and die here and then come and refresh you see what we've got this src which is the source and a thumb so that's what i'm going to return back um so we have to return at least one photo so in case a picture does not <laughs> okay let us return and we should you return an empty array or return at least one photo i don't know let's return, return at least one photo 
So if to return one photo, so it means that uh, we have to prepare our array with one photo. So it means that it will be img. Sorry, it will be, we can call it uh, pics. And then it will, okay, let us first define one item. So an item is expected to have uh, a thumbnail, a source, okay, and what, and a thumbnail, okay, like this. So this is a single item. So I'm going to add this item to maybe I can call photos of pics. Let me call it photos equals to, I attach to add, I add one item in this array. So this is how you add it. You just simply do like this, okay? So I add and then I attach it here like this. So after I, re in case there is, the JSON is null, I return this item with one array. Okay, so in case uh, this JSON, I mean this JSON length is less than uh, four, then you know that JSON is empty JSON. We return also again an empty photos. Eh? This photo is just a default photo. Uh -huh. So we come ahead and get the objects. So these are the objects. Eh? So we check if these objects are empty, let us again return the default photos. Eh? Default photos. Okay, so in case then Okay, so once those objects are okay, then we can go ahead and return the objects themselves. Sorry, right now we'll not need to specify the thumbnail. Okay, so if they are not empty, we return all the objects. You see, that is the whole logic of that. We may need to get these photos from this JSON. Uh -huh, so it means, it means, it means, what does it mean? It means I will expect an array with SRC and thumb. SRC and thumb. SRC is the original image. Thumbnail is the thumb is the thumbnail of the image. So everything is okay. Uh, let us go ahead and so I've done this. I hope you can pause the video and understand it. And I'll just go back to this. So we're getting here the images and we are dumping them and see if everything is okay. So I refresh everything is okay as I expected. That's beautiful. Then now we can go ahead and display these images. So let us see what we have. This SRC and an image. So I can put here temporarily and I see how they are related. Okay. Yes. So after doing that, now we're going to loop and display these images here. I want to display them here first. Okay. Here. Let's go ahead and do that. So here I'll put the thumbnail. Here I'll put the full image. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh -huh. So let us go ahead and look where the IMGs. Okay, so you can see uh, this is the real gallery. Uh -huh. Then where are, the, where are the thumbnails? Okay, I don't know how it is organized. So this is the gallery and this is the thumbnail. Okay, this is the thumbnail list. <laughs> thumbnail list is here. And this is now the real images. So it is up to us. Let us begin with displaying the real images. So I'm going to, to delete each single instance and I remain with only one. Okay. So these are the full pictures. Eh? So let us see how they are organized. So every full picture should be identified with a what? With an unique ID. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to loop. So it's just going to be a PHP. We create a PHP tag. Okay. We're going to loop and then you're going to say for each. And then I'm going to loop here images. I can remove this key. Okay, the key will help us create an ID maybe. I don't know. Yes. And then you put here IMG like this. Maybe. Okay. So I'm going to remove this and I put this tag at the end. 
okay so i'll come here and put this guy here and then i put the tag here to surround it with php ah like this so the tag of the closing i'll put it here so if i come and refresh the main thing that here is that every every item should have its own unique id okay its own unique id so we can use the key to help us create a unique id or you can create here your own uh, x and then you be integer and then when you loop you can be increasing it but still the array can do for us this key so i'm going to put it here and um, the id here i'm going to replace it so since uh since 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 id cannot be a single integer in html so i have to attach there some word okay maybe i can say img dash okay img dash and then i put the id i can say product image i don't know anything product image dash and then here i replace it with the key because the key is going to be unique here so i put equal sign and put here the key so the key will be one two three you know eh? so i think that's it okay that's it now here we now put the image src okay the image source so i'll go ahead and remove no we put the thumbnail and then the image source here is the thumbnail and the image source so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here and put question mark and put equal sign and i put img and then i put uh, that dash and then the greater than sign uh, to point at it. it's an object you know these guys are objects eh? these guys you see so i'm going to get it is it our object in the arrays <laughs> okay we'll see okay so i'm going to put here the thumbnail i mean the the, the thumbnail eh? I think the thumbnail will go here. Data zoom. I don't know which one is thumbnail. Okay, we'll see. Okay, I think the image will come here. Okay, and then the thumbnail will come here. What to zoom? Which you call thumbnail. Thumb. Okay. So I'll put here thumb like this. So the thumbnail, the image, the thumbnail, the image, you'll see. If it doesn't make sense, we'll switch them. Okay. So after doing that, let's go ahead and refresh. <laughs> Beautiful. But I think it's vice versa. I see now the main picture is on top. Is it the thumbnail or it's the main picture? Let us try to <laughs> switch them and see. So I'll put here thumb and come and put here the data to zoom. I put the main picture refresh uh -uh. is our thumb even there i don't know it's supposed to be thumb okay it's supposed to be b refresh yeah that makes sense so this is not that will be zooming eh? but uh, we will do that uh, when you proceed so you can as well put src here there's one maybe footer file that we'll need to add eh? so after doing that the next thing that we do is now to put these guys eh? these you have to put them eh? so let's go ahead and do that it's also going to be a loop these guys i hope here we are still we are together right we are together i hope okay I hope we are together so now let's go ahead and now do the loop here of the of the tar of the thumbnails so let me first uh, break them down into good tags that should not confuse us Okay, you see, I just a list of them, a list of them, a list of them, like that, like that. 
and then yeah so the thing is they are exactly almost like this okay so i'm just going to copy this and i modify yeah okay <laughs> i'm just going to copy this guy and modify so you are going to remove and we remove we remain with one only that here this bottom one is a video so we'll use it for practicing so we're going to remove these other guys this one beginning from here so i'm going to remove from here up to here okay and then i'm going to remove this guy only okay so i'll refer i'll paste here and i make sure that i close php i close the tag okay so i've just copied this guy okay here so between this loop it's just the same images only between this loop i'm going to put this one here okay so after doing that now let us look let us what is changing here so here it has to reference so only the first one will be having this class of active eh? so let us uh, see how we do that logic in a way that the first one should only have that class of active uh, so how shall we do that logic um okay i think i got it so i'm going to put here something called active eh? active class i'll put here active class equals active okay so by default it is active also before it starts looping it is active so i'll come and substitute it here question mark equals that like this and then when it finishes looping for the very first time so when it finishes looping eh, the, f the first loop i'll come here 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 so you know here it loops for the first time and when it finishes i'll come here and replace it with nothing so it means that when it comes for the first time it will have this word active and will make it active and the display here the word active and then finish it the first time it is removed and then the loop remote it is it is built in the here so by default it will be active the first one and then on the remaining thing it will be removed okay that is it uh the next thing is this guy has to be referenced uh the id here so you know how we use the id to adjust pro and this so i'll just leave the hash leave this pound this one this guy and i remove this guy and put like this so it will be pro and then the key since the same loop almost so the key will be the same that's beautiful and then lastly is now the thumbnail itself i have to put it here so i'll get just my what my link for the thumb and then i put it here boom yes i think that's exactly how it is a fresh beautiful you see yeah baby yeah that's amazing uh only that we have one class i mean one file that will need to add it is in footer so we can have that zooming feature beautiful uh -huh. so the other thing we need to implement this video ah that video i think it will simply let me get here some video from youtube from my channel learn it with my hindu let me get this guy it's my one of the application that i did welcome to okay let me copy that video link aha uh -huh. come here where there is video video item hrf okay i think it is just external youtube oh, i don't know how it is done here external.html i don't know let us try to put just youtube link and this is how it will look like mm -hmm. yeah i think we are good refresh Uh, it will take us to the youtube video uh it is we are supposed to have this file called external html okay i don't know whether i should get it also external html it is here uh this is how it is 
Let's try to copy it, copy the file and put it here. Let's put it here. Same. Okay. And come and remove one dot. Refresh. <laughs> it does not work. Okay, I think. <sighs> okay. Let's just use for displaying. Okay. Uh, for the video, we can do it later. <laughs> uh, we can do it later. The embedding of external video. Okay. We can do it later. Uh, when you're doing finishing it. So for now, maybe you can put that link and then put the target to be new tab. Uh, target underscore blank. Okay, that's nice. Refresh. So when someone asks to view the video, you click there and then it will take him to the heart. To, to the new tab. Okay, so that's it. Okay, that's it. Let me put here my own link. Okay, so that's for the video. Uh, the main point here was the pictures, but you can remove it if you don't want it. Eh? If you don't want the videos. Uh -huh, now let's go ahead and uh, do what? And, and uh, put now the zooming feature. As you can see here, we're able to zoom. Eh? We're able to zoom. So that thing, I think we skipped adding one more, maybe uh, zoom. Let us try to search zoom. You see, uh, called it drift mean drift.js. Okay, so we're going to include that file in our footer. So I'll copy that guy, the link mean drift.js. Copy it, come at the end of our footer here, after footer, put it there. So make sure that you point in the right section. So let us see where it is located. So we copied everything. So it's under JS. No, it's under what? Let's see how it, where, where we can find it in our structure. Okay, let me copy this, control P. It is under vendor, mini drift then distinction distribution so it is under vendor i think it is in the right section do you have vendor here yes under vendor then drift zoom drift zoom where is drift zoom yeah i think it is there drift zoom and then distribution then uh, the js yeah drift basic mean to js i think that's what you needed so i'll save come and refresh yeah it's beautiful uh, eh, no this is not ours <laughs> it's not zooming yet uh, let us first see if uh it has come so if you page source uh zoom it has got to the last page and see if it has come really or not so it is here here then i think it's already there so i just included it twice uh -huh. save uh refresh uh -huh. is it coming yes it is coming so which file do you think we are missing that is here i think we have bootstrap simpler bar tiny smooth scroll drift zoom is already there light gallery uh, do you have light gallery yeah it's not there i think it's light gallery that we are missing hey 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 so these things you have to follow the template routes otherwise you create your own refresh uh, light gallery there let us click if it is coming yes it is now coming now refresh uh, still it is not zooming okay 
um what do you think a large video by the way think large video it not work maybe because not have this one maybe theme do js theme do js do you have it theme do js we don't have it let me see if we don't have it theme dot js already there oh then what are we missing do, 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 do. let me see on top here css uh zoom css do you have it drift zoom on top let us see yeah it is there okay let's now go to the console and see what could be the problem inspect console errors fail to load theme.js so theme.js is not coming eh? theme.js theme.js this guy but has come why mm -hmm. let's see the console they're saying uh Fail to load response status of external HTML or oh, external HTML, I think, in theme.js. So, let us go ahead and remove that from theme.js. So, let us get rid of the, this thing of external HTML. Wherever it is, we have to remove it. So it is here, external HTML. I remove this guy. Get rid with it. Uh huh. Then also come to theme.js. Theme min.js. Look for external HTML. It's not there. So theme min.js. Okay light gallery is not defined light gallery is not defined let me first refresh so light gallery is not defined let us see if light gallery is already there uh, light gallery it's there but it's in bottom so let us put somewhere on top uh, So light gallery uh, claiming is not defined. Let us put it on top. I don't know. So refresh. Yeah, I think it's working now. Yeah. It's zooming, but you know we are zooming the same much. <laughs> the same photos so let us go ahead and try to switch them but still there's still some error let us inspect and see which error could be uh in console i see external i have have icon yeah these are not serious errors okay so our zoom file is so huge let us go ahead and switch uh this thumb like this i think just try to switch uh srs should be here and thumb should be here refresh <laughs> it is super huge product uh, how do we use thumb and thumb refresh If you use SRC and SRC, refresh. <laughs> uh, it is working, but maybe the quality of the photos. So let me put your thumb and put the other side SRC. So this zoom part can be looked at in another day. But the main point is you can zoom and you can preview pictures.
there move your mouse there you can see it is zooming i can even switch to the other okay it is working i think <laughs> it is working only the dimension of pictures eh? they are not matching okay it is zooming it's working it's working and that the dimension of pictures are not matching so you have to say the dimension of pictures to be the same yeah so everything is okay now in the next video we'll proceed to adding product to cut and uh, proceeding to customer side maybe things of uh, um what uh reviews we can look at them when you're concluding the entire project uh, like pressing the reviews okay so i hope you not miss the next video i hope uh, the video was helpful i hope you can even use this knowledge creatively to implement it even in your other what in your other projects okay thank you for being part of this video up to this point um make sure you like the video share it with friends subscribe and let us meet in the next video where we're going to proceed from where i've stopped at today yeah and don't miss because i won't look at one now interesting things such as handling the customer's orders okay goodbye and see you hello and how are you my name is mohino bark and i welcome you to our other video of creating a complete e-commerce web application in the previous classes we were able to list our product and also be able to display that product into its single page in today's class i'm going to show you how you can add a product to cart and then go ahead and preview your cart and then a customer will be also able to do what to proceed to the checkout and fill out the form and also the for the customer to be able to choose the shipping option that they need and also proceed with the card and payment and also uh, previewing the order and confirming the order then also tracking the what the order as well as viewing the order details that is what we're going to cover today the cut management of e-commerce web application so i hope you're ready to do this with me if you are then let's go straight to the code and resume with from where i stopped in the previous video okay so as you can see i've already opened my project so i hope if you if you are following you know everything about this project at this moment if you are not following then please go ahead and watch our previous videos so that you can be on the same page with us now what i'm going to do here i'm going to first work on the products you know our project i've already started our project our project just had only two products and they seem not to be relevant so i'm going to teach you how you can generate the dummy product because creating dummy data in your project is really very very crucial on the project representation so i'm going to show you how we can generate some dummy product and also use them to do what to perform the remaining parts of the part of the project so let's go ahead and generate the dummy products or the product i'll use to, to practice first of all i'm going to go to my database and delete the existing products that are already there so i'll just simply come to my local host and then come to our project database which is this one i think the shop this guy and then i come to product table so this is the product table so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete everything here so delete everything you can of course select everything here and say delete or oh, the other way if you want to reset a table there is an sql called truncate okay so if you say truncate products means that you're formatting a table and it looks like new so i have truncated a products table and there's nothing right now so if i come here and i try to refresh our project you'll see there is nothing okay there's no more product so let's go ahead and generate at least uh, 15 products that you're going to use for practicing so to do that i'm going to go to my project and i'm going to come to functions and i'm going to create a special function for creating these fake products okay so how shall we do that we we'll just simply come to functions and then say i'm going to create a newly function that i'm going to call 
my faker oh can call it products faker products I can say fake what fake products <laughs> generate <laughs> okay so I can delete this guy so this function I'm going to do nothing inside it but generating what generating uh, fake products that you're going to use just for for practice okay so what is not happening I have here something that I have to rub this guy so let me die here and say generating okay so let's go ahead and call this function let's go ahead and call this function from uh, home page or anywhere and we see how we can generate these products so i'll go come here to my files and come to the index file okay the index file here and i'm going to come here on top here and immediately after including functions i'm calling this guy to generate for us the products okay and then i can put here die and say done so i'll save and if i come and refresh right now on the top of our project i should see generating so it means that we have successfully called the function that is going to help us generate dummy products so to generate a dummy product of course we're going to first need the parameters that we need for a product these are the parameters okay so I'll copy them from database and then come and put here some temporary comment and paste them there. Okay. So first of all, we need the ID. So this ID will uh, automatically generate itself. Of course, it will be auto incrementing. Okay. So now we need the product name. So it means that we're going to create a what? A function that's going to, I mean, we're going, we're going to create a loop that's going to loop into the number of products that we want and then provide this information pro to create the product. So I'm going to just gonna say for reach and then uh, sorry sorry not for reach I can say a for loop and then uh initially I say i is equal to zero i is less than uh, fifteen or I can say i less than twenty so I'm going to generate twenty product and I say i plus plus okay then after doing that then I start creating one product by one so I can say pro and then the first parameter I pass the name of the product so equals to so i'm going to create an array that i'll be randomizing and then automatically pick the product's name okay so i can come here and i create um an an array called names equals to and then that's where i'm going to store my temporary products names so i can come and get some idea from names for example if i go maybe to amazon okay i just want to pick the product name ideas okay so i can go to amazon and pick some random product name ideas let me come maybe to clothes since we are dealing in clothes uh -huh, so you see there is this name oh my god i've just clicked on it okay no problem there this name so i'll double click on it and then put here under one of the options here uh -huh, so i'll come and put here a comma and create another so let me go ahead and copy another name of a product this guy I don't know i don't need first click on it uh -huh. so i can copy this guy okay it's called kelvin kane women's put here and put a comma here so if it has an apostrophe like this one you can uh, eliminate it like that so let me go ahead and get some random product name uh random products names let me do this for less than one minute okay but you can do better so you can as well create yours but yours can do what you can do it manually so let me come and get a strange totally different product uh, let me come here and get another product that is totally different uh, let me get this one okay I think those are enough okay i think those products are enough for us to i mean these products name are enough for us to for practicing after all it's not the real data okay so that's it but you can still go ahead and add more and more and more and more okay so that's it now after having uh, at least four names there 
so the next thing that we're going to do you're going to shuffle these names so we put here our loop you see this is our loop so inside this loop i'm going to shuffle the names so this is how we shuffle the array by writing a function called shuffle and the password you want to shuffle so i'm shuffling the names and here i want to initialize with the name in a position of one for example so it will randomize every loop and get for us a name in the first position in the second position which is one so after doing that the next thing i'm going to sorry Okay, so after doing that, uh, the next thing, what do we need? We need the name. The name is done. Buying price. Uh, so we can also randomize the buying price by putting maybe uh, buying price. You can also do the same thing, but you can just put maybe random between 1,000 and maybe five thousand so it will create for me some random number between one thousand five thousand but you can do a better pricing than this okay so price is done the selling price let me do the same thing and then we come to description so the description you can write your simple lorem ipsum like this create a new file and write the word lorem Lorem. It's not creating. It's meant to be in a HTML file. For example, let me come here and put Lorem like this and then duplicate. So after, I'm going to come here and create maybe something called description. Description equals to, and I put that Lorem ipsum just for testing so i'll come to this guy where there's description and i put the lorem ipsum that we just passed so after doing that what next we have photos okay so here in photos is also interesting you know we have a list of photos json okay so you have to organize them also properly in a way that uh, we maintain the same what the same structures so if you still remember uh we, when you are creating photos we save the thumbnail and what and uh, and uh, and the main photo name what we call the src so i'm going to create a loop that is going to generate for us what some photo names so let's go ahead and do that so i just simply come and say for each loop and the i mean for loop okay and then i can begin from one up to maybe uh 20. so i'm going to create some images that are ranging from one up to 20. so i can call this guy photos equals to nothing by default and then after i come and say photos i mean sorry i can say now maybe a single peak and the path of what of thumbnail and i put so let us first see how we saved did we save it as thumb or let us see where there is get uh product photo it is src and thumbnail so i can just simply come and say thumb equals uh maybe uh i so this is the i of course beginning from one i dot jpg jpg okay and then after we come and collect the src src it can also be the same okay uh so i have to put here do it because there i will have not touched attached it okay so after doing that i'm going to get these photos so it means that here i'll have added some photos i'll have to add them like this and then i append them to peak so i'll have had uh, those photos which are ranging from one up to nine with the extension of dot jpg so i'm going to first get my photos and put them in a folder where they expected to be
so you see product photos um i want to see whether there's product photo uh is rc i want to see where we are uploading the products exactly i think we are putting them in what in uploads or i don't remember so we are putting them i think in uploads here okay so i'm going to put here some photos which are having name from uh, one up to what one up to 20. so this template this theme comes with some exemplary photos that you can find under under what under assets i mean under images img and then under catalog i mean under shop and then under catalog that's where you can find these products photos so let me go ahead and reveal them and see where they are and then put them in a place that I want. So here they are. They are ranging up to 70, 72. So I can copy all of them and then come and put them in a folder that I want. I want them to be in my uploads folder. So I'll come and look for my uploads folder and I open it and then I paste there these products. Okay, copy them here come and paste click here and paste so i've just dragged and dropped them okay so after doing that uh the next thing is now to make use of these products okay so that's why i was looping as i'm adding dot jpg so after doing that now it means that i can now add this product i can now append it to these photos i mean I can now append that picture to those photos array. So now when I'm determining or when I'm getting the photos, uh, the products I'll have to shuffle also photos. I'm randomizing them. And then where there is the word photos, where is it anyway? It is here, photos. I'm going to say photos equals to JSON encode so i'm encoding the json of what of photos here that i've just randomized and i paste it here so the next thing is what is um catalog id so catalog id also it has to be one of the ids that are already existing in our system so i'm going to create here uh a what another array for just getting the id that are in the system so catalog and then i say so i can come and look at the system and look at our current ids that we have okay so in categories we have three four and five okay these others are main okay so i'm going to put three four and five as default we have category equals to three uh -huh, another one is sorry three category dot id equals three okay sorry 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 we just create a categories array and then put here we have three and four and five so meaning those are the among the uh, categories that we have then here i'll have also to shuffle them so that they should not look similar and then after so after now i need to set the category id okay so to see the category id i'll just simply come and say category underscore id so after doing that i'll have to get the what the ids from here that's something that i've shuffled this guy okay so i'll just simply come and say sh shuffle
I say shuffle. The categories we've already shuffled categories, I just simply say maybe get the categories and then item from zero. Okay, it can be any number that is within the limit. And then what's remaining user ID, the one who has just submitted this product. Let us keep it simple and say maybe it's the super admin whose ID is one. So after doing that, uh, let's go ahead and now save. Okay. So um, now we're going to insert, I think everything is done. Now we're going to insert this data into the database. Okay. So to do that, we are going to just simply come and call our function that inserts data into the database, which is db insert, I think db insert this guy okay so we specify the database and also the data so we'll just go ahead and call this function from here so after doing that so the user id by default we make it one because you know at, at least there is that administrator who has the user id one so we call the function db insert and we pass the table name which is products and then we pass the um, data which is inside the pro so after uh that's all <laughs> let's see if we can populate some products into our database so i'll come and comment this guy and then after i'll now go ahead and call my function i mean uh, i'll go ahead and process the refresh the the, the page so it's done uh, with no error so let's go ahead and now remove this guy which is here okay so i'm going to come to main function and comment the faker and also remove this guy that's done okay so let's refresh at least you'd see let us go now to our shop page and see if we have some products oh it did not insert i don't see any product there let's try to go to products and see if there's something there's not something there okay let's see what could be the could have been a problem uh -huh. so we have db insert let us put here die okay die to show that uh, we are in the right place okay and then put a semicolon here and then maybe i can put here maybe done okay let's go ahead and refresh and see go back to home you see we are here so db insert maybe it did not insert the products i don't know oh yeah let's go ahead and see what what might have happened mm, db insert refresh come and see if the products are already entered in, in the table not yet okay let's find out why so db insert we go to the function the function is here uh-huh let us see if it is reaching this point so debugging is part of programming so let us see if it's reaching this point uh-huh refresh it is reaching the point let us see uh they're saying that has value all that let's see if it is reaching this point here um which is reaching the point uh, let us see the sql that is being generated okay so i just simply say die the sql that is being generated which is insert into products then the name of the product oh yeah i think the problem is uh those apostrophes eh? those apostrophes products name maybe they're the problem so you have to do my sql string escape so let us see how we can do that my sql i mean my s my my sql i real real escape string this function uh, it's going to help us do what to 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 prepare our our, our uh, SQL so it can be free from what from SQL 
injection mm -hmm. so this is it mm. you just call it and what and the connection okay so here when the file is a uh, integer we'll just simply call the connection so this connection need to be on top here so needs to be on top here so it is my sql i mean real escape string okay so we just put real escape ah just call the guy i mean you have to attach it on um, the connection and then you let me remove this value here and put it here so i want to do nothing but just repair the value itself okay let me show what i'm doing to, uh, what i'm doing i'm going to first undo everything and be like the way it was okay so this is how it was like this okay it was like this now before i save this value here i'll have to first escape its string like this so i say value let me, let me, let me say um, v equals my sql okay value value equals connection then my sql escape string and then uh, we insert that value here so this one will help us from sql injection let us see if everything is now better refresh okay it has been escaped where necessary let me now try to run the sql i have come and check in products uh, still products are not there i don't know why uh, let's refresh and see insert into products then chik -chik 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 -chik, the products are there then the values oh you see there's this is not escaped see it's not escaped so why is it not escaping uh-huh so this is the value first time uh, uh, let me also add it here i think yeah so refresh uh, now you can see, let's see if it is being escaped. Uh, I see this guy is not escaped. This is supposed to be escaped. Hmm? This one. Oh, this one is escaped. Can you see? Let us try to save and see if everything is okay now. Refresh. Come and refresh. Check. Products are not going there. Why? Ah, uh, let me die here and say failed. Now uh, this is success, success, and I die here and say failed. Okay, let's do that and see failed. So if you want to see the reason why, just count this connection and find the error, and just simply put print underscore r the connection. Let me put here the echo print. Uh, pre -tag. We are just fixing the problem. Eh? So fixing this is part of the programming. So if I come and refresh, you can see the error, error, error number this. You have an error in the SQL syntax that corresponds to write this, 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 this. uh fix the problem and uh, the problem was i was writing a wrong json file uh, whereby i was i was truncating i was adding a what a uh, i was adding here i was adding uh, a string on it on itself after adding i was just doing like this instead so i was doing like this that was the problem so you have to remove this guy that you escape the string alone and then you also insert it separately that is the only miss that i was doing yeah ah that's that was painful okay it's okay 
now I'll fix the issue now even though an SQL comes with a comma this SQL string escape will do what will escape it so with that said so if I run this SQL I mean this function it is going to generate for me uh, dummy products okay it's going to generate for me dummy products uh, 20 of them 20 dummy products so let me go ahead and delete everything in my database and we do it afresh so I'll come to our database and truncate again the products delete everything in the products and deleted then let's come to index and call the function which we call fake product generator so when it calls it's going to generate some fake products so when i'm at shop it is not showing anything let's go to home so it can be called so it has been called right now so if we come here you see we have some products okay we have products listed into our shop that is very nice okay we have products listed there so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to uh remove this function so that it should not run be ran multiple times and we end up having so many products <laughs> that we will not even need so i'm just using 20 products of them so let me comment maybe in future when we'll need it we'll use it so those kind of functions are important for you to generate fake products that you can use when you're demonstrating your project to the client as well as when you are uh, creating your projects okay or practicing or testing so I've generated those uh, default products you see they are there uh, only that here I put so many pictures eh? I put so many pictures in a way that I had put almost all the 20 pictures in the what on the same product so I can go ahead and maybe limit these pictures eh? so let us go to single product page uh, well, let us come here where there is get products photos uh, in the function where there is get uh, product photos here I'm just going to limit and send a minimum uh, here just and decode so I'm going to loop and limit them eh? so I just simply say uh, for each for each okay so I'll put here the product okay I put the objects what you call the object so I can first create a temporary one like this and then I create this one with an empty array and then I start adding them in this empty array by just simply putting this guy and then put value okay so if I save right now I uh, will uh, now I can put the limit now I can say int i equals to maybe four or zero okay now remove the int <laughs> and then come and say if if i is greater than maybe three or let us say four you should stop from there so it will bring maximum of four products uh, photos so refresh um what is not happening uh, 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 what is not happening we, are uh, we have to look through this empty this empty one i mean this one where we kept date so now we should have only four products to show so here uh, we have to increase i plus plus otherwise it will never meet the condition so if i refresh now I'll see I have only four product eh? photos uh, maybe the other thing here I can also shuffle them <laughs> I can also shuffle them because they may end up becoming the same so uh, they already shuffled I think so there we go now let's go ahead and do now the real business that brought us today uh, adding this product to cart okay adding the product to cut so we are going to use session to act as our cut so when someone adds a product we'll be keeping this product into what into a session and uh, now what you're going to do right now you're going to when someone clicks on a product you want someone when he clicks here he should be taken to that file 
that is going to process the session or we can do this kind of a form in a way that here we put the quantity someone to specify and this will become like kind of a form someone to submit on that particular what particular form and in that form that's will be doing the process of adding that product to what to cut i think you understand what i'm talking about now let's go ahead and do it so we'll begin from here where there is size we are going to change it to quantity so i'll come and search it uh, of course size it is here on the product page so let's go ahead and call this guy quantity uh quantity quantity and then we can uh, we can now have this select in form of quantity so maybe or we can change it to what to in to a normal input as in uh, input so that someone should enter the quantity that they want in any value so input type is going to be number and then we give it a class of of course form from what <laughs> if we give it a class of forms let's see how it will look like okay so let me go ahead and comment this because i don't need it now let me go ahead and comment it so come and save come and refresh uh we have okay so quantity it is here only that i can come and call this one form control okay it's called form control uh, so someone will enter the quantity there and then add to cut so to do that now let's go ahead and um, and uh, and do what and add this product to what to cut so quantity 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 is going to be submitted uh, uh let us make it required so that someone will have to specify how many pieces they want uh, required okay save now i'm going it is a form here i'm going to submit it to a certain field that will handle that i will not do it get i may not do it as get or i can do it as get if i want to okay so that even someone will be browsing a product uh, when they are submitting i want to see if this is feasible so let us say someone is on shop and want to submit a product so I'll put here you'll first enter the quantity from this section and then submit i don't know whether that would be good practice okay so and then submit this one as kind of a form so let's go ahead and uh, submit this product in what in our, in our, in our project i mean in our cart so what you're going to do you're going to create a, a file that is going to be processing uh cut we're going to call it uh cut add process or i want to call it uh, so everything that's about the cut maybe we can call we can start with it with a word cut okay so let me collapse everything here and i'm going to create a new what a new function that is going to add the product to cut so i'll come here and create a new file that i'm going to call cut space process okay and why am i calling it process because this isn't just going to do the logic of adding it will not display anything that's why i'm calling it process add.php so uh here this form that is surrounding this that's going to select this guy okay we are going to i think quantity is here so we can remove this quantity the one that we have here just remove that one let us use this quantity so you can decide which quantity so you want someone to add according to your form your project so let me give now these things a name so i'm going to call it uh quantity okay uh refresh now the other guy is gone so let's put here quantity someone will select here and then submit okay let's go ahead and specify what someone shall, should submit so one more thing that you have to give this guy a name others not be submitted and let us call it quantity okay so 
and specify where the form should go so i'll come here where the form should go and put action i can say action and put a uh, cut process dot php so refresh here and then i'll come and add here maybe three pieces and then i submit it is submitting this card pr add pr process add at php so that's why we're going to do the whole logic of adding product to cart so first of all let us go ahead and uh, do it so we'll come here to cut process add and then we begin our php and then include our functions once include or require once and we're going to include our functions uh, our functions are inside files stroke functions dot php so we know in that functions that php file even the session will be started okay file not found supposed to be files not files save refresh everything is okay so in in, in function that php it is where even um, the session is started so let us go ahead and create the cut session so everything under the cut session i mean everything that's going to store the session of cut we're going to be saving it in this thing of cut okay so everything that will be here is what will be storing the cut so let us create uh, where how we're going to under the, the 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 session product so here i'm going to specify the product id right. so here i'll be putting uh, the id of a product and then i uh, will be equating it now to the what the product itself here so it's going to be here i think the product information is going to be the id of a what of a product so in case someone submitted the product twice we'll do what we will know so one more thing maybe that we need here is now the product id itself so i will come here and put um echo echo and say pre-tag and just dump a printer a printer and put a post and see what is being sent into post so if you refresh so you see only the quantity but you don't have the id so let's go ahead and fetch the id too so it means that you have to put here some hidden input that will be uh, submitting the id of a product so let's go ahead and do that i'll come here to the before method so within the form so i'll just put another input another input you can call it hidden i can call it <laughs> uh input okay and then put type to be hidden hidden and then give it value equals to so here i'm going to write some php uh that's going to fetch the product id that someone is previewing so of course it is this one the word id so i'll go ahead and put here id like this so by doing like that so when someone submits why this guy not being detected when someone submits the product id will also be submitted one more thing don't forget to give it a name okay so i'll give it a name of id so let's go ahead and refresh so when i say maybe three per three items and then say add to cut you see i have the quantity and the i have the product id and the quantity so from here let's go ahead and select now and get the product and get the product so come to functions uh, so we come to cut and then let us get the product so we have what we call db select i think db underscore select which will take the table of course the table is what products and then this db select don't get confused it is a function that we did before okay db select the function that we did to select the product okay so where it will take the condition eh? so where the condition i'm just going to pass the condition is uh, 
nothing but an sql okay so i'm just going to put here where so that will be the second condition so i'll just put here where id equals to and i pass the id but i've not defined this id so id will be equal to uh post and then the id itself so you can first check if some id is really set or not something like that so here i'll just simply uh substitute the id here so i have to pass like this so where id equals to that so by doing like that i think i'll be able to get what a single product okay so i can just simply say now a pro equals to but i think remember we created a function that gets for us a product eh? get product a special function for getting the product and did it create it here i see it is here so we don't need to suffer eh? this is a special function so let us use this one we just give it an id only so that's the use of creating functions and remembering that you created functions so if i come here and refresh now i'll be able to see uh, all the product so this is the product we're going to add to what to cut so i'll check if we go to null okay if equal to null let me die here we can redirect we can do die and say die and say uh, uh product uh, not found okay uh yeah so that's it uh now let us go ahead and add it to session as i told you we are going to have something like this session you know the sessions already started within functions and then we're going to have a section of cut with a special variable of cut and then next to it we'll put the id of a product to avoid duplicates so i'll come and get this guy and put it here and then inside there i save now this product information the whole product information there like this only maybe the only thing that is remaining is is putting the quantity you know putting the quantity so but i can add it but uh, if i want to to attach it eh? so since this guy is an array this product thing is an array i can attach there as well the what the quantity so since the quantity is coming within the post so i can put here uh quantity which equals to uh post and then pass the what the quantity so if you want to make sure it's an integer you can type cast it like this and then they'll make sure it's a what an integer let's refresh ah you see quant has been added so this will be a single item inside the cut session so after doing that let's go ahead and re redirect the user so i don't know whether i created a function of alert message i think we did let us see if it is there do you have it called alert yes we have it eh? you see this one we've already created this function that will uh, create a message that will be sent to another what to another page okay so let's go ahead and create that message and say alert and then say uh product added to cut successfully and then pass here success okay uh yeah that's it and then after we have to redirect okay so to redirect i'll redirect to the back to the shop so i just simply say header and then i pass location and then i pass shop dot php and then i save so if i come and refresh i'll be back to the shop dot php only that i have written it the bad way i think a lot it begins with what with a type and then followed by the message so the type is success and the message is product added to cut successfully refresh everything is okay uh come and uh, try this put to so you see product added to cut successfully that is beautiful okay 
so now we need to show the number of products that are added to cut here but i think that one we're going to do it in the next video okay but you see product can be now get added to cut successfully so in the next video now we're going to proceed how to display the product number the number in, in of products in the on in cut here and also displaying the products that are in cut the top three products in cut we display them here and also maybe as well as now uh checking out okay or previewing the cut details and also checking out so that's what we're going to do in the next video so please don't miss uh don't give up keep practicing until you complete we complete everything i'll share the source code <laughs> In one of the videos so keep watching until they die share the source code okay so goodbye and we meet in the next video and don't miss hello and how are you my name is Mahin Dombark and I welcome you to our 16th video of creating a complete e-commerce web application in today's video we're going to proceed from where we stopped at in the previous video and you remember in the previous video you were able to place a product into cart. So today we are going to see how we can display the cart and also the customer being able to check out and submit their order. That's what we're going to do in this video. So I hope you're ready to do this with me. If you are, then let's go straight into business. So as you can see, I've already opened the project. Our template is here and also the real project is here. And I've also loaded the project into a uh, Visual Studio Code, as you can see here. So we're going to resume exactly from how I stopped that in the previous video, right? So you remember in the previous video, you were able to click on a product and you're able to see the product details, okay? So now you're going to see how you can add a product. I mean, we have we already done also adding product with their quantities to cut, okay? When I click there, you can see my product has added to cut successfully. And I select another product and I add it, you see, product was added to cut successfully. So how do we proceed from there? We are going to see, I mean, we're going now to display this cut. Uh, first of all, we're going to begin with this number. You should be counting the number of products in the what? In the cut. And also when someone moves their mouse here on this cut icon, we should show them the product that I've just added in the what? In the cut, the latest four. So that's what we're going to do. So let us begin with the number and then we come to this listing of the product and then also we now complete by when someone clicks on uh, expand cut they see all the products in the what in the cut and then, then we proceed to the, pro <laughs> the checkout like that okay so let us begin with this simple simple number so you can guess this number is in uh, our head file okay is in the head file so let's go ahead let's go to the head file and find it and then also implement the what and then put the right number that is counting the products in the cart so i'll come to our project and then i look for head files which are here this is one and then i can simply search for the four of course so i can just simply press ctrl f and rather than sign with the four so i will guess it will be <laughs> i guess it is this one okay this one i've just searched this for you see i think it's this one where there is a navbar drop down ms3 that one eh? so i think uh it is this guy okay this one here i've just searched for the four this one okay let me try to change it and make it 41 and see if it will reflect it is 41 so it means uh we are now here oh this is where we're going to do what it's where we're going to check so let's go ahead and see how we can count the cut products so i'm going to come here and count the cut products so the products in the cut but how shall we count them so what you're going to do we're going to put here maybe cut counter i can call it counter or anything so i'll just simply put um php and i'm going to call it uh cut count okay so that's the variable that we're going to be putting here but you know i've not defined this variable so i'm going to define it here on top okay on top 
so after requiring the file functions we know this function will come with what with the session started let us first display what is in the session and we see what is inside the session so we can see how we, we count the cut so i just simply put echo and then put the pre tag and then do the print underscore r and then pass a uh, session okay so let me die here okay die and we see so save refresh so you can see uh, we already have this item in cut okay so we have an item called cut and in session and is having uh, uh, an item with this id an item with this id with the information of that product that is good so let's go ahead and do what and uh, let's go ahead and uh, count the information in in the in the in the dimension of cut so if i come here and put session and i specify cut so we'll be able to see only the products that are in cut not the other dimensions eh? so let's go ahead and now count this first of all first check if it is set because when the customer comes for the first time it will not be set okay so i just simply put if is set is set session cut otherwise if you don't do that when the customer comes for the first time and has not put anything in the cut then your project will crash if it's set then i can just simply know that it is set and then i can check if it is an array like if is is array something like that to make sure that we don't get errors so i can now come and make this cut count by default to be zero so if someone comes for the very first time the cut count will be zero and then if it is the cut is set and the 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 the, 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 the cut items are in them are in form of array then i'll go ahead and count them so to count them i'll just simply say cut count equals to count and then i pass the cut itself okay the items in the cut dimension so this one will be able to give us the number of what of the products in the cut then i'll delete these guys so if i search it you see i just put it where there was four that's why i'm displaying it okay here so let's go ahead and refresh things are beautiful you see you have five products uh -huh. so if i come and uh, get this product and i add it to cut you see they are becoming now six that is so nice okay so we proceed now we're going to present here we're going to display here the most uh top product or the latest product six products i mean four product that they have just been added to cut so let's go ahead and do that so you can simply search this word women this 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 in header because it is in head let's go ahead and do that okay so i'll come to our head and then search okay so i guess it is this one eh? so let me collapse here so oh no this is a <laughs> wrong file eh? so let me search you see it is this one so it is here what you in the section called the cut drop down so you can look for cut drop down so this guy okay so if i let me go ahead and we analyze it so it is just multiple items okay so you see the items just they're just producting items okay so let's go ahead and remove the unnecessary ones and leave only like one so i can uh so we collapse these single items okay so i'll collapse also this one and then i go ahead and delete these guys so i'm remaining with only one single item or one instance so if i come and loop i mean and refresh i'll see only there is only one item so i'm going to loop the items in the cart four of them and then put them here so let's go ahead and do that uh but before we loop we have to first check if uh there are some items in the cart and also we have to check properly if um if there's some item in the cart and also we check properly if we're going to loop before the cart is started 
So let us first plan how we're going to loop. So if I come here, I'm going to put here the product, and then you see how the total will be here. So it will be good if we check everything from top, uh, where there is PHP tag, and then we come here just to implement the what? The logic. So let's do that. So after knowing that uh, my cart is found here under the cart dropdown, I'm just going to copy this word so that when I come back, I should be knowing where I want to come. And then I, so I'll search it, okay? So I'll come here on top and then after I'm going to just put here, just comment. Okay, and put there just uh, my, what I will search. <laughs> I just want to put it there. So that I should not suffer when I'm looking for where I was. Okay, so uh, let us go ahead and uh, put here our empty array that we're going to call cut items. Okay, so it will always be created. We're going to call cut items. Okay, cut items is going to be having zero. Okay, so it is having nothing. So this cut items will always be there. So whether a cut is initialized or not, it means it will always be there. So here I'm checking if the cut is created and if the session of cut is there. So you see the cut is here. And that's how we get the, the number. So I'm going to loop and copy. Or I can simply copy the item in this cut and put them there. But let me go ahead and loop so that I get all items and I'll be able to calculate the what? The total. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let us go ahead and first see how our cut is organized. So I'll copy only this cut session only. And then I put here echo, and then I put a pre tag, and then I put a semicolon and do a print r, and then paste the cut there, and then die. So there we're going to be able to just preview what is inside the cut and how things are organized. So it is just a item ID and then the cut information like that. So I'm going to copy these things and I put them in this array that will always be created. And then I will also be able to do what to calculate the, um, the total. So let us go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this guy here. And then go ahead and do a for loop. A for each loop there. And then this will be the key. And then I can call this one maybe uh, item something like that or anything. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I want to calculate also the cut total. So let me also create a variable that will always be created or wh no matter what cut total and then initialize it to zero okay so i'm going to get to calculate the total here okay so i'm going to try to calculate the total so how can i access the total i can access the total by simply coming to uh price here okay or can say buying price i don't know we will just consider the price okay so i'll just simply say total equals i mean plus equals and then you put item and then it is an array price okay price there i'll be able to add or increment the total add the total and get the total sum aha uh -huh, so after that the next thing i'm now going to copy these elements and put them in this array okay in this array so i'm just going to say uh cut items Cut items equals to uh, item. But you know, if I do like this, then it will be assigned to this one. So if I want to push, or I want to add uh, this item into an array, I'll just simply put these square brackets in front here. So it will be added there. But as we said, we say that we want only four items. But if we don't, if we don't put the condition that we'll get for us four items, what does it mean? It means uh, everything is going to be copied into the cut. So how can we do it in the way that uh, only four items should be put there? I can create here my counter. I can call it maybe my cut counter equals to zero. Okay. So I come and say cut counter plus plus. And then I say if cut counter is less than what? Is or I can just simply come and put this guy. In bottom here so if I say if cut counter is greater than uh, four okay or five you should do what you should continue so I write here continue so it means that this cut counter will increase until it reaches five 
I mean, until it reaches five, until it reaches six. So it reaches six, six greater than five, it will continue. It will not go ahead and add this item into the cut or the temporary cut counted item that we want to present in the array. You get it, eh? So I uh, will go ahead and copy a single item because I don't want to come back and I see what is in the cut. I'm just going to copy this guy temporarily. And then uh, I think there everything is now okay. So let us go ahead and refresh. Everything is beautiful apart from uh, price. Okay, let us see why these guys uh, are complaining about price. So let me go ahead and put here a pre tag and then try to dump everything in this item and die here. And we see why there is that complaint. So let's go ahead and refresh. So it is, oh, we have to first point in the pro array. Okay, you have to point in the pro array first, like this. It has to be like this first. Eh? pro like this then we go ahead and access the price so let's go ahead and do that here so we'll just simply come and put this guy first go into the product and then the other one needs a category so let me delete this now if i refresh uh everything should be okay so that is beautiful now let's go ahead and now display those eight items here uh i have already lost my things that I wanted to copy. Let me do like this first and I copy uh, these items. Okay. And then come back. Okay. So everything is okay. Now these items, I'm just going to temporarily put them here. Okay. So that I uh, can create just a temporary file and I see how my things are organized. So after doing that, uh, let's go ahead now and search our cut drop down where it is. So I'll search cut drop down. Uh, control F, cut drop down it is here. Okay, cut drop down is here. So this is our item that we are going to loop. Okay, so let's go ahead and put four. Uh, sorry, first open the PHP tag, PHP question mark there, and come and put four reach. Okay, for reach, and then after I'm going to close this tag from here and I close the PHP tag from here and then I open another PHP tag in the bottom here and I close the tag that I just opened on top like this. So between here, so I'm going to put an item that I want to repeatedly loop. So which is this one, okay? You first copy it. Eh? So now it should be showing everything. So if you come and refresh, so at least we should see uh, what is it again? Sorry, 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 sorry. We put here the wrong variable name. It's supposed to be this guy, okay? Cut items, this one, eh? Yeah. So I'll go ahead and remove this word variable and put cut items. So if I refresh, now you should be able to see uh, the items are there, okay? I think there are five. You can put as the one that you want only, no problem. So let's go ahead and put the right name, the right price, the right quantity, and the right photo. Let's begin with the photo. So begin the photo. So I'll come here where the photo is. Where the photo is. Let's look at it. Let's, let's look for it. The image, the image, the image, the image. It is here. Okay. IMG. This guy here. So let's go ahead and put a PHP tag. PHP tag like this. And then let's call our function that gets for us a product photo. Uh, how can you get that function? It is here. Okay. It is in our files of function. Get product thumb. Is it this one? Yeah. I think it's this guy who gets for us a what? A product thumb. So we just give it product photos. Okay. So I'll copy this guy. Then I come here and I put equal sign and I call the function. So what am I going to give it? I'm going to give it here. We call it. Let us put here also maybe pro. Okay, so it should sound standard. And uh, now we know it is pro. Then I have to pass here. Let us call it item. Eh? Item. So I'll have to pass here uh, item. Then in the it has two dimensions. So the first dimension will pass pro. If you still remember how our things are organized, the first dimension is that of product, and the second dimension that of category. So we pass pro and then we access the what? 
these photos from here like this so i first pass pro and then access the photo di the photos dimension from here so like that you should be able to get the photo thumbnail refresh and we see everything is beautiful you see the photo thumbnail are there that is beautiful okay that's beautiful so next thing we are going to put now the name you see the name of the product this guy so let's go ahead and do that so i will come and look for the name of the product which is here okay so how can you get the name of the product we'll just simply come and put um uh php sorry name of the product just open bracket question mark equals two and then you close the bracket like this okay so in between here i'm going to put the name of the product so you can access the name of the product by just simply saying the item this guy here that we are looping item and then specify pro and then specify the dimension that you want the name so that's where that's how i'll be able to access the name so if i refresh you can see the name has come accordingly so maybe the name is too long you can do some you can show uh truncate it okay but just simply put sub str and pass the string and pass maybe it should begin from zero up to maybe uh 10 letters 16 letters so let's see refresh the name is becoming too funny you see maybe i can do 20 and then i add here the, some dash 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 something like this okay so there it does not mess up with our uis okay so no problem you can increase according to what you want let's do 25 and we see refresh okay no problem so after doing that i'm going to now put the price okay so how shall you access the price it's going to be almost the same thing so just simply put here question mark equals two and then question mark uh -huh. so go ahead and put the item and then specify the pro and then specify the the price okay so there we'll be able to get the price refresh everything is beautiful the price is there uh -huh. the quantity so you know where we put the quantity if you still remember where did you put the quantity 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 we put it here on the top of the of the, of the item itself so let's go ahead and put the quantity so we put here timers and then you put here question mark equal sign like this so let's go ahead and put item and then we put the quantity here i don't need pro because put on top if you still remember you see so there we'll be able to know how many things someone added in their cart okay so like that so times three times what <laughs> it's beautiful eh so after doing that now let us go ahead and put uh the total price so the total price one thing that we forgot we forgot to calculate the uh times quantity you know we forgot to calculate that let's go and fix that so i'll just simply come here the total price will be the item price times its quantity times its quantity so the quantity you don't need to specify the pro okay like this uh -huh. so they will be able to get the total cut total refresh everything is beautiful okay everything is beautiful now let's go ahead and put this subtotal so i'm going to say subtotal i just search it i think it's the only word there subtotal here so i'm going to come here put question mark equal to and then i put the variable subtotal remember i've already calculated on top there and to always be there refresh subtotal is there okay subtotal so you see this price also 256 265 i'm also have to update it so that a customer should know how much they have just placed in their cart so come and search two six five that is the guy here so come and put a uh, question mark equal sign close the, the the tag and go ahead and put here the cart total so every time a customer adds he'll be seeing how far they have gone so if i come here and i click there so this is the product so if, if i add maybe uh two pieces add so you see customer it has increased and the number has increased that's beautiful okay so let's go ahead and uh, show the most latest 
So if you want to show the most latest, you have to do what you call array reverse. Okay, so how can we do that? You have to do what you call array reverse. I can do it from top here before I start looping. So that the customer should be seeing the most latest thing they have added. So it's called array reverse. Okay, and you have to receive it, by the way. You don't just take it like that. You have to receive it like that. So there, it will be showing the most latest product that you've added. So, you see, you last added the watch. Let me add this um, this trouser. I'm going to add maybe uh, five pieces. Uh-huh. Refresh. So you can see the, mo the last one that we added. Is it working anyway? Refresh. Uh, did it add it? Was it added? Let me add. Okay, I had first click on it. Click on the trouser. Click on three items. Add. Why is it not adding? Refresh. It's not showing the most latest. Uh, yeah. It is already there. It is already there. That's why it is not showing. So it was already there. Okay, so now let us look at um, uh, this item. You have to click on it so that you can see its details. That is, we're going to waste our time. Uh, let us look at uh, removing item from the cart. Removing item from the cart. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, While well, there is remove. Sorry. Let us go ahead and search for uh, uh, cart counter. It will be the same section. Cart total. Okay. So let us come here and we. Uh, remove unnecessary things. For example, this HTML has to point at the what? At the product. So it's going to be product dot php question mark id equals then put the id of the product there. Equals. I have set square ahead and put the id of the product, which is going to be uh, pro then pro then ID. So that when someone clicks there, it should be taken to the product itself. Let's refresh. Uh -huh. So when you click there, you're taken to the product. Uh -oh. I'm not in the right place. <laughs> uh, but you can do that. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's the how we, we, we browse the product. Yeah, it's product. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove the anchor tag there. It is this one, I think. Okay. Refresh. Now if I click there, I'm seeing a warning and define variable. So it's supposed to be, sorry. What have I done? Is it pro? It's item. It's called item, not pro. Okay. Refresh. Yeah. Click there. You'll see the product that you added. Uh, let's work on the logic of removing item from the cart. So uh, it's going to be also a process. So I'll come and duplicate our cart process, this guy here. Okay. Cart process. So I'll come and go to shift S, be like saving. So I'm going to call it cart process remove. Okay. Remove. Okay. So that is our card process. Uh, first of all, we're going to send the gate okay, of ID. And then after, we'll go ahead and remove it. Once we have the ID. Let me first see if this ID has really come. By just simply putting die. And then die with the ID like this. So let's go ahead. The name, is, the name of the file is uh, cut process remove. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, come to our header and come where there is the remove icon. You see this guy, where there is this remove icon. Eh? So it is before the photo uh, button. It is this one. I think this is the guy. Okay, so we're going to change it from button to anchor tag. So let's go ahead and search it and change it to anchor tag. And then he up put the href. So href uh, 
we can copy okay let's go ahead and do a href yourself href equals to cut process remove the php question mark id equals to and then you put the uh, the product id okay so i'll copy this guy and put it here so there we'll be removing uh, the product from the cut refresh uh -huh. now click there and then if i come when i click on remove you see i'm able to reflect this guy so you know how we're saving uh item in two cut if you still remember we're just refreshing them by their ids cut process add you see we're just putting cut then then the id and then that one so we're going to unset something like that so i'll come to now our remove process uh file uh, the first thing i check i check if it's set if it's set to avoid errors eh? if is set if is set is set and then i check if that guy is set and then i go ahead and check if again is set is set this guy now the exact item and then i'll go ahead and uh, unset okay and set or you can first put there a null and then unset it there will be sure that uh, that specific place was removed so i think that's okay <laughs> i think that's okay let me see if we, everything is reaching here before i i say everything is okay you see it's not reaching there so it could suffer so what is the problem if is set session cut i think that is okay if is set cut then the id Hmm, let's see uh, if we are reaching here refresh if we are reaching there uh-huh so if is set session cut and then the id uh yeah like that it's supposed to be like that let us see yeah it's supposed to be like that i don't know why it's not reaching here uh let us first see if everything is there so I'm just going to put print. Uh, let us first convert this guy to ID. Int. Just convert to integer. I don't think that's a problem. It is not reaching here. Um, don't know why. Let's first remove these others. And then I put here product removed removed from cut successfully and then we direct back the person back to the shop um <laughs> uh this guy is going to give us error i don't know okay let, let, let's let's see okay so refresh uh product removed from cut successfully let me remove this one also it is not removing okay um let us see how our cut is organized let us see how our cut is organized okay let us see how our cut is organized by just simply putting here echo and then the pre tag and then we dump everything and then die here so uh, let me first comment uh Okay, let us first refresh. Uh huh. Remove this guy. You see our cut. Oh, so we're having here zero, one, two, three. They are not product IDs as how we expected. Mm, unfortunate. Okay, no problem. Then it means we are going to pass the index, eh? not the IDs. Is that that going to become problematic? Ah, uh, let's pass the index. Let's pass the index. So we'll come back here. We'll come back here to product header. So instead of passing the ID, we are going to pass the index. But that's going to become problematic. But no problem. So here I'm going to loop and see the product that has the ID that I've sent to me. I'm going to pass still the ID, but I'm going to loop for and look for the product that have this the ID and so I'll, I'll remove them. So uh here i'm going to go ahead and do for each because it changed to the product ids i when you are adding it eh? 
So I'll do for each. And then here, we can maybe say V. And then, and then, let us look at how the V is looking like. So which is going to be print underscore R like that. Let me die here. Okay, refresh. So that's how our V looks like. So I'm going to compare if pro ID is this. So I'm just simply going to say if uh, the V with the, the pro ID pro and then and then ID is equal to the ID that have say been sent to me. So there I'm going to uh print and see if i can reach there yeah you see now it's the product now i want to unset that particular session so to unset that i can just simply say session and then say unset and set and then i put a specific and i put here the key okay this key so that i should be pointing i hope that will not mess with our loop okay so let us go ahead and refresh for the first time to show the second time it should not show yeah it did not show so that is how we we'll remove an item from the session let me go ahead and remove these unnecessary things and these unnecessary things okay and this so that's how we'll remove an item from the session then we we'll redirect to um, refresh so they are now six click there they are now five i click there they are now four that's beautiful so i can even remove an item from what from cart that's beautiful so let's go ahead and display now the cart details how about the time the time has really gone <laughs> so let us proceed in the next lecture now we'll go ahead and uh, display now the cart products here and then also going ahead and uh, and do what and uh, submit the shipping that's what that's what we'll do in the next class okay but for this class we have just learned how to display these cart products here there's not too much but hope you learned i hope you learned so please go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel and tune in in the next lecture make sure you practice make sure you don't give up along the way until we perfect this thing to 100 percent so see you in the next class bye bye Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mbarak and I welcome you to our 17th video of creating a complete e-commerce web application. In today's video, we are going to display the cart and also work on the logic of checking out the cart or the customer being able to place their order. That's what we are going to look at today. So I hope you are good to get started with me if you are then let's do it so as you can see in the previous video we had stopped here whereby a customer was able to browse products in the shop display them and then they click on add to cart and then this product was being added to cart and the number could reflect here we were also able to click on removing a product from cart and the number will reduce so that's why I stopped at in the previous video. Now in this previous in this current video we're going to do what? We're going to proceed from there. And what we're going to mainly do right now is uh to display the cart details as you can see. So when you click on um for example when you come here to the cart and then click on uh expand cart, you should be able to see the cart and you should also be able to remove some product or even able to change the quantity and also being able to do what uh, to check out okay so this is the logic that we're going to do today managing the cart and then being able to do what to place the order so let's go straight into business and we see how we do this so first of all we're going to display the cart the whole cart as you can see here the cart was we were just only showing four products so we want to when the user clicks here when the user clicks here expand cut or view full cut you should be able to see all the products in what in the cart so let's go ahead and do that we already have the user interface here in our template which is shop cut.html so we're going to create the, the, the same you can call it cut dot 
h.php okay so let's go ahead and do that um let's go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and put cut i will come to my project you see i can call it cut list or cut items or anything or cut display and then we'll be able to do what to display the products so let's go ahead and do that uh, we'll simply come to our project and then we create a separate file or a new file that we're going to display the cut so I simply come here and say new and then I call it cut uh, just let's, let's call it cut.php okay so I'll come here and click on create new file and call it cut.php so that is where I'll be displaying the what the cut product so let's go ahead and put the head, head and footer so I'll simply come here get the header okay um let me look at uh, something that we are using the recent i'll come there let me see for example in categories i think that's a pr uh, private one uh let me come here to index yeah, let's use this index one okay so i'll come here get the header and then come and uh, paste it in cut here okay so I can remove unnecessary comments like this one okay and then we go ahead and get the footer okay so to get the footer I'll just simply come to still um, for example here and then we get the footer okay so get the footer come and place it on bottom of this uh, cut dot php so after doing that let's go ahead and link now the cut in the head for example when someone click on expand cut we should be able to display to them the whole cut product okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'll just simply come to the head header and we search for where there is expand cut so control f expand cut here so we're going to simply do cut.php so that when someone clicks there you should be able to take into you should be taken to our cut so I click here cut.php when you click here expand cut we're able to do to do that to show them the cut but you know we've not implemented anything in the cut you have not displayed anything so let's go ahead and look at uh, our template how they implemented cut and then we see how we put the, the business logic there so I'll come to the template, then come to where there is a cut, and then click on expand cut. So this is the cut. So I'm going to copy uh, the HTML beginning from your cut up to update cut. Okay? And then we update, we paste it here in the cut. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll simply come here, your cut, I can copy the word, then I come to our template, and I look for it. Of course, you first get the, the file name, which is uh, shopcut.html. So it's our template. I'll look for shopcut.html. I can just simply press Ctrl P and search for shop and then dash cut.html. That one. Okay. So I'm going to look to copy starting from your cut. Okay. So if I search here, Ctrl F. You are, you are cut, okay, uh, okay, let's, let's, let's just organize, look for it, aha, uh -huh, let me first make sure I'm in the right file, then I search, you are cut, you are cut, I'm not searching properly, uh, am I in the right place? shop cut this is a shop cut okay let's search for it where there is your okay let's just organize and look for it manually ah, i'm in the wrong file uh, it's supposed to be your cut which is here okay so let me go ahead and copy beginning from title here so i'll collapse it and then also come here where is the container 
and also collapse it. Then I'll go ahead and copy both. Okay, and then come and paste them uh, between uh, the head and foot of our cut. So I'll paste it there. Now if I come and refresh, everything should be alright, which is there. Okay, so let's go ahead and now display the products in what? In the cut. So to do that, of course, you know we have to first find if the cut's already initiated or not. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'll come here to top and try to dump everything in our session by just simply putting um, echo and see uh, pre tag and then also uh, prettier die and then come and do print underscore r and then we put session uh, of course you know our session of cut is inside cut so right now if i refresh you see i'm able to see everything okay so for us we're interested in this cut one okay so i'll just simply put here cut here so if i come and refresh i'm able to see the information and everything so the next thing you're going to do you're going now to display these items okay so you better first copy one structure of a certain array of one a item and then you use it just for referencing so i'll create here some temporary file and i paste there and then i'll go ahead and check if the cut is set of course you may not display if the cut is not set but to do that i can just simply come here in bottom and i say cut item putting dollar sign and call it cut items so that i will always be set whether there is something or nothing in the cut it will always be set then after i check if this cut item inside the session is existing or not if it does then i'll apply to this cut items okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'll just simply say if is set and then i specify the cut and then go ahead and check um we don't need to check anymore i think that's enough so i'll just simply come and put cut items equals the one in the session okay cut session items here so after doing that we are going to now loop and display the item inside this cut okay so now let us determine the item that we want to loop so we want to loop one of the single item like this one okay so let's go ahead and look for it uh will be in the form of a list you can see they're here this is a single item so i'll collapse all of them and i delete the rest and i remain with one okay so let's go ahead and delete these guys and remain with what with only one then we surround it with php okay so just simply say question mark php and then and also come in the bottom as and also with that with php okay so now going, our loop is going to start from here by just simply saying for rich and then sorry for rich and then we pass here the items okay so here i can call it item okay and then we come and cut this curl bracket and we put here on the bottom here so you know this loop will repeat each and everything that is between it okay so let's go ahead and now try to refresh you see products are being repeated eh? so now we're going to put now the logic for example the product name and the rest okay so we've already done such kind of logic so we're going to just borrow ideas and copy and paste them here okay so let's go ahead and do that Uh, so let's go in the header file and we look where we had already implemented this uh, 
displaying group um, product that we should not repeat ourselves here yeah? uh, we can borrow some ideas from there so I'll come to files and look for header and you can see at the section where we are displaying the product uh, here 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 what is that loop <laughs> um let me search for it for let me search for it here Control f for reach mm -hmm. you can see it is here so most of things you can take from here uh -huh. for example you see here there is a product name with a clickable tag so this is the link so I'll just copy uh the product name with this clickable tag which is here you see here oh, this is href and then the product name and the clickable tag so i'll come and copy up to here okay i'll copy that information i don't want just to do the same thing twice then i come back to cut and then i come where there is our a tag here and also select the href and then paste you see i just paste the same thing so see there's no magic there that's href is called product.php question mark id is called the other the id of this particular product so if i come and refresh i should not see no error so this will be clickable now you see and i click there to take me the product that i, I want to uh, so that's done uh, so let's go ahead and put the product title i can again come back and i get the product name which is uh, here okay so uh here we're reducing the name of the product but here since we have now enough space uh here we have enough space to display a product name so we can let it go the way it is or we can maybe make here up to 45 characters now if refresh, refresh everything is okay okay and it's clickable uh-huh so after that what next uh we have to put uh the quantity what you call qty quantity so the quantity can be here so let's go ahead and display the quantity as you know the quantity is just on the top of the item so I'll come here and cut and copy the quantity here okay the quantity we'll put here the quantity and then put here the price the color will skip okay so let's go ahead and put the quantity there there we go and then i'll delete this color part i will not need it okay but if you have another creative thing that you may need to use it you can go ahead and use it for uh-huh so the quantity then we have here the price so if i refresh everything should be okay now I have the price here so i think here we can now let the product name go as it is uh, let us make it up to maybe 1000 okay so the product name even though it's long can as well break down no problem just move these dashes now let's go ahead and put the price the price will be here so it will be dollar sign and then uh pro and then price okay so if you refresh everything should be okay now let's go ahead oh i think quantity already have it here so let's remove the quantity and put the quantity here okay so let's go ahead and remove the quantity where i'd put it uh maybe you can use those uh tags to put maybe the category of the product and something like that okay okay let's see how we we'll use it for uh you can come here to product you can use it to display maybe the category of the product maybe the original price with the cancelled field ah, something like that okay we'll see uh let's first put the quantity okay so quantity is here and then we put here where there is value because it's a form eh? i put where there is value i put the quantity sort of there so if i refresh the quantity will be there and then here the price will be reflecting the total maybe can put here now the unit price and then maybe we put here the total price 
something like that okay so let's go ahead and put there the unit price so unit price so for a single item it will be uh, uh, pro pro and then price okay pro and then price so if i refresh everything should be there you need price and then here let us display maybe the total price so you can put here dollar sign and I display the total price here okay so to display the total price is going to be the unit price times quantity right so let us go ahead and display that so to display the total price we can call it subtotal of a specific item so subtotal we can put it here now subtotal can call here sub I can call it total price no problem so it's going to be that price times the quantity uh -huh. times the quantity you know the quantity we can get the same item uh, but it is here quantity like that so they will get the quantity so this is the unit price times three items then you have the quantity okay i think that's okay this is this is the price and that it is times one then the price is there uh -huh, now let's go ahead and uh, put the photos very fast so I'll come and get the photos so I'll go ahead and put the product photo you can come and get the product photo from here this img and come and display it here with this img here so come and uh, paste the guy here and i see if we are still missing anything is okay let's get only the src the link only oh yeah let's get the link only and put here the link uh, so if i refresh uh, the relevant photos are displayed uh, then lastly the product link that surrounds the image So I'll come where the image is. The product link that's around the image here. And then paste it there. It's beautiful. So after for a fresh, you now the product link should be clickable. The image should be clickable. Okay. So uh with that done, uh let's go ahead now and uh, I think we should stop shuffling. People will think that the image are not uh, correct let us stop shuffling the image uh, while we're getting the products S the product thumbnail here okay um where is the function get product thumb it is here let us stop let us stop where is shuffle by the way okay let's first come here and get this is the place um uh we stop this shuffling okay let's go ahead and return i don't know whether you are calling this function every time or no <laughs> let's refresh i don't know oh yeah this just one comes first another comes later that has no problem okay so um refresh everything is okay now let us go ahead and work on the logic of uh, updating the cut so to update the cut uh or someone will be able to submit this form and uh, we should be able to do it to update this cut 
case so if i change here to and i submit if i click on remove you should be able to remove let us work first of all on uh, removing or maybe you can come back for this updating cut later let's first work on the logic of um, submitting the whole cut okay because we'll come back for finishing and finish everything later so let us first work on the logic of um, submitting the cut so let's first fix this remove because already have it so remove i'll just simply come to header header file and then look for remove okay remove is here okay so let's go ahead and get that link uh it has uh, just a point to cut process remove the php and then you pass the id of the product let's go ahead and do that so we'll come here while there is remove while there is x i don't know it is somewhere here the, the button is called remove this guy so we'll change it from remove to anchor tag i mean from button and change it to anchor tag and then also attach uh the class like this so if i refresh I can be able to do a to remove an item from the from cut. So uh no I've put class this is href. Okay, so if I refresh, someone will be able to remove a problem with an item from the cut. So that's good. Now let us go ahead to proceed to check out. Eh? That's the most important part. We want at least to be able to submit the product order. Uh -huh. so let's go ahead and uh, check check out. So see these guys when you're previewing cut you can submit to check out so when you click on check out there is a uh, what there is um uh the name i mean the the the, the, the customer information who is already logged in okay and then the shipping address okay so let's go ahead and uh, do what and change let's go ahead and uh, add this page of checkout so that when someone click there, it should be proceeded to check out the PHP. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll come to our to this section and then I create a new file that I'm going to call checkout.php. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to put that link to here. We come to cut and we come to where there's word checkout. Okay. Check out. Okay, it is here. So I'm going to remove this guy and put checkout.php. Uh -huh. So if I refresh, now when someone clicks here, it should be taken to checkout.php. That is good. So the next thing is uh, now uh, the one in the header here on top. Okay. Someone should be able to click checkout and be is proceeded to checkout.php. So I'll come to the head and look for checkout. And then we we'll go ahead and change this one and add href a correct one. Check out that PHP. Check out that PHP. So if I refresh and someone clicks here and click on checkout, it will be taken to check out that PHP. So let's go ahead and implement the logic of checkout.php. First of all, uh, we're going to put the head and footer. Okay, head and footer. So it will look much more of cut. Okay. So I can just simply come to our cut file and then I come to checkout. I paste here the footer and then also come to cut, come to top and we co copy the head. Okay, the head. And then also place there the header. The head. So everything is okay. Okay, so if I refresh and I click on checkout, I'm able to just preview the checkout. But one more thing about checkout, since we want the customer to be logged in, we're going to check if the login, the customer is logged in or not. If the customer is not logged in, we'll direct him that customer registration page so that they should first uh, create a, an account. If they are not logged in, if, we, we, if they are already logged in, then we let them proceed. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll just simply include the files function uh, to include the session and everything. I don't know whether I already created that function that checks if someone is logged in or not. We called it protected area, if I'm not mistaken. You see, this guy. It's called protected area, but here we may want to put um, important information than that. So I'll just simply come and put here. Uh, if is not set user, 
I'll just put a warning and I say uh, uh, create 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 or register register or log register in your register should I how should I call it register or login before before you submit your order so that's it we check if the session of user is not created we just say register or login before you submit your order and then we redirect this guy to login at php remember this alert function we have already created it here okay we have already created it here to take the the it will take to i mean sorry alert function they created it here it will take just the alert type and the message okay so we just send a user warning to first create an account before they check out so now if i come back to our cart and i click on checkout i'll be able to proceed Others, if I'm not logged in, it will redirect me. Let us see if that one works. Uh, to see if that one works, welcome to my account and sign out. Okay, I've already signed out successfully. Uh, so if I come back again and I try to click on checkout, you see, I'm being redirected to register. Register or login before you create an account. That's good. And uh, now let's go ahead and uh, log in. Because, <laughs> because what? Because I already have an account. I hope that's my username. How oh. okay, let's create an, a customer account as we are testing everything. Eh? So I'll put there, I'll put there customer at gmail.com, gmail.com, and then the phone number, and then the password 4321. 4321. Okay, so I'm signing up. So I submit and okay i submit what they say login before i proceed so it means my account has not created successfully uh customer password 4321 password 4321 so i sign up okay so it has already been created 4321 submit yeah i'm logged in now so that's good uh so if i proceed now to home i mean if i proceed to home and they come to checkout, I should be able to access the checkout page. So let us see what is on checkout. Now the checkout page, you have the shipping information of the customer, and then you'll also be able to proceed to what? To the final submission of the product. So we are going to do that in the last, last, I mean the next video, uh, whereby the customer will go ahead and check out, see, select the shipping, the shipping that we may be having, and then after we may put the order the card information uh-huh and then after we go ahead and uh, submit the what uh the product review and then submit the product so let's go ahead and uh, do that in the what in the next video that's what we're going to do in the next video okay that order submission process so please don't miss make sure that you turn up in the next video and you see how we submit the whole order that we've been working upon. Okay. See you there. Please don't miss. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have not to. Please subscribe now. And click on that red bell so that you can stay updated. Thank you. Hello uh, and how are you? My name is Mohindo Bark, And I will come you to our 17th video of learning how to create complete e-commerce web application in the previous video we were able to display the products of cart to customer and we're able also to check if customer is logged in or not and also be able for the customer uh, to, to proceed to the what to the checkout so in today's video we're going now to work on the logic of checking out putting the shipping address as well as submitting the what the order so that's what you're going to do in our today's video so i hope you're good to do this with me if you are then let's get started let's do it okay so uh if you still remember in the previous video we we're able to reach this point 
were able to come to cut expand cut to display the product in the cut and were able also to proceed to checkout but in the checkout we did not display anything so in this video let's begin from here by displaying items that are supposed to be in checkout and then after we display the shipping information so let's go ahead and do that so we come here uh, to our checkout have details of checkout so this we're going to put the shipping address information and then after we'll go ahead and uh, submit the shipping but i see this shipping might be unnecessary we can just summarize it okay but we're going to see which one will work for us the shipping information will come here and then here we'll uh, skip the card part i think we'll skip the card part okay and then go straight to what to the review information okay so let's go ahead and work from here we have checkout okay the checkout page so the checkout page is now the place we're going to summarize the whole product summary and also collecting the shipping information where we should deliver uh the what the information of the customer i mean the products of the customer so let's go ahead and do that um let's go ahead and do that so the file is called checkout.details.php i mean the html so we'll come to our template and search for the file checkout details okay so we already have the head and footer for our sake then we're going to look for just uh beginning from uh the name of the customer the customer tag and then the remaining information three three eight four that's the first text so we come here search for three eight four this is where it is okay here so we will we'll know that tab starts from around there where there is customer info so here on top we'll have steps i think these steps also need to put them in one place eh, so that we don't repeat ourselves okay so here we'll have steps and then here we'll have now the whole container so i'll go ahead and collapse this container copy it okay copy it and then we're going to uh to paste it there in the body you see where i've copied it from you see where well, there's a container right so let me go ahead and do that so I'll come here how our body is between the tags of head and bow and footer and then come and refresh we're having uh our information there but i think something is not right wait let us go ahead and see what did not copyright i think this guy will also need it the page title is here will also need it okay copy that uh -huh. then come and undo everything then paste okay so there we go there we go there we go so we have the head title and the information so if refresh now we have all that so once when someone click here i should be taken to cut.php okay so let's go ahead and put here cut.php in the title uh so i'll come here where there is dot html instead of having that we're going to have card.php uh it is where it is um here the progress so here the tag is going to be card.php card.php so if i refresh now when someone clicks here no i've put in the wrong place <laughs> okay it's supposed to be here here okay cut.php if i refresh now and someone clicks here should be taken to the cut though on cut we did not put it i think we did not need it there so when someone proceeds here we show them cut okay now here we can put details this is the active one so we don't need to put uh, a link then here i'll put that of shipping and then uh, that of payment and then that of review i think for us we should have a uh, cut then uh, review okay we're going to have cut shipping let's call this guy shipping details 
let us call it instead of details let us call it okay uh -huh, so um put the card php uh we said that we're going to maintain cut shipping so instead of putting details here we're going to put uh shipping shipping or call checkout checkout and this guy we're going to call it checkout.php checkout.php already have it checkout.php okay I uh, will skip the shipping then we go to review the order so this shipping we will skip it if you want to implement it you can go ahead and implement it maybe we can do it as a tag here someone will select where they want to ship from and then you can implement the product and catch the shipping price but for now let's skip the shipping maybe we'll come back for it when you're doing the finalizing of the project so i'll skip here the shipping okay payment cards just skip it we may come back for it okay so we have the checkout so checkout is going to be checkout.php though we have not created that file but we're going to create it checkout.php and then we're going to have now the review okay uh, the review uh, sorry it's going to be review.php that is where we are going to have the what the review of the order that php so let's refresh now everything is okay so instead of having five here let's put this guy as three so everything is all right okay uh -huh. so you click there you're in the cut you proceed checkout then you have the information for checkout and then you'll have here the review dot php so let's go ahead and do the logic of checkout first of all have the display since the customer is already logged in we have to display his name his picture and then his email or their email uh -huh. so let's go ahead and display the name so i'll come here control f and look for susan and then i'm going to display here the name of the logged in user i have here the logged in user which is under session user okay so i'll just simply come here or i can first copy this word session user in a simple variable so that i should not repeat myself by writing complicated things i can just simply write u equals to whatever in the session okay so let us first see what is inside the session so echo a pre-tag and then do some print underscore r and then die so if refresh here you see that's what we have okay that's what we have so let's go ahead and uh, do what let's go ahead and display this information or relevant information of the customer so i can create here some temporary info file where i can copy everything uh, so i'll copy that customer information into you so you see i have all the customer information in this you so let me go ahead and cut this guy and just temporarily put it here so after doing that i self refresh so let's go ahead and put the customer name so since everything is inside you here i'll come and put the customer name where there is susan here okay so where there is susan photo here i'll come and put the customer name so do like this uh, sorry do uh echo sign like that and then put there so how can we get the name of susan is first name and last name so i just simply come and put here uh, first name and then dot space dot u and then you put last name okay so use stands for user <laughs> And to make it simple for us not to write the whole word session and the rest. So refresh, you see, 
the name of customers displayed i'll display his email or their email copy that come and display the email so the email will be here i'll go ahead and display it okay so the email is inside email okay customer email so i'll come and remove all this rubbish and put email like this so if i refresh customer email is there let us go ahead and display the um, their what their um, their email let's go ahead and display their photo um their photo let's go ahead and display their photo so do you have a provision of customer photo already do you have, have do you have it customer photo i think it's not in there but we'll work on it we'll surely work on customer photo okay so for now let us just display a simple uh or empty user photo so I'll come to google and search user photo okay you can get here an empty one like this one so you go ahead and download it okay we wait for it to load i hope it's good quality yes and then save it but i don't think that's the best let's get this one eh? i hope it's a png so i'll save that guy i'll call it uh user dot png hope it is yes user dot png so i'll come and copy that showing folder there it is I'll copy it and then come to where our assets are. Where are the assets? Okay. So our pics, I think they are the uh, upload, have pics and uploads. We don't have a folder of assets. Okay. Let us put it here inside pics. Okay. So I'll paste it there. I can just simply say chain folder and then I paste there inside pics. I mean I inside IMG. It's better to be there inside IMG. Okay, so this is the user.png file. Okay, this guy. So let me go ahead and copy that name and come and um, replace this uh, Susan's photo. But we'll work on that logic of displaying user's photo uh when you're doing the finishing part so it's under img and then user.png so now if you refresh we should be able to see an normal user image this guy okay so we proceed uh, to we can show here the user's id so they should be knowing their id um let's go ahead and do that you can also show here the username or the name of the user so let's go ahead and show the user id so i'll just simply come where there is that badge uh where is it this guy here and then put question mark equals to uh you in the dimension of id so maybe that can help the user to know their id okay so after doing that uh we can click on edit user do you have that form of editing user already I will come back for it. I think we'll come back for it. Let us see where there is a user where they can edit their account. Is it there already? My orders, my account, my. It's not there, right? But we'll have that section where the user will be able to edit their account. We'll come back for it. Okay, so that's enough. Let's go ahead and now do the shipping address. The shipping address. So we'll come where there is shipping address. So if we already we put there by default we put there the first name of the user. Okay? The first name of the user. Uh but if you still remember we already dedicated our our functions that can handle the input with simplicity. I think they are in functions. Okay. So we had something called input text input. Eh? If you still remember this information, right? If you still remember this information, well, but we'll pass just the name of the input and if it has the current values or if you have the some temporary values we pass it there so that's what you're going to use it will help us not to uh to repeat ourselves okay so let's go ahead and use that guy 
uh, you can as well search and see where I'd implemented before if you had forgotten go to shift F and you see how we implemented it okay did we implement it anywhere anyway go to shift F I don't see where we implemented it but no problem let's go ahead and implement it here so we come where there is um, shipping the first input is the name of the customer so let's go ahead and first call this function and see what we'll get question mark php php and then uh, put there the function itself okay text input uh -huh. so it will take data so among the data that will take it will take where is it the function is here uh it will take uh it will take the name of the what of the attribute so uh this is the shipping information first name last name email and phone number the rest maybe we'll ignore so we'll go have mm, first name or what we will call it just name okay i mean oh, let's collect it as first name okay first underscore name i mean we call this guy name and then in pass first name so if refresh ah uh, yeah it's working you see it's working i don't know i'm first to comment this one here So refresh is not working yet. I think we have to put echo or put echo sign here. Refresh. Aha, uh -huh. first name. Let us go ahead and pass the label. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pass the label. The next thing that we pass here is uh, this is the text input, right? So the next thing that we will pass, we will pass the um, the label and the existing value in case it is there okay so we pass the label the label the bell is going to be uh, first name okay so if we have some attributes we can as well pass the attributes in another dimension is set attributes and it will also be i think a what an array for example if you want required and the rest uh, so if you come and refresh uh, we have first name there i think we can as well pass another thing called attributes i think that one can be uh, another array where I, let us see how they work with attributes how it works with attributes how was it uh we check if attributes were there and later did you implement the attributes attributes I think attributes are just uh, being displayed as how they're supposed to be. Yeah, attributes are just a uh, plain HTML list. So let's go ahead and display. I mean, I, and pass attributes. Attribute can be simply required like this. Okay. So if I refresh, yeah, attribute should be there. So that's it. Now, now what next? Now we have to pass the last name also. Last name. So I just simply copy this guy. You see, it will save us from not repeating ourselves so much. Copy that guy. Come and remove these guys. And come and change this guy to uh, last name. And then change the value to last name. Okay. Refresh everything is all right uh -huh. now what next we'll go ahead and uh, pass the what the email and also the phone number okay the email but remember this person already has some information about them so instead of passing them free things let's go ahead and pass them even the values so remember I have an attribute code value so you can pass the value and pass here you and then you put first name. Remember, this one is coming from session. Eh? First name, like this. So if I come and refresh, I think uh, the value should be displayed there. Beautiful. You see the values there. So let's go ahead and do also the same for this guy of last name, comma, 
and pass value as uh, last name remember this last name is the value from the session so if I refresh so if you've just watched these videos uh, we did this function uh, I would recommend you to put the, I mean to watch the video how we did it okay that function uh, from the first videos I'll put the tag in this I'll put um, a a card where you can click and then it goes with that video and watch how you design this function okay the card will appear on the youtube here on the video so after doing that the next thing we we'll collect the email let's go ahead and collect the email so i'll copy this guy only and then we come here and collect the email so i'll go ahead and delete here so the email address for uh, delivery i think it's going to be just the same email okay we don't need to collect another email for delivery and the phone number okay let's go ahead and collect nothing to do uh let's collect email phone number and the address maybe first name last name email do you need a second email for delivery let's just collect the what maybe the address and call it that will be enough information okay let's collect the address but the rest you can implement if you want to implement the real world thing okay so let's go ahead and collect the address of so address let us see when you collect the customer information did you collect the address no we did not collect the address so let's just put here address and then the name will be also address and make it required and put remove this the value because need you don't need we don't have the address value in the customer's information ah i think that's enough let's go ahead and remove other remaining unnecessary things uh, for delivery because remember i already have this customer information you can collect the country if you want but for us we'll maintain minimum uh, so that if you want to implement the real world one you just use the same idea to implement okay so address billing address so i'm going to just simply uh delete this guy and the only difference is i want to make this guy 12 so that it should write a complete address line so if i refresh the address line is full so that is where i'll be collecting the address information of the customer so I click there the cut information checkout and then click on checkout we have why can the customer can collect the address so let's go ahead and collect the address of the customer or the shipping information of the customer so this is going to it's going to be a form and maybe this form should be submitted to should be submitted to review okay should be submit review.php so let's go ahead and create another file for review.php so when this guy is submitting we're receiving that form from the other side okay so let's go ahead and do it we create a new file for review.php okay so let us first work with the logic php and then let's go ahead and put echo and put a pre tag and do dump everything that has come through post safe refresh now let's go ahead and work with this with this form and change it to a, uh, to a post form okay so let's go ahead and do that check out and make it a what a form uh do you have it as a form it's not a form by default uh so let's change this guy to a form the shipping address to a form so you come with a shipping address um uh we go ahead and surround it and make it a form uh let's see billing and then same proceed we just need to make sure that the proceed button is within the form uh, this is aside okay proceed to shipping eh? so it's going to be 
our button so we make it eta i mean uh, button and sorry we have to make it from here here make it a button and give it type of submit and also come and close it here make sure that when you close it it is also a button from this side okay so uh we refresh if we have not broken anything yet is okay but it's nothing but a button so why do you want it to submit first of all we have to change the surrounding tag to be a form so it is a section you see it's a section so let us go ahead and collapse that section okay section collapse it uh you can surround it with the form let us collapse everything in this section in this section collapse 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 uh collapse this guy okay so go ahead and cut everything and surround inside the what inside the form of post okay so i'll come here between the form it is where i'm going to put everything about shipping okay now i'll come to this form and give it parameters so it is going to submit it to review.php review.php and then the method will be post and then after yeah i think that's okay that's all so if refresh and then i go ahead and put this information i proceed you see the information is be able to be re to be received from uh, review.php so let's go ahead and um save the i mean before we and and create the review section okay let's go ahead and create the review section so proceed uh here maybe this uh check out information i mean this information that's being submitted maybe we should put it in the section in the session temporarily before the user what before you, the user submits their order okay so let's go ahead and put it in our in the section temporarily okay so i'll come here to section i mean to review that php and add that information in a session so check if it if it's set okay if is set is set post uh post maybe i have to specify post will always be set maybe post last name okay if you set post last name i'll go ahead and create a session i mean and add a new session um maybe a section called shipping and in that shipping it's all put maybe uh first underscore name uh equals to uh the first name that has come from the post will save this information only when there is a submitting first name and then also go ahead and collect the last name this the last name go ahead and collect uh the first name and the address you can use this uh basic information to do anything complex eh? that you may want to implement in real world okay me i'm just showing you the ideas like that so we'll have saved that information into shipping section so let's go ahead and now create the review section i'll come and refresh we have our review page here but it has nothing okay so let's go ahead and put uh what is inside the review here okay so what's inside the review we have review your order we're going to just display the product information and then we put complete the order process okay and that's what we're going to do the submission and say your order has been submitted successfully so let's go ahead and do that uh we'll come to this file which is review okay i will go to our template and look for checkout review.html so let's go ahead to our template ctrl p check out review.html which is here 
okay so we look for what we look for for review your order review your order this guy here and that's why we're going to copy free things from but before we do that uh, we should uh, you should notice that everything in car in checkout it looks like the one in the what in the shipping information so what we can do we can copy first what is in our checkout okay we go and copy everything in our checkout beginning from uh, from from here from here beginning from beginning from top here okay so press control shift and arrow down copy everything then come to checkout okay and paste it here i mean to review and paste it so we have to also include the this function file on top because it's the one that will start the session so there we are okay there we are it's everything about the cut but only a few things will change so come and refresh everything is okay so we are here under review uh -huh. so the last section of under review we want first of all to reflect that we are under review okay we are under review or what we call checkout uh order review so let us go ahead and change one by one so instead of having here checkout I'll leave it out as checkout then here i have under review we have to activate this last part okay so to activate it of course i uh, will have to cheat from these guys and you see how they did it uh we just see put step progress and then put step count uh -huh, and then you just make it you just add this class active and current eh? active and current so come to this guy and look for uh this checkout i mean this last one this is checkout what you can call review review and also come here and call it review the order and then uh we come and call it what is it uh progress look for progress active and current so remove this active and current just make it active and then come to this last one or the step progress and make it active and current so add that class active and current so if you refresh which file are we changing this review okay refresh um did you have review here yes review review uh-huh you need to make it review the php this is the one i think do you need other classes here i think so active and current yes where do you draw the class there okay so it will not be clickable there so after doing that now what next now we need to display uh the cut here the cut summary here but not this customer information let's go ahead and remove that customer tab here what you call the author delete it collapse it and collapse this guy also and collapse this form i'm removing that those forms the necessary forms and then collapse also this guy and remove everything here but collapse them maturely you don't just collapse everything and break everything okay so ah everything is well and organized there so this is where we're going to put now the, our review section refresh so the review section is going to be here 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 in this uh, section so you're going to do what you're going to put this section but if you realize you i mean if you if you observe clearly you'll see that this is almost the same as uh, the cut uh, information the format that was in the cut so let's go ahead and copy that info cut information cut section and paste it here but i think that one will do it in the next video because uh this video has really been lengthy so the cut information i'm going to put it here and then be able to also submit the order to the shop owner I know it is <laughs> complicated, but 
I think it is worth it. I think I think it, you're learning. I think you you're practicing as well. So let us make the next video. Now we're going to display this cut and then be able to do what to upload this order to the what to the shop owner. So please don't miss and see you there. Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindo Bark and I welcome you to our 19th video of creating a complete e-commerce web application or website using plain PHP. I had paused <laughs> because I was chasing some money and uh, I think now I uh, can get time to resume the business and we proceed from where we had stopped from. So in the previous classes, I mean the previous video was stopped in the place where a customer was able to put the product into the cart up to the checking out. So in this video, we're going to resume exactly from how I stopped that in the previous video. So if you've kinda, kinda forgotten, then you should go in there and listen watch the previous video and practice it so you can proceed with this one. So with that much said, we are going to code for 60 minutes as you can see, our account will always be here and it has already counted. So let's go straight into business and see what we can achieve by the end of today's video. And remember to subscribe because I'm planning to release more beautiful content. So if you subscribe, activate that bell of a reminder. <coughs> when I upload something new, you get a notification. Yeah, maybe it can be good for both of us. So without wasting much time, let's go straight into business and uh, resume from where I stopped at in the previous video. Great. So as you can see, I've already started my ZAMP. Hope you know what's meant by ZAMP. And uh, I've already opened my code in Visual Studio Code, uh, which is here. Okay, I've already opened my code in Visual Studio Code. Uh -huh. I've already opened our project in the browser. And I've also opened a template in the browser. So those be me me major, major things, I believe you must be knowing them. And I believe you're not confused yet. So right now, I'm going to take you through from where we are, well, from what we had completed up to where we were. So that we'll be on the same page and we'll be able to do what to resume. So in the previous class, we were able to come to shop here. And then we list the product that our shop owner had added. And when you click on a certain product, you are able to list the product and uh, its details. So this useless space, maybe we'll see how we remove it. Uh, we are able, in a way that uh, customer is able to do what? To place a product into the cart. And if I come to this one, I can also print it into the cart. And maybe if I come to this one, I can also place it into the what? Into the cart. So we are able to achieve that. Uh, we are able also to come here and do what? And uh, check out click here and then come to check out you see the product that we had added to cut they were able to be listed here so if someone clicks here they can come to do what they can come to check out okay i hope let me zoom out okay i had come to check out so if you're not registered you had to first create an account and then you'll be able to do what to check out so if you don't have an account you can fill this form if you already have one for example may have that of customer at gmail.com i think yeah and then the password is uh, 4321. So if I already have an account, I can log in and then I come back to cut and uh, I'll be able to do what? To check out. So that is where we had stopped at in the previous video. So we want to put now to resume exactly from here. So in a way that if a customer wants to go back to cut, you should be able to go back to cut. And if you want to proceed to shipping, you should be able to proceed to shipping. That is where exactly we're going to start from up to the remaining parts of the project so i believe we are now together so uh let us go ahead and open this file and activate this button in case customer want to go back maybe to cut and modify something it should be able to okay but this button is not what is not active it is pointing at a what at a html so let's go ahead and put do that so i'll copy the name of the file come to the project here and then i can press ctrl p to go straight to where uh, this file is okay so it is here checkout.php so um we want to activate this button the back button back to cut so we will simply come and say and search back to cut which is here okay there are two so back to cut so it should take us to cut.html okay so i'll come here 
and remove this and put cut.php sorry cut.php and then i search the second one let me increase my code okay I search the second one which is this one so I'll also come and change it to uh, card.php so it right <laughs> should be card.php so that if someone clicks back it should be taken back to card so if I come and refresh here, now back to cut, it is cut.php when I click there, I am taken back to cut. Okay, so that is alright, that is alright. So let's go ahead and do now the logic of, um, the logic of doing what? <laughs> the logic of checking out. So when I click on uh, checkout, uh, the customer information will be fed here and you saw how we did that logic, okay. So I want when I click on submit, it should submit this information and take me to uh, confirm the review. So let's first see what the logic that we had put here in cut. Okay. So I'll come here to cut. Yeah, which is the cut. And then we look at the logic that we had put there. So this is a form that is submitting to review.php. Right? It is a form that is submitting to review.php. So it means that in this review.php, we should be having something that will be receiving this cut form. So if I come to review.php, you see, we have, um, uh, we're not receiving, we're not receiving, right? So, but we're supposed to receive this information that was submitted from this form. Okay. So let us see what information are we submitting here. So we are going to submit the name of the customer, the shipping information, right? I will submit the name and then you're going to submit uh, the first name and last name. I'm going to submit the address of shipping and maybe the billing. So maybe this is a place where I can also put maybe the phone number, right? Because phone number is important. Okay. So let us go ahead and put the phone number of a customer. So we'll go ahead and copy this first name. Just come and search it here. It is here. So I had already organized our inputs <laughs> so we can make those inputs reusable. Okay, so I'm going to do what? I'm going to think I was already receiving it. Yeah, I was already receiving it here. You remember, we could do these things using what? Using session. Okay, so I should also maybe add the phone number. Oh, we leave it there. <laughs> what do you think? Let's add the phone number at once, okay? So that uh, we know that we proceed with everything in place. So just add the phone number. So we'll come and uh, and address here. And the address we're going to put phone number so I can duplicate that address part and put here label is phone number because we may need to call this customer okay and then the I mean the name is phone number the label is phone then number okay so that's great um, let's refresh that's beautiful right so let's go ahead and submit this information so phone number I can put the phone number and then I put the address and then I make this button to be a button of submitting so when I click on submit it should uh, proceed and put me to this review section so this review section it should be receiving uh, this information that was submitted so let me see if this information is really coming so i can just simply check if is set the last name and then i see if it's set and then i can access that information so let me go ahead and dump that information here so i can just simply say print underscore and then i put here maybe die okay and then maybe i put here echo uh sorry i just put here maybe pre tag so I can say echo pre tag, okay? Pre. So I can see if the information is really coming, right? So if I come and refresh, you see everything is coming. So also the phone number is coming. So let's just go ahead and re remove this. So I have to save also the phone number. So you see this information that has come from the form, we are saving it to the what? To the session. 
so i'm going to come to this shipping session and i add also the form the phone number that has come from the form so i put here phone number so if i refresh everything should be all right so here it is a place where i'm going to review the order to see that if the order is correct before the, the customer does what before the customer really submit it so let's go ahead and do that so we'll come to our template and we see what that prepared for us and then we come to uh shipping i mean just can come here to check out and follow these procedures until you reach the what the review so you can see the review section we are just uh making the person to confirm this is the payment section we skip it we come to review section so in the review section we just present uh the products that the other person has submitted we also present the what the we also present the shipping information in summary so in case this person is not sure of the shipping information you want to go back they can come here and go back so let's go ahead and do that so what you're going to do you're going to get uh, the review and i mean review your order here and then it is if you want if i would like you to know i mean if i <laughs> i would like you to observe that uh, this review looks much more of a what of um, cut i think it's much more like of a cut let me show you you have cut yeah it's cut yeah shipping cut you see that review is much more of cut so you can just copy the same thing that we did in cut and uh, we put them here in the review okay or we can just simply come to the real template and uh, manipulate what is in the template okay so it is just up to you um okay so i think we should use the one in cut so that we should not repeat ourselves just put the information in cut so here instead of having um refresh button instead of having uh, maybe uh refresh you will have the submit button okay or you can just uh, let's use this guy let's use this guy so let's come to checkout okay so let's come to here so here we have step number one uh check out step number i mean step number one cut step number two check out step number three review so we're here so this should look much more like uh this checkout so what i'm just going to do i'm just going to get this checkout and uh reuse it as what and reuse it as a review okay uh so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come to check out okay so i'll copy everything in checkout and come and paste it in the what in the review oh no 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 no, no. <laughs> here in review we are receiving something okay uh maybe i can say everything after after what after container here so let me see to see uh we have everything after this page title okay so everything after the logic of php it should be copied so let me go ahead and copy that I want to select everything that is not accepting. Okay, let me good. This Windows thing. Okay, so everything up to here, I'll copy. Only that the PHP logic is the one that I'm leaving, eh? So I'll come here after the PHP logic here. And everything after here, I'll paste it so our review is going to look much more like uh, it's going to look much more like what like checkout so let us uh, go ahead and activate this button so we want to show the user that right now they are on what on review so we're going to activate this guy okay this review so let's go ahead and do review and then uh it should be here in, uh, in on top here right on top so we have uh, we have checkout then review checkout then review so you have checkout or is it checkout here no no no, no. that's not the place yeah, it is here right it is here so you have checkout then review so at this point we want to activate this one to show that it is the one where the user is so to do that we'll just simply come and uh, add this um, class here active and current here we also add it here active and current i think it's active only maybe and current remove it from here something like that so refresh 
uh, win review. I'm updating the review one. Yeah, so I'll make it uh, active and add, I think, current. Yeah, I hope. Uh, save. I want it to visually show that you're not on review. Okay, so let us see. Okay, I have to remove, I think, something. Let us see, step. Step count three. Let me first make sure that I'm on editing the right thing. So I'll come and modify here. Yeah, it is the right thing. So uh, let us just not hustle. Let us just do like this. And make this one step number three and change the word to review as i save it should be there and active so we're on the last step which is showing that it is active uh so maybe the icon <laughs> the icon is all right uh, here the review icon was what was ci check okay so i'll copy the icon and go back and put the icon on check good uh safe refresh should be the icon of check okay so after um we proceed to now here we need to show the products instead of showing this we just need to show the product so i'm going to remove this guy sorry i'm going to remove this author section and then also going to remove this shipping information Okay, so let's remove this shipping information. Okay, I think we are not uh, removing too much. Okay, this billing icon. So if I refresh, yeah, shipping information. So let's see. In our template, we have uh, review your products, review your order. So you can come and change this word instead of having shipping address you just said it review your order okay so then there we are going to get we are going to get the elements in cut and put them here the element that we had in cut here just we're going to get this source code of cut from here up to here and we put it here okay we put it here so you cannot we should not repeat yourself we should not repeat ourselves so i'll come to control p cut dot php and then i come to where there is a for rich loop here I'm just going to modify this section. I'm just going to copy this section. So I'll collapse and copy this for each. Okay. I'll just copy this for each. So I'll copy it. Let's copy it. Then come back. So come here. After review, we go ahead and put this logic. Hope it is all right. Refresh. Yeah. Everything is all right. Only that uh, when you're reviewing, you're not supposed maybe to change, right? <laughs> When you review, you're not supposed to do what? To change. Uh -huh. So what you're going to do, is just going to remove this button of uh, quantity. and Okay. So let's go ahead and remove those buttons of quantity. We can change them maybe to edit. So remove the button of what? Of quantity. So I refresh. So someone will be reviewing their order. So I want here, if someone wants to go back to cut, you should be able to click here. Maybe they want to modify something from cut. Okay, in cut. So I'm going to uh, copy this, and we are going to add the link of going back to cut. I think it's already there. So if you want to go back to cut, you can go back to cut and modify anything before you do what? Before you proceed. Okay. So that's it. Uh, so what next? Yeah. So you'll have to review your order, submit your address, uh, put some address. submit then uh, you'll be able to do what to review your order here so in this review we'll come back we'll come back and do this uh the coupon everything will come and do them eh? here the order summary will come and do them but for now let's first make sure that at least we can submit an order it can be processed then we'll come later and master every process right so right now um that's where we are okay so we're on this last point 
instead of having submit to shipping you're going to change the word here and change it to uh, complete order or submit order here so instead of having proceeding to shipping you're going to change it to submit order uh, proceed to shipping you're going to change it to submit order submit order so uh yeah there we go so there we go so here it is where we want to do the logical part of submitting order so submitting order and receiving this order is going to be a process it's going to be what a process right so we need to uh, create a file that will not that will be invisible that the user will not it will not have a user interface but processing receiving this order saving it uh, clearing the cut and then we redirect this person to a success page uh, so that file is uh, that's that's the one that we're going to do right now when someone submits that this should be submitted to there so let's go ahead and do that file i mean and do and write that file or to that logic so we'll go ahead and come here and maybe say submit order we can call it maybe submit order so it is well put the logic of uh, receiving and processing the order so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here and add a new file and add a new file and i can call it submit order dot php oh do you have it no submit order dot php this one eh? so this is where we're going to be receiving the file so since there's nothing here like a form since there's nothing here like a form we can make this guy to be a link no problem uh let me see do we have a form yep uh so i can change it maybe to action uh, so i'll come here to action instead of review we'll change it and make it submit order right we make it submit order so from this place it is where we'll be receiving the order and then process it and save it to the database so refresh and uh, if i come here and i say submit order it should take me to this file of mine that we've just done what that i've just created so there it's where we're going to get uh, everything in the session and process the order save it ah and then direct the user to what the success page so let's go to submit order section it is here uh here so i'm just going to make sure we open php and then um and then why is it bring an error php after doing that then we we'll, we import our start method i mean our functions method um functions file so we can have uh we can so the session can be started etc so i'll come and copy this function file include and i put it there so uh right now i'm going to dump everything in the session so we can remember how we've been organizing our session so i'll just simply say echo uh pre tag okay and then put uh print underscore r and then i put everything in the what in the session okay so by doing like that we'll be able to know everything in the session so if i come and refresh i'll be able to see all the things that are in the session so let's see how we've been organizing our session so we can be able to do what to submit our order properly so this is how we've been organizing our session right i uh, want us to internalize properly and we see how we can create this order very well um so uh we are here so um the when we are going to save this information in the database it is just a good practice that um, this information that is in the cart it should remain there as it is when the person submits the order so that if uh let us say that uh, the, today maybe a product is uh, at a specific price let us say like uh, twenty thousand and then after three months or after two months the product has changed the price maybe it is less or lower so you may not need to tell the user that now you place the order when the product is this much 
and at this moment it is this price when you are delivering so you should change this amount of money that's not a good practice so even though the product fluctuates or even though the quality of the products changes that state when the product the customer is placing the order we are supposed to keep it so even though anything changes we keep what you promised without changing so what you're going to do it is is that we are going to create a table of orders and that table of orders we are going to keep this information in the cart static there so even though the product is edited or deleted still the product that this person ordered i mean or the, the order that this person placed is not affected let us say like after three days the product has changed the price and you have not delivered this order maybe it has increased so does it mean that it will tell the customer to increase the price no okay let us say maybe it has dropped so it doesn't mean that you will also tell the customer uh maybe it dropped this this amount no when we a customer submits the order we have to get that snapshot and save it as it is so that what we promise him even though anything changes with the delays or what we do what we keep it as it is so this information is going to be saved exclusively the information in the cart the information in the shipping so even though this product is edited later it is does not affect the information that was placed in the order so likewise even if the user changes maybe his phone number or what we need to put at least to store that specific snapshot when a person uploaded what this particular order so even though he changes his phone number but you will know that he changed his phone number from his account but when he placed the order it was this was the snapshot so it is very important i find it important to keep this snapshot static when the user submit the order though it may seem to be redundant like uh, this information already have it per product uh, again while keeping it uniquely yet it's already in the product no i try to save that problem of doing what in case this product changes the information what should happen that's why i'm trying to do what to avoid so let's go ahead and do this uh, logic let's go ahead and do this logic of um saving this information the cut i mean the database so what you're going to do you're going to create a table of what of orders so i'll come to my table here and then we had i mean uh, my database you see we had only three tables so i'm going to create another table called orders so i'll come there uh don't mind about these errors i'll come there and create another table called orders okay so i can have maybe like uh i don't know how many columns okay so the first thing it will be an id of uh, this particular order and that will be an integer and it will be uh, incrementing or automatically incrementing yeah? so it will be the primary key at the same time auto incrementing so the next thing is going to be um the customer id so which customer placed this order so i put here customer customer underscore id and then i go ahead and uh, do what and i put here the integer and say maybe it cannot be null because we must have the id of a customer so what next oh, now we have maybe uh now the cut okay so i want i mean the order status maybe maybe okay order status order status like i just okay let me call it order status okay so this order status may be an integer where we'll define the meaning of each integer at each level so at the beginning it may begin as a zero meaning i mean as one meaning the order is just on pending when the order is submitted i mean when we receive this order we we'll change the status to received when we maybe uh st start uh, the process of uh, delivery when we start shipping we should we change the status to shipping when this product is received we change the status to receive so you can make them as integer or you can make them even as text that you can simply understand but it's better to make them as as integer so each step will have its uh, specific name so after that uh, the next thing we're going now to save uh, the shipping address so as i told you we better save the shipping as it as it is you can create for it a separate table if you want but for me i'm just going to give it uh and i'll convert it to json okay i'll convert it to json so i'll come and put here shipping and then i change it to text so that it can be it can store as many as possible uh what else i'll need the cut itself now the cut okay 
so the cut is going to be also cut and then maybe uh text okay so it's going to be big text because it's going to be converted to json and then lastly is going to be the what the user so if you want to record the user snapshot at that moment you can go ahead and record the user if you want to right you can go ahead and record the user so in case if this is deleted you can still have be able to analyze your data so you can record also the user right so put there the, the what the user in text because we're going to be converting to json so that's it maybe uh what else uh, can we need to put we can maybe we need to put maybe um the time when this order was placed okay um yeah just put maybe order time order date when it was placed you can go ahead and maybe make this one variable character and maybe make it to five five we'll put there the timestamp so you can go ahead and do the remaining things such as maybe you want to know if you apply the coupon or what but for now let us keep it as simple as this so i'll go ahead and create my table so this is my table of what my table of oh one more thing that we forgot the total price of the order okay total price so total discount total price so you may need also to calculate and they be independently okay so we put here the total price so if you want to record maybe also the discount etc you can put it so this total price will be calculated and then we save it independently so if we, uh, maybe this person has the shipping price so you can also put the column of what of shipping so according to which shipping you accepted with uh the one that will do what you put the static price there so let me go ahead and uh, change it to variable uh maybe it will be <laughs> double of load or big integer or oh, let me make it integer and i save so those must be included so that is my table of what of orders so if i click on table of orders i'll be able to get the columns that are required these ones so i can copy all the columns and then we prepare them okay we prepare them so let's go ahead and do that okay so we're going to do that at this point i believe we had dedicated our method of inserting into database uh, so we'll not need to hustle to write the sql of inserting to database i hope the method still works properly right so let us it's called db insert i think db insert yeah it is here so the db insert will take the table and the data in form of what in form of uh, an array i think yeah so let's go ahead and do that i hope it still works so i'll come here and say uh db insert and then i open the bracket uh the first thing that will take it will take the what the table so i can do like this okay so it will take the table so the table name is called orders right orders like this sorry it will be called orders like this okay so after that uh, the next thing is now the data right is now the data so the data is going to be just an array that's going to have the value i mean the 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 the, the, the key and the value key and the value so the first thing is the id of a customer okay the id of a customer of course you know you can get the id of a customer in the session okay in the session so i'll do like this and then i put there the id of a customer let me say one so, but if you want to get the id of the customer you know the, the customer is here in the session user right user so i can go ahead and get that user id so user id i can simply say user equals to uh a session and then the user here right so if i come and yeah i hope yeah i hope let me say if i come here and die maybe and say id i should be able to get at least the id of this user right let's see um we are able to get the id of the user i hope okay they say attempt properly no it's an it's an array not an object i hope it's an array not an object Yeah, it's an array so that is it uh so I'll come and copy this id and that's how you can get the user and the id from the session and then come and put it here so we're done with that uh, so the next thing is going to be uh the cut so let me first put this guy on top here uh and so i can put everything back before uh we do the logic here eh? so i refresh um uh, so the next thing is going to be the 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 the, the, the cut 
okay Ka i mean customer id sorry this is the id it will be auto incremented so you need to worry it so this is customer id i uh, have the next thing is the order status so order status is going to be one so one means maybe um one will mean maybe uh received or pending 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 yeah uh -huh, so shipping so we'll put here the shipping status so the shipping status as you can see it is in this variable this guy okay so like i will just simply come and say uh json encode json encode and then you pass uh, session and then pass the what the shipping information uh so after that the next thing we're going to pass the cut we're going to collect the cut information so i'll come and duplicate this guy cut it's going to be also in the session in the cut uh -huh. so the other thing is going to be um it's going to be what it's going to be uh, the user information if you want to record the user <laughs> no problem you can record the user and there's also in the session then the other thing is the date so this date can be our timestamp at this moment so i can just simply come and say date and then remove this guy and call it time okay so the, the last thing is the what is the total price you may need to summarize the total price of the whole order but before we go do that before we do that let's first see if everything is all right okay let's first see if everything is all right so i just copy everything that is here and i paste it in this pre tag uh, printer tag so everything is all right everything has been converted to json and this is our order so what's remaining right now is to get the total price so if we want to get the total price of course we'll need to loop uh through the products in the cart and then be able to generate the what the total price so if i want to do the shipping that's the place where you do all this uh, logic so i'll just simply come and loop uh to process the process the total price so i say uh for which sorry for reach and then i put there my session and i specify cut can say maybe c here or i can say maybe value or in anything val okay so let me uh dump just one item in the cart so i just simply say print underscore r and then i dump some item in the cart so this is how the cart is arranged so we're going to get uh how shall we go, how we're going to get the total price that the price shall be good from buying price i mean the price of the product okay the price of the product times d do you collect the quantity i think no for now no so let us go ahead and process the total price so the total price it's going to be begin by total equals to zero okay so total price is going to be uh this item in the value so i say plus equal to so that you can add as it proceeds plus equal to so the val and then i put um the price okay price like this so like that you'll be able to get the total price so let me go ahead and display this total price and see if if it makes sense so if i put here refresh and define price oh what is it is it wait let us see let us see let us see let us let us let us see what is not right uh oh it's supposed to be pro 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 right supposed to be pro oh we had also the quantity yeah i get it i get it we had the cut that information the cut and the product and the quantity right so it's supposed to be product product time was what time was quantity so to get this Right to get the price you have to point in the product. I remember we have also quantity. So we'll get the quantity times quantity. So if I come like this, I'll be able to get the uh total pr the, the price here. Price. So if I come and put here price, I'll be able to do what to get the price of each. Okay? That's those are the prices. Uh -huh, so let me go ahead and multiply with quantity. So the quantity is on top if you still remember, quantity is on top so quantity is in inside val and then like this that is the quantity i believe let us make sure it is the one so yeah it is the one <laughs> it is the one unless you don't trust me it is the one okay so 
it is the one only that it is in the same low row so let's go ahead and do that uh, so uh, total price so the quantity can be computed from here so it will be quantity times what times the product price so I'll come here and put the product price like this so um, the total price is going to be equals to plus equal to okay plus equal to so like this you'll be able to get that to price so plus equal to um quantity times the value of a product in the price so like this we'll be able to get the total price let us see we'll be able to get the total price like this i'm speaking like indians like this <laughs> so you see that is the word the total price so the total price can be uh, achieved now so we need to, to put it in the database so i'll come here um uh, put the last field um total price just put here total price and put this guy so i think now we are good right i think we are good let's try to see if there's no error in the inserting so see i'm get com computing at the total price and i prepare my things here as i'm converting some complicated things in json and i call db insert that we define inside this functions file here right so that's the beauty of defining things only one time you write them only one time let's refresh bismillah beautiful there's no error so let's come to orders and see orders 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 so if i come to orders beautiful so our order has been submitted successfully that is so nice uh so let's go ahead and do the logic of clearing the cut so once it submits successfully we have to clear the cut just go ahead and clear the cut so we'll remove this shipping information uh should we remove the shipping information i don't know let us remove the cut information so we'll just simply say and set and set the cut the session cut okay we can just simply say session cut equal to now like this okay so and set the session cut uh -huh, we and set the shipping also we just saw the loads to maybe shipping so after we have to direct the user we have to redirect the user uh we have to redirect the user though here on top we're supposed to validate if the cart is not empty something like that so we have to direct the user why are we going to direct the user let us see what the template says so after submitting we take the user to the thank you page okay thank you page for submitting the order so here we can take the user now track my order <gasps> oh take the user to my all orders right let's go ahead and do this page of uh, checkout complete okay so we're going to call it checkout complete.php and that's where we're going to be redirecting the user so let's go ahead and do that page first so i'll come here and create a new file and call it checkout complete.php so that's the file uh-huh so here after doing everything we'll have to redirect the user so to redirect the user we just simply write header and then inside you put call same quotes and put the word location as it is there and then you put where we need the user to be redirected to we are we concatenate it there or you can just simply come and paste it there so that is how we can redirect the user okay that's how we direct the user after making sure that the order has meet has been submitted successfully right then we'll take in the success page so let's ref refresh again uh-huh refresh boom we are here on the checkout page so let's go ahead and design that checkout page faster faster it's just everything the same only that we have this thank you page so let's go ahead and do that so we'll come to checkout page here and uh, it will be just like our index okay it will be like our sorry it will be like our index page or let us just get this login page here and paste it to checkout page here okay so we're going to remove this uh whole things in the middle we just put foot head and footer here so in between here we're going to put this thing of of what of uh, thank you for whatever whatever so let's go ahead and do that uh, uh, let's go ahead and do that i'll just simply open a new instance and then i'll come and open my template i had not opened the template cartizilla yeah there it is and then i press ctrl shift f uh, to search this word thank you which is inside cut complete here 
So let us go ahead and copy the important section, which is this only. Copy and come and paste it here in the between and cut a shift else. And then if we come and refresh here, now you can see, thank you, it is in the right place. That's so nice. So after doing that, uh, the next thing we are going to, uh, the next thing we are going to now put here the button. Your order has been placed successfully. So you can put here your phone number, the tracking ID, etc. So if you put here maybe track your order, you will take the, the user to the order page. And he can be able to see uh, where his order is. So here with the tracking order, it will take you uh, to these pages. Eh? Uh -huh. So it is be order placed, processing, um, um processing then what then uh uh dispatched <laughs> the delivery those processes so we can uh, do that we can do this page okay we have order placed processing and then the current quantity will be shared there the processing and then uh, quality check ah, we do we, remove, we, we skip this we'll put only the single order pro single order uh, page so we want the user when he reach there he should be able to go to his account here okay he should be able to call here 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 user account you should be able to go to his orders okay order 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 history yeah he should come here this is what you need to do now we are going to now to prepare the users uh users customers what customers dashboard right so let's go ahead and do that uh, well i think we already done some something like that customer let us see have we done something for customer no we are done for admin admin we are not done for customer so everything that will matter about customer we're going to begin with with the customer dash customer just like we did with admin 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 okay if you still remember so it, that will help us to always remember so let us put now customer orders we begin with that okay account or oh, we call it account let us call it customer the better right how did we call it here account orders i think it's there <laughs> i think it's there i think it's there <laughs> yeah i think it's there uh, so here in this button uh this button we are going to put account orders.php account dash orders dot php uh we do the same uh, yeah we do the same here we do the same here so refresh when i say uh so instead of having go back to my shipping go to my orders uh -huh. so go to my orders okay or we can put here maybe go back to shopping we take the guy back to shopping and we put here go to my orders now so instead of tracking put go to my orders and then uh, here um here we put back to shipping and then we put the ship shopping shop.php <laughs> I hope we have that shop.php. Do we? Do you have it? Yeah, shop.php. Yeah, right. So if I refresh, come and refresh here. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to go back to shopping, you can go back. If you want to see their orders, go to my orders and then we are there. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you can see the cut has been cleared. Everything is cleared. <laughs> so that's where we're going to start from right now. Now we're going to start with uh, listing the orders of the customer here. Let us see what we're going to do listing the orders of the customer um wish list uh support ticket customer profile updating their profile yeah, this section and also the addresses that will begin it with the next class okay right now at least we have achieved a level where the customer can submit their order uh, now in the next class we're going to on the next lecture in the next tutorial we're going to now look at now how are we going to handle the customer's dashboard? 
So in the next class, if we also complete the customer dashboard handling, then in the next class will be the administrator's dashboard handling of orders. Okay, so that's how we're going to work with it. This person can as well log out if you still remember had done that logic. So that is great. Uh, don't just watch, but watch as you practice. Uh, we meet in the next what? In the next class. So it was an uh, uh, interesting lecture, I hope. In the next class, we'll have to resume from there until we complete this whole template and give it real life in a way that uh, a person can come to a specific uh, category of product. Uh, a person can come maybe to the home of the product and then maybe draw the product, be able to place the orders. The administrator can receive these orders until we submit this project to internet and make it live and make that everything that is here is clickable up to reviews. So it's not going to be a simple journey, but if you practice along the way without giving up, I can guarantee you, you will learn a lot of things. And uh, once you have those ideas, you cannot be idle. You can either do for other people or you do it for yourself. So it is painful, it is boring, but uh, I think it is worth eh? it. So that's it for today. Uh, we meet in the next lecture. I hope, I think some people who are on live, I see there are some three people who are on live. You can put maybe your comments. If you have any comment, you can put something in the comment chat. I'll be happy to read it. Uh, if you put anything. This is my first time to try out the live. Though I'm also going to record the video, but I thought that maybe people may want to see the live one. So if there is any comment you may need to put, any advice, any suggestion, any anything, put in the comment. Maybe.